Finally time, round number eight, the final from the House of Drift, Irwindale Speedway. Welcome everyone to Esports Drift Association presented by Big Duck Club and Podium Esports. It has been a long, long season, but it has all come down to this. 16 of your playoff finalists in a double elimination bracket. You need to lose twice to have to go home. There will be one winner and a ton of prizes and cash on the line. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Keenan Coos, and joined in the booth today by Davin Cornelius. Drive through live for the first time, over, first time here over for us on podium. Davin, it is going to be an interesting bracket today because it is double elimination. You need to lose twice to have to go home today, which is something we have not done this season before. And I don't think drifting in, as in a whole really does at all. Um, so with that added bonus, we're going to see a lot more aggressiveness out of the gate and at all to play for here at the House of Drift or Speedway. 
yeah, it's a cool, cool format, format taking the, the, the top, top 16, 16 and putting them double, double elimination. elimination. I think. I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 should it should do a pretty, do a pretty good, good job, job of, of showing, showing us who's the best, who's the, who's the champion. champion. You get a you couple, couple shots, shots at it. If you get the double, if you get eliminated early on, you can just drop down in the losers bracket, bracket, bump your, your way back, back up to the top. top. Should, be should be fun. fun. I'm, I'm excited. excited. And we'll take a look at that bracket in just a minute. But again, this is a very, almost hallowed ground when it comes to North American drifting. Irwin Dale Speedway, where it started all back in the early 2000s with US versus JP Invitational. Um, this is in Irwindale, California, just outside of Los Angeles. Uh, Formula Drift just finished their season here two weeks ago, I believe. Uh, last week or two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> but everyone knows this section. Not difficult or not hard to grasp. Outside clippings or outside zone there on the first uh, turn three and four uh, of the oval. Then you drop down to the inner bank, that one of the two inner clips, and then another big wall ride section there in outer zone number two. One more inner clip and then another ride on the wall so there's three outer zones three walls we've seen a lot of trouble uh, a lot of people have trouble with these walls this season but with these wide open radiuses i think it's just going to make for very very uh aggressive and very very uh a, a pushy battles here as we take a quick look at the track preview here uh presented by scorp thank you again score for doing all the media for us this season when it comes to the promo videos and these and these track lines so again those are your restart zones your entry line so you have to enter by that third line stay on that outer zone up there this is what we're looking for for a lead run which we'll talk about in just a minute but staying all the way up on that wall trying to keep that left right rear of the vehicle up to that wall get about in the middle of the track grab that inner clip and then transition into the second outer zone again big commitment on this wall zone here have to stay to that wall tons of speed at this section as well very very fast um inner clip here there's going to be a great chance for that follow car to be able to try to gain some ground in this section if they don't get there by that time it is going to be too little too late and we move into the third outer zone and then across the line which does not have a wall i've been misinformed <laughs> very cool <laughs> um great 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 start but like Again, this is a section that's been showing up a while. Davin, uh, just just to cover a little bit, Davin, uh, you are not a stranger to drifting. This is not your first rodeo. Um, you told me a little bit that you watched uh, some D1 this season, and um, especially some of the older stuff, some hot version stuff. And again, Irwindale is a track that shows up quite a bit, even in, in Japanese drifting culture with the, the invitationals they did here back in the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, what, what a, a cool, cool, what a cool, cool track, track to be drifting at. I mean, I mean not, not a lot of room for error. You're going to see these guys, guys right up against each other, right up against, right up against you, you know, we got a, a, a just outside zone central. central. Big, big, big up, up on the wall, wall turn, turn at the first turn, turn up, up on the wall, wall again. again. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be tight. It's, it's tight. Um, there's not a lot of room for error. I'm excited to see what these guys can do. It's going to be cool. Yeah, with the amount of outer zones, you can't really get away with any mistakes. You know, there's no tire drops here because you drop, well, other than the last zone, which I thought was a wall. Um, yeah. You know, you, you drop a tire here, you're going into the wall. So, um, I, I mean, we've seen it in real life. We've seen it in virtual competition where, you know, go a little bit deep, enter just a little bit too shallow. It pushes up into the wall and that's game over. However, 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 no, the, the, that the difference today is that there will be a double elimination bracket. So for those who are not familiar with maybe a little bit more traditional esports your fighting games your 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 uh first person shooters so you need to lose twice today to be able to be fully knocked out so if, so if you see anyone get knocked out again you talked about it a little bit in the top of the broadcast Evan. if this is a, is this a format you're familiar with um yourself um because it's yeah, something we've yeah. been doing for for esda finals for quite a while actually yeah it's something you see a lot in uh, in other forms of esports you know it, it sort of gives you a, a second chance you know a, a one up a second life um which you know maybe these guys are gonna be really aggressive here because they can sort of get away with one big mistake early on if they're in the wall and they they lose uh, one of their early brackets they can drop on down and, and work their way up again um yeah it, it gives them sort of a, a chance to push a little bit harder and uh get away with with one uh, oopsie early on <laughs> with an oopsie but yeah we take a quick look at this bracket again this oh but either way uh you see it what we're how it's going to work today is we're going to be doing the entire winner side so everyone you see on the top side of that bracket um will be competing first and then if you lose you'll be dropped down into the losers bracket the losers bracket will then start once the winners bracket is complete 
Um, we will do the loser's bracket. And then once we have a winner from both brackets, the winner and the loser, um, we will go into our grand finals. So it, to, for the loser's bracket driver to win the whole tournament, you will need the horror noir, everybody. Uh, for the loser's bracket winner to win the whole tournament in the grand finals, they have to win twice. For the winner's bracket winner to win the whole tournament, they only have to win once. So if one of those drivers you see in that top 16 gets knocked out into the loser's bracket, makes it all the way into the grand final, they have to win twice against somebody who's taken everybody out to get there. Yeah, we'll kind of have to keep an eye on it as we go through the top half of the winner's bracket here to start. You know, keep in mind who's going to be matched up with who in the loser's round and, and how we're going to look at that once we're done looking at all the winners on the top. All right, if this is your first time watching Competitive Drifting, first of all, thank you for joining us here on the home of Esports Drift, Podium Esports. This is how it's going to work today. There will be a head-to-head -head battle consisting of two runs. The higher qualified driver will lead, the lower qualified driver will chase. Three judges are going to determine the winner or decide if the battle will be run, rerun or also known as a one more time or sudden death for those D1GP fans in the chat. The lead driver, you're going to want to run the ideal line as explained by the judges in that video that we just showed you uh, a couple moments ago. The closer you are to that ideal line, the better your score is in the lead. You need to make the run chaseable for that chasing driver. So no big, uh, big angles, no big slowdowns and follow the momentum map. But luckily, not a whole lot of slowdown areas in this section today. Again, Irwindale, one of the fastest tracks we have run at this season. And if you're chase driver, you need to initiate no later than the final marked point, those three blue lines. You have to maintain close proximity to that lead driver, match or better the lead driver's angle, so don't go shallow to be able to keep up with them in the lead, and match or better that lead driver's angle in transition. So basically, you want to be very topical for Halloween. You want to be a ghost to that lead driver. As we have our first battle on the line, we have Darius Ostreka, who did an incredible job in the, in the season, in the full season, sorry. Going up against Lucas Tysmeski, the Drift 21 S14, all S chassis battle to start the day off. Get used to it. There's quite a bit. As here we go, ladies and gentlemen, this will be our first battle of our final round here for ESDA in the 2021 season or first season here on Assetto Corsa. Ladies and gentlemen, if you had a great time watching Drift this season, let, let me hear you say something. Darius Ostryka in the lead in the Erta Esports S15. All of that first outer zone, maybe a little bit shallow and angle, but are going to pour it on in the second half as Lucas kind of falling behind here, not really getting the smoothness they're looking for, but a great chance to be able to attack into the second outer zone. A little bit shallow again is Darius, but pouring the angle back on. Lucas keep waiting. It looks like they're just waiting for a chance to be able to attack in that chase position but not quite getting there in terms of line. Darius showing why he was your number one qualifier there, Davin. Lucas just had the proximity, I think, but just the angle kind of, the angle and line were kind of nervous, I think was the best way of explaining that. Yeah, it took him a bit of time to get going. He wasn't really up in there through the first outer zone. He got closer later on, but yeah, not a very aggressive chase run from Lucas. Yeah, no, he just, it, it, again, just looking like he's playing it safe, maybe taking that loser's bracket um uh, a second chance if you will a, in a, a little bit of a different light i thought we'd see a lot more people getting more aggressive in their first runs but maybe he's just kind of knocking the cobwebs off and getting comfortable uh, a lot of times too that first battle is half the uh, no pun intended the first battle is half the battle and you'll see a lot of drivers that look kind of nervous or, or, or are uncomfortable uh get a lot stronger as the event goes on lucas driving out of poland is in the lead position in that drift 21 s14 on the door is Darius Ostreka in the Erta Esports S15 out of Lithuania. Big checkup from Lucas there. Darius doing a great job of not making contact, but it is going to affect his angle. But that is on the lead vehicle. Big flick from Lucas in the lead position. Trying to do everything he can to keep his winner's bracket berth alive. But Darius putting the pressure on in the chase position. Maybe not the best angle. They're just keeping that car sideways in the chase position. That was, I, I think the best way of explaining it was wacky. A little wacky yeah a little bit all over the place but Darius showing he's willing to be really aggressive here in the very first round i mean you can see the difference in the uh the space between the two cars these two rounds here Darius really really pushing it and coming very close in this first transition 
Yeah, I just I, I you could see it. Uh, I don't know if it shows up on the replay, but you could see the lead vehicle in the second run of Lucas just just kind of get on the foot brake a little bit. I think he's just trying to get that car out to the wall, um, but ended up dropping a little bit more speed than he was looking for. Darius just did an excellent job trying not to run him over. As we are waiting for a judging call here, I think I know where this is going. I mean, it really, if you look compared to lead to lead, I think that's going to be your best um, comparison of who's getting what. Big aggressive flicks from that lead S14, but um, not really a track that suits that kind of driving style. It's all a lot of smoothness, carrying as much speed as you can um, and, and minimizing twitchiness and minimizing those big flicks. So you can get away with it, but you could see it on the second outer zone just not quite uh having the smoothness that darius had in the lead position yeah really surprised how easy lucas took it in his in his first chase there especially with this double elimination format i thought we'd see drivers coming in there you know arms swinging really aggressive we do have a call ladies and gentlemen slot him left for darius to strike us on him for lucas tyzmeski tyzmeski west says one more time die wow one more time it's we're gonna oh. go at it again the first battle of the day that is unanimous omt i'm wondering why i understand why they would want to push it omt for lucas but for um for for darius there must have been some sort of uh i mean actually you know what that's fair because he was didn't pull a lot of angle in his chase in the second half of his chase yeah yeah uh, really, I really thought like at the beginning, maybe it was a little bit more. Um, it was a little bit more uh, due to that lead car, maybe not getting the transition. But in the second half of the chase, uh, that yellow order esports machine was not great, and Darius just just kept that car sideways. It looked like he was one, maybe one or two percent on the throttle from gripping up. Yeah, we're in for a fun day of drifting here. If the first, very first round is going OMT. And again, these guys are all sitting on a... They're still in... Eh. English is a very hard language to speak. I don't know if you guys, anyone, anyone here knows that. But <laughs> but it, both these guys are still sitting on uh, on their loser's bracket run. So uh, they're allowed... Or they have one opportunity to make up for this mistake. But this is to see who moves on in the winner's bracket. Darius Estreka in the lead position. That Erda Esports S15. Much better job from Lucas in the chase this time. A little bit of a checkup that time from Darius. It's kind of straightening out just a hair. Oh, big contact oh. in the chase position from Lucas. Maybe a little bit of net code there. We'll have to check that back. But it's still Darius kind of gathering it back up, trying to put down the best lead run he can with what he's given. Lucas way more aggressive in the chase this time. I think he knows that that last run, Davin, was not going to get it done. So he had to go a little bit harder. But I think in the first inner clip, there may have been some contact. Yeah, well, I definitely have to take a look at that. But Lucas, very, very, very aggressive coming out right up on Darius's door here in the first outer zone and especially at the end here really really close chase run oh just a little bit in the transition yeah it just looked like he got kind of just tapped him in the rear bumper um it's kind of hard to tell from that angle I wasn't we'll see how the judges view it um you know if there's a huge uh, uh disadvantage for Lucas we'll know that that's where it came from um, but it was very, very hard to tell if there was actual contact or maybe just some netco. But we are in European service today. Both these drivers driving out of Europe. So we shouldn't be seeing any sort of huge discrepancies between the two drivers here in terms of lag. But we have to keep that into account when we see some of our North America drivers come up next. Lucas, the Polish driver, in the lead position now in that S14, potentially sitting on an advantage. He's going to have to give it everything he's got. Left foot breaking on the bank, trying to keep that S14. Where is Lucas going? Not wow. quite the line he was looking for there. Darius kind of just letting him make his own individual mistakes in the lead position right now. Going to see him start to get aggressive in the second half of this run. Darius, one tire way over that white line. Don't want to see that. Darius kind of oh. falling apart in the chase, but Lucas, one tire over over the last outer zone. The cracks already starting to show for both of these drivers, Davin Worley, in the first battle. Yeah, it is scrappy out there. You're talking about drivers having to stay close to the ideal line, and Lucas just on the exit of this first outer zone, falling a bit apart. Uh, wow, it got all sorts of crazy in the second half of this run, too. Yeah, coming into the, uh, to that wall, I think Darius was just kind of letting him make his own mistakes in the lead and was kind of just 
you know, not like waiting, waiting, waiting. And then you see right here, that left tire over that white line. I'm not sure if that's going to be a huge deduction, but again, and then Lucas says anything you could do, I could do better. Drops a tire right after that. So um, I honestly think it was pretty close until, until Lucas may threw it away with that last tire drop. But um, we have a winner here, ladies and gentlemen, some left for Darius, some right for Lucas. The West is going to say Darius and die are Yes, the CEO is going to go Darius. It came down to the contact. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas Timeski is going to be knocked into the loser's bracket. But for all of our Polish fans out there, that is not the end of Lucas's run today in competition. We will see him again in the first battle of the loser's bracket coming up in a few. Uh, I was going to say in a few minutes. It's going to be a while, but we'll see him again for sure. Yeah, just a little bit too scrappy contact uh in the first run and dropping those tires in the second run really really sealed it for him but you know as you said he's not he's not done yet and he'll be playing against well you know drifting against the the loser this round uh unfortunately what we have on screen is not the correct information for you just give us a second but the next battle is going to be artem shulkov going against vicarious alukas and i know what you're thinking this car looks pretty familiar it is the urta esports teammate of Darius Ostreka. Vicaris had a strong, strong showing in the second half of the season here of ESDA, proving why he belongs in this final 16 bracket. Uh, this Gracopad family, RX-7 of Artem Shokov will be in the lead position and Vicaris will be chasing. Ukraine against, I believe as well, Lithuania. So we end, we, it's all European so far here in the ESDA final at Irwindale. Cool looking cars. I like I like the pink on the RX7. This should be cool. Yeah, that's the cool thing about this series. That is, it is VDC. Again, shout out to, to the Virtual Drift Championship for helping us out with the data and the physics. But it is all custom builds from these drivers. So even if you're seeing an S15, you might be seeing completely different S15s, completely different RX7s. Luke uh, Dylan Fink actually premiering a new vehicle here this round. But we'll see that in just a moment. But right now, Artem Chokov in the 197 or 137 in the lead position. Vicaris Lucas in the chase in the Urta Esports machine. Gap starting to form already, but Artem, big angle, going to slow him down. Vicaris going to smell blood in the water. Try to get in on the door, under the wall. Is Artem, can he bring it back? No. It's going to be a shutdown from the lead position. So, Davin, that is a zero from that lead vehicle. And once the lead vehicle zeroes, the run is over. So, rest of this is just for those of you guys watching at home, having a happy Halloween. So again, speaking of the day it is, day of the month it is, it, that was kind of spooky. Very close to being something a lot worse than it was. But uh, you see that wall already taking its first victim. Yeah, we talked about the small margin for error here as, as they're right up on the wall. Artem, he, uh, he almost got it. Uh, maybe tapped. He did. Of, Absolutely uh, did. And then here, big angle. Vicaris gets right in there, but Artem just up into the wall. And that's the end of that. Again, these drivers sitting on that loser bracket comfort. So we might see them get a little bit aggressive in these first runs. Artem finishing it out nice and strong. But Vicaris basically just, he could just sit in the middle of the track right now. And as long as he doesn't get any sort of, there we go. As long as he doesn't get started any major mistake, Vicaris will now be leading with Artem in the chase position. And the Scrapper Pad family RX-7 Gonna have to get as close as he can to Vicaris Lucas, the Lithuanian driver in the Urta Esports S15. Try to put some pressure on, force a mistake, but Vicaris will not be denied here in the first outer zone. Maybe a little bit of a wiggle on the second half. Very hard to maintain smooth angle through that first outer zone. It's just so long. Getting really close to the wall. Maybe not the line Vicaris was looking for, but again, no major mistakes so far from that yellow S15 in the lead position. Artem is doing it the best he can to try to force a mistake from Vicaris, but it will not happen here as Vicaris Lucas, I have to imagine, will be moving on into the second round of the winner's bracket. I wasn't sure if Vicaris was going to take it easy and just do what he needed to do here in the second run, but wow, he was right up on it. The That's scary great. thing, Davin, is I really do think that was him taking it easy. That's <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. the scary thing because, you know, he, he, was, he was close to those walls, but maybe like a car, like half a quarter of a car length or so off the wall as we do have a call here ladies and gentlemen to take uh, just take a quick look at the replay it looks um, like he picked it up in the second half of the run too yeah you know you can't it's really hard especially in drift it's really hard to kind of run 80 percent 
you know, you do all the practice of trying to put the car as big, big as angle on the wall. As again, we do have a call here. Um, it's going to be left for Artem, right for Vicaris, and Vicaris or Lucas will be moving on to face his teammate in the second round of the winner's bracket. So that should be interesting once we get there. But ladies and gentlemen, we still have at least two more battles to go as Martinez Ostreka. Again, you like Urta Esports. We're not quite done. Urta Esports, once again, going to be going against game Vadim Abramov in the Luke Oil S15. Yeah, seeing a lot of yellow here today. Yeah, yeah. Urta Esports just uh, getting all, I think, all three of their drivers into the top 16. Yeah, the second round of the winners is going to be interesting to watch with the two identical cars, but... I see the BMW out here in... in uh in this round yeah that is a it's a bmw e30 martina's been direct campaigning that all season for urza esports again in the chase it's going to be the local racing esports machine of vadim abramov in the rocket bunny s15 and you've seen a similar vehicle is driving the russian drift series this season as well urza esports being represented in the drift master series i really hope that we get to see uh Vadim parked on the line a little bit because you'd be able to hear a little Easter egg in that car. But oh, I like if you see, if they sit on the line long enough, uh, uh, there's speakers in the back of the car. <laughs> but That's here great. we go, Martinez in the lead position. Vadim in the chase. This should be a good one. Martinez up on the wall right now, nice and smooth in that BMW E30, the only one in competition. Vadim doing look a lot of grip in that car, trying to keep it sideways in the chase position right now. Getting right on the, to the door of Martinez, but kind of just not matching the angle at all. You could really see it um, in the chase right now. Martinez getting right on that line of the last outer zone. But Dean doing a little bit better of a job matching the angle. But I think the issue there is, yes, you can get on the door, get very aggressive and very close in the chase. But you need to match the angle or else the judges are going to dong you for that. Dong. Doc. Wow. Doc they, was the word be... I was looking for. Yeah, huge angle for Martinez in this first outer zone and the, and the second one Fatim just I, I, I don't know if he's struggling to keep up or he just can't hold that angle but yeah not quite matching the leader through the first half of this run we'll be able to see it here in the second run I think it for me it just looked like maybe there's a little bit more grip in that s15 and it's a lot harder to be able to uh keep the same amount of angle with the speed uh in the chase position so we'll be able to see it now we'll be able to see if uh if martinez in the chase is able to keep up with the russian driver vadim in the lead position again all europeans so far which is uh which is fairly uh which is fairly different for us at esports drift compared to our last season where it was mostly north americans but Totally an international series this season, 2021. Not getting the angle that Martinez was looking for, but oh, into the wall. It's not going to matter. Vadim Abramov into the wall. He's kept it sideways. I'm not sure if that was. Oh, and then. Oh, oh. Okay, this is going to be super significant. This is going to be super significant because there was contact from the chase vehicle, Martinez Ostreka, but I it may have already been a zero at that point. We are going to have to check the replay. He, he tapped it, but he kept going. Yeah, we're going to have to take a closer look here. It depends if that S15, David, in the lead was completely straight after that wall contact. I don't oh. think it was. It also may have been a late transition from Abramov as well. There's a lot that the judges have to look at here. It's not super uh, obvious. Yeah, he gets up in it. You know, loses speed, doesn't quite straighten out all the way. Oh, it, uh, it is a bit of a late transition. I don't know. Uh, if, if this is the way that Martinez is going out, he's not going to like it. Very, uh, Martinez, very opinionated, a very passionate driver. So, oh, yeah. um, if this is the way he's going to be knocked into the, again, judges looking for big, I think they're looking for what we're looking for, just to see w if Vadim was just not going to make that corner in general but oh, that's gonna be tough to call either way yeah it's gonna be a lot of those today i mean these are the some of the best uh some of the best sim drifters in the world yeah you can see with... martinez came in pretty pretty light angle and 
you know, by the time he got it figured out in that first outer clip, that's when Vadim got the wall. Yeah, just entered. It looked like he just entered a little bit lower just to keep the proximity, but also have the angle, which again, on a bank track is not the worst idea, but it may have been like a quarter of a car length too low because it was a little bit obvious. If you're being slick, you can do that without uh, without making it look too obvious. We do have a winner here, ladies and gentlemen. Slide him left for Martinez Ostreka. Martinez Ostreka, sorry. Slide him right for Vadim Abramov. Wes is going to call Vadim Abramov. Harold McKinney going to go to Vadim Abramov. And Vadim, the Russian dream, is going to be moving on into the second round of the winner's bracket. You have to imagine Martinez Ostreka is kicking himself right now because that was... Uh, a fairly strong lead run. Judges saying that there was not a full straighten from Vadim in the lead position, so it did not constitute a zero. And then Martinez just got a bit too aggressive in the chase. That will not be the end that we'll see of Martinez Ostreka today. And I think that sitting on one of those uh, uh, controversial battles is just going to make him uh, drive stronger. We've seen it before and we'll see it again. Davin... You do not know who these guys are, but I've I've heard I've heard the rumors. Yeah, this is one of the most fun drivers that we've seen in the season so far. So Brandon Gardner going to be driving that S15 and Nico Stalia, nine years old. That's I nice. have I have hairs on my body that are older than Nico Stalia. That's incredible. I don't know what I was doing at nine years old. I was uh, picking boogers and watching SpongeBob, my friend, and not a whole lot has changed. So um, both these guys actually, well, Nico's not here. He, oh, no, yeah, there he is. So I think maybe Martinez just going to approach the judges and get some clarification on that last battle. But um, this is the next battle we have on deck. Yeah, Nico's been driving in real life lately. The dude's just an animal. So what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Check out his Instagram. I think it's Nico Stalia Drift. What? I'm sure uh, mom and dad Stalia are watching in the chat right now. I was, like, barely hanging on to PS2 controllers. Dude, he's got, he's got a car. He's got merch. The kid's got to figure it out. He's figured it out. He's got a... I mean, his future's set. That's pretty cool. I mean... <laughs> he's done it nine more than i've done in the past 20 i honestly years. thought it was a joke and then i saw him do practice for this event and like it's 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 he's like just lifting his head over the wheel it's hilarious well it's not hilarious it's just it's it's like it's impressive yeah it's nuts it's it's super crazy so <laughs> so again that last run is being talked about again so that is the next oh, battle yeah. on deck but I think Brandon and Nico pull into the line. Again, it's all going to come down to this. It came down to this transition, I think, as Martinez is just now leaving the server. But uh, there wasn't a zero yet, Davin, and that's the only way I think that uh, Martinez was getting away with that contact. This looks like he got a little transition, maybe a little bit early. Didn't let that lead vehicle transition yeah. into D wall. Yeah, I I can sort of see it from from each driver's perspective, but. I can understand why the judges are making that call. Yeah, like, like I said, Martinez, super, super hard. passionate driver. He doesn't like to go down without a fight. So I think he was just trying to raise his case there. But um, Brandon Gardner, Team Slide Culture, our first American competition today. Uh, ESDA veteran. We've seen him before against Great Nico Stalia. Both these cars. I mean, you are me, me and you are partial to some purple. So, I yeah, I'm a little bit biased. Big, you're, would you say you're a big fan? I am I'm a big purple fan. <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go all right brandon in the lead nico stalia in the escuco drift 180 sx in the chase position brandon entering a little bit shallow nico doing a great job of being able to adjust to that in the chase position ton of practice from this chase driver oh maybe not the best transition from nico there a little bit of a hiccup but keeps it sideways and unfortunately for nico brandon dipping that big country labs wing right over the wall Getting all of this outer zone as well. Brandon Gardner got in a couple of P1s to this year in qualifying. You can absolutely see why. Excellent job in the lead run for Brandon. And unfortunately for Nico, just kind of nervous in the chase. Yeah, what a lead from Brandon. Nico really got up in there in the first outer zone. And just on that first transition, it all started falling apart. And he wasn't really able to keep the angle in the last, the, the second half of this run here. 
Yeah, again, you just did not the transition he was looking for, not the transition again to Outer Zone 2 he was looking for. Has the proximity, but I mean, uh, those mistakes may not have been huge if this was a top 32 in the earlier in the season, but when you're battling for a championship, again, winner takes all here today. Zach O'Sullivan was our regular season champion, but that doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, and when you're going up against the lead run like like Brandon just put out there, it's uh, it's tough. Strong, very, very strong from Brandon. That's what he's known for. Very, very strong fluid lead runs. As we move into the second run here, Nico in the lead position. Brandon, oh, that's going to be... We're going to have to watch that back. I do not think he... Oh, Nico into the wall. I think Brandon might already be sitting on a zero here. Nico Stalia, all of that outer zone saying anything you could do, I could do better. Brandon trying to use the left foot brake to get that car out to the outer zone, just not working. Tons of grip in that team slide culture, S15. Nico on the outer zone. Excellent job from Nico, but David, I don't know if you caught that. Those three blue lines before you get to outer zone one, you have to initiate before that, and I don't think Brandon did. Yeah, we'll take a look again here. Oh, oh yeah, he did, barely. Yeah. He's it's, it's close. Whew. And a little tap of the wall for Miko, but kept that thing drifting. And uh, Brandon closed in here in the second outer zone, got right up on his door. Big angle for Miko. Yeah, Brandon, a smart, smart chase driver. There are ways to be able to close that lead vehicle without making it too obvious. You just, just, just kind of nudge off a little bit of angle without making it too prevalent. And kind of, uh, I don't know about that initiation at the start. From who? From uh, from Brandon. I, I don't know if he got it before the. Uh, it's close. Like, it it looks like he might be sideways, but it definitely wasn't a lot of angle. Um, I I was looking at Nico because Nico was doing a faint in like a uh, a flick initiation, and then look oh, yeah. back to Brandon. He didn't look very sideways until it was too late. So, from the replay here, it looks like he's got it. It's just not the angle he was looking for maybe that initiation from miko just kind of threw him off i think he may have skirted away without a zero there but that's definitely going to be something the judges are looking at yeah he did a great job uh you know not getting phased by that start and pulling it together in the second half of this run again if anyone wants to take a look at the bracket as we go here exclamation mark bracket in the chat you'll be able to see kind of how it works as well this is not a traditional uh single elimination top 32 this is a double elimination top 16. So all these drivers had to earn their way in on points through their e for previous seven rounds of the season. Then they qualified again for this round. So all this seeding is based off of qualifying, not the points for the full season. Again, what is on the line here today? First place will be your ESDA Assetto Course, the season one champion. Grab 600 crisp US dollars. NRG seat and a new next level racing wheel stand and we'll get a trophy in the mail. Second place we will be grabbing four hundred dollars. So and third place with two hundred and all top three finishers are gonna receive a NRG wheel rim. So some some for whoever grabs this first place finish could get a huge, huge, huge boost in their sim racing setup. Again, loop again, again, pointing out again, Nico Stalia is nine years old. That's incredible. I mean, the, oh, here we go. We have a decision. All right. Slide him left for Brandon. Slide him right for Nico. Wes are, is going to say Nico Stalia. Die is going to say one more time. And Westies with the deciding vote. One more time. So they are going at it one more time. Again, David, I think that might be the right call considering Nico's chase was shaky. And I think Brandon's got better, but that start was rough. So I think Nico was making smaller, more consistent mistakes. Brandon may have had the bigger mistakes, but he cleaned the run up towards the end of the run. Yeah, hey, I'm not complaining. We have seen more drifting. So uh, <laughs> this will be cool going one more time yet again here in the uh, top half of the winner's bracket. It was... Again yeah like you said just the little things in the in both of those runs our judge our judge westy is going to say brandon wonky uh, run number one brandon wonky line and angle start of outer zone one nico wonky transition run number two yeah. brandon bad initiation the fall and nico hit the wall so both drivers sitting on mistakes again our judges say uh we, we call him westies but he's andy Haitley's spotter in the formula drift pro 2 series so he knows what he's talking about die our ceo for esda and 
Wes Johnston, the VDS CEO. So a bunch of these guys have watched a lot of drifting. They know what they're talking about. Nico Talia on the door. Brandon Garner. Brandon trying to use that foot brake to keep that car on the outer zone. Again, we saw it again from Brandon. Just not the best first outer zone. But we're going to get the second outer zone. All of that wall. Nico giving him some room to move. One tire over that white line for Nico Stalia. Trying to be able to close this proximity. Looking a little bit nervous in the chase is Nico. Cousin. <laughs> I've been waiting to make that joke all season. <laughs> Oh my goodness. He's not going to get it. That game came out before he was born. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> say that. Does that mean you want to feel, you feel old yet? <laughs> oh my goodness. A, a little bit. I, I don't know if it was hesitant or just struggling to get the angle in that first outer zone for Brandon, but Nico gets up in there. Ooh. Yeah, definitely a an okay run from both of these guys. Yeah, definitely, definitely some places where they could improve. Uh, again, I think that's that that first outer zone is so risky because of the bank that it's it's not it, the second and one is a lot easier because there's not a whole lot of uh, banking in the inner bank here in Irwindale. But in the first one, because that bank is so long and because it's so fast, it's really really hard to keep your cart up there consistently. So I don't know if this is a choice Brandon's making, just make sure he doesn't hit the wall. We've seen him qualify first and get some strong qualifying runs this season and blow it uh, in the his lead run. So I think he's trying to be smart here. Nico getting all of the wall, though. Brandon actually going up a little bit higher on the wall. Big angle from the Spanish driver in the lead position. Brandon going to try to close in the gap here in the second part of the run. Nico, very big angle. We've seen it from him before this season. That is Skuko Drift S13. Brandon kind of choosing a different line there to be able to close onto the lead driver. Much better second run from both these guys. But we're, again, from that first run, we're seeing Brandon might have a tire drop at the end of Outer Zone 3 in his lead. So we'll have to go back and watch this in the replay. But definitely a better drop from both in that second run. Yeah, like you said, a, a much cleaner run from both of those guys. And we saw, once again, Nico in the lead with huge angle in that second inner clip. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to look at this first run again Did taking a look at the third outer zone here purple s15 in the lead here saying right at the end they might have saw one Ooh, oh maybe Ooh. might maybe have one been next and tires over to that over that yellow white line that could again tire drops are very very significant mistakes here in the esports drift association uh, maybe in real life competition, you can get away with kind of going over the line just a little bit. But in in uh, in esports competition here in ESDA, it is a big, big deal. So you want to make sure you watch for all four of those tires staying on the course. And with how close both of these runs are, that could be the deciding factor. Again, yeah, you you point that out. And Brandon didn't have the best first first corner. Nico didn't have the best first corner. I think uh, just a lot smoother on the line, but just didn't quite get the angle he was looking for but when okay i could do it for the rest of the run brandon didn't have the the most consistent chase but neither did nico so um this could have been a contention for an omt they might still be able to make that argument davin but um that tire drop is going to play a huge factor here yeah definitely a really really close matchup and those little mistakes can go a long way especially when your opponent's keeping you in check but you know not over to whoever loses this. They'll go down to the loser's bracket and be able to work their way back up. Again, shout out to everybody here who's maybe watching for the first time. Welcome to Podium Esports, your home of esports drifting. Again, this is not the only series we carry here. You'll be able to watch the final round. I think the last event of the season we have on Podium Drift will be in November 14th, the U.S. Drift round number four, which is more of a streetcar series. Again, that is the... There will be 10 drivers moving on from that series who will get their ESDA Pro license. So if you want to watch the pros of 2022, that is your best place to do it. Um, we'll we will catch you there as well. We will talk about how to earn their Pro license for 2022, maybe a little bit towards the second half of the winner's bracket. But we do have a decision, and it was very close. Very oh, yeah. close. <laughs> it was very close. Brandon Gardner on the left. Nico Stalia, the prodigy, on the right. Wes says, Wes Johnston. Nico Stalia. Harold McKinney Die is going to go with 
Nico Stalia, and that is going to be all three for Nico Stalia. Brandon Goner getting knocked out over a tire drop. Ladies and gentlemen, a very close decision. Nico was slightly smoother in the lead and the follow. I'm hearing from the judges again. It is very, very, very close. Brandon will not. Uh, they're say, okay, actually, the tire drop they said was too close to call. But Nico still being a little bit smoother. That is going to be Nico getting the win just over Brandon Gardner. That is a big win for the for the prodigy Nico. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in the <laughs> judging for that one. That was close. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about it before. Two Urta Esports drivers <laughs> enter. One Urta Esports driver leaves. Vicaris Lucas versus Darius Ostreka. These guys are practice partners. They drive together all the time, matching S15s. Only one of them is going to make it on in the to round three of the winner's bracket. Will it be Darius? Will it be Vicaris? We are about to find out. I like that they're slightly different yellows. That really helps me. You're, you're, they're not making it easy <laughs> for the first time out here, getting in identical cars in... You know, what is this? The first of, of the second round here in the winner's bracket. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not the best uh, viewing experience for the first person. But uh, we're going to get a restart there. I think I uh, just clipping the cone was Darius Ostreka. So you're going to see restarts for two, three different reasons, Davin. One will be a jump on that semaphore on that Christmas tree. The second will be contact with the cones. The third will be if the follow driver feels like they do not get a good start, the first blue line that you see is the restart marker. So if you feel like you don't get a good jump, you can just put the brakes on, get a reset. Uh, no harm, no foul. I think there's three maximum resets. So uh, we've seen drivers take advantage of that before this season. A, a useful tool as Vicaris is going to let Darius kind of get a little bit of opening here, but going to go very shallow on the first outer zone. Not quite getting the angle they're looking for. Darius is doing a great job right now in the lead position as the sun starts to set here at Irwindale Speedway. Right on the door of that lead vehicle of Darius Ostreka is Vicaris Lucas. Is that going to make up for the kind of mediocre first half of the run? Both Urta Esports machines crossing the line. Darius strong lead. Vicaris with an uncharacteristic kind of shaky chase. Yeah, we've seen it from other people, but Vicaris really... Taking it easy into that first outer zone. Got it together by the second half of the run, but I mean you can see the gap here as they as they Darius gets right up on that wall. Uh, actually probably could have been closer. Yeah, I think I think it was less the the proximity and kind of looked like he went a little bit shallow, like he didn't expect to get that close that soon. But uh we brought up the uh the restart line, Dav, and I think that would have been a great opportunity to use it this is a track that where you can't really let that lead car have that much of a gap because you, yeah uh, going into the first corner so we now have vicaris in the lead position you can tell the front ends of those cars slightly different as well vicaris with more of a yellow front headlight with the, uh, the holes drilled in the front bumper darius now in the chase earth to esports round number two Vicaris, much better job, like almost, oh, Darius looking for grip right now. That car is trying to straighten itself out on the first outer zone. Vicaris pulling tons of angle, trying to force his teammate into a mistake in the lead position. Great heads up driving from Vicaris. Big angle for Vicaris right now in the lead position. Darius kind of gripped up, nowhere to go, trying to get all the proximity in the chase, but Vicaris and Lucas able to just turn that dial up to 11. Big angle on that Urta Esports machine. He's yeah, feeling himself. It was a little bit light on the angle at the, at the very initiation, but once he got around that first outer zone, huge angle from Vicaris. Darius trying to keep up and match it, but it's tight. It's close. It's tough to do. Yeah, again, just it, it, it comes down to car setup as well. Some cars might be opting for a little bit more grippier setup so they don't get lost on these first two very, very fast corners. Some guys might be going for a little bit less grip to be able to pull these this big angle. It's, it seems like a lot of like we've seen it with Vadim earlier, and with Darius Ostreka in this case, just looking like the the grip might be coming back to fight them when there is the big big angle. That second inner clip from Vicaris is so cool. He is just completely sideways once he gets around. Uh, once he gets to the exit of this, this outer zone here, look at this angle. Oh my god. That's goodness. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I think the second half of the course is his happy place. I think that's yeah, where he's the most comfortable. comfortable. Yeah, that's incredible. 
So we're seeing the lights come on here at Irwindale Speedway. I like the uh, the LEDs along the, the first outer zone there, right along the top of the wall, lighting Welcome everything to... up in that ESDA blue. ESDA truck. Yeah, we, we, we're we FD Texas. We didn't pay the light bill. So slide them left for Darius. Slide them right for Vicaris. That is going to be Wes with Darius. And Die is going to go with Darius as well. I think it came down to that first run. Vicarious initiation was no bueno in the follow is what we're getting from that. Um, again, that's why he was like halfway on the bank. He was so far behind. And, 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 and you, you know, mistakes like that, again, you might be able to scoot by in, in, in real life competition. There is no quarter here um in esda so that is going to be vicaris o lucas knocked out fairly early against your number one qualifier getting taken out by his teammate he'll be going up against the loser of this battle vadim abramov nico stalia vadim the russian dream in the luke oil esports s15 nico stalia in the escuko drift family 180 sx yeah the boy wonder up again this will be interesting to watch um it's tough in the last one vicaris just you know we said he took it seemed to take a little bit easy on the first initiation and uh you know darius i think in the in his chase just did a better job of it and without you know th those runs were close so that that ended up being the deciding factor something i just noticed on robber mob's machine he's got strobes and i wonder with the sun setting here in the background in this first lobby in this first server will Will that be a factor for Stalia, or do they have weather turned off? Because I know I wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> I mean, let's just add the Abramov style, though. But Nico Stalia from Spain. Vamos, Nico, in the chat. A ton of Nico Stalia fans for the Prodigy, as he will take the lead here. Winner will be going up against Darius Ostreka to see who moves on in the winner's bracket. Nico Stalia up on the wall. Vadim, not the angle he's looking for. Trying to get all of that outer zone, but just not quite. Going into the inner clip. One tire way over for Vadim in the chase position, but going to use that to be able to pour the proximity on. Nico Stalia taking a book out of Akaris and Lucas's book. A oh, ton of angle right across the bumper of the transition is Vadim Abramov. Maybe one tire over there for Nico Stalia in the center of that outer zone. A lot to talk about for both guys there. Yeah, wow. A, whew, scruffy first half. Um, with, you know, Vadi maybe... Oh, I gotta take a look again. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah, Vadim just not getting the angle. We've seen it happen from him today, actually. That seems like a pretty common uh, strategy from some drivers. One tire, the right tire over the oh, white yeah. line there. For Abramov. And just the Nico angle again. It. Huge angle right there every single time, but maybe drops that left rear in that last outer zone. I think just in this in the middle part of that corner, we did see that 180 SX go one tire over. I'm thinking they might be somewhere in the re the realm of Ian or Ian, rest in PC and Plash, uh, yeah. somewhere in the realm of even. Considering the Deem also had a tire drop and kind of a shaky start, so we'll see if. Nico oh, might want to take the reset here. He's not going to go for it. Vadim with a huge gap in T1, but not getting any of the line. Nico getting given a gift here on the first zone, but he's going to have to try to close up this gap. This will not work. Nico Stalia from downtown doing his best to try to close on Vadim Abramov, but not make contact with that red Luke Oil Esports S15. Transitioning right they're getting onto the door again i think the only issue there davin was vadim maybe not getting the best first half of the outer zone and then nico just with the gap so minimal mistakes in that second run but with the lack of proximity come to cost him yeah nico didn't really get the jump on the start but wow vadim didn't really take advantage of it not anywhere really close to the wall in that first outer zone and nico gets to catching up here in the second half of the run but yeah, he's not quite there in the second outer zone either. He, he closes in here on this last inner clip and he's tight by the end, but really, really not getting the jump on the start. That might cost him. Vadim not really getting up by the wall. That might cost him. Just, uh, yeah, two pretty iffy runs from both of these guys, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's enough to talk about in the first run to be able to decide a winner, but um, we've seen a couple of OMTs so far in this first half of the winner's bracket. Again, we will have, we will continue doing battles until we have a one half of your semifinals, your winner's semis. So this is the, the first group of the winner's bracket. That once we have our finalists for our winner's bracket, we'll be able to go to loser's bracket. We do have a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, slide him left for Nico Siliastan, right for Vadim Abramov. The Skuko Drift family against the Lucas Luko Racing Esports machine. Wes is going to go with Vadim Abramov. Die is going to go with Vadim. The Russian dream is going to be moving on to face Darius Ostreka in the winner's semifinals with Nico Stalia going to be dropping down into the loser's bracket. Unfortunately yeah. for Stalia, again, yeah. the judge is saying it just came down to that lack of proximity and the same thing that we said, Davin, should have just used yep. the restart. Yep, you you mentioned it earlier on. He talked about the restart rules. Uh, Nico should have gone for it and, uh, well, you know, he could learn. He'll be back. He'll be moving into the loser's bracket and uh, yeah. still has a shot at this thing. Again, nine years old, so it's, it's, if he's that good of his driving, yeah. just needs to learn. He doesn't need to learn, but just a little bit more to learn in terms of the actual heads up driving against people. He's got the driving skill. I think that's just the only thing that Nico's really missing in his driving is just um, um, reacting and being able to uh, play the game against the other uh, the other driver, if that makes sense. But this is your quarter first quarter final of the winner's bracket. Darius Ostreka against Vadim Abramov. The winner will be moving on into the winner's semis. Again, if you do not know how a double elimination bracket works, exclamation mark bracket in the chat. You'll be able to look at it yourself. Yeah, moving uh, pretty deep into the first half of the winner's bracket here. Both these drivers have put up some pretty great runs. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen when they come up against each other. Yeah, Vadim, I think, um, really, you know, not to take anything away from... Uh, from Vadim here, but uh, definitely have, has been get, uh, capitalizing on other drivers' mistakes while Darius has just been out driving people. So um, we're going to have to see the best of Abramov if he wants to move on in this bracket. Abramov will be in the chase position in that Luke Oil Racing Esports machine, and Urta Esports S15 of Darius Ostreka will be in the lead position, your number one qualifier here at Irwindale Speedway. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Darius in the lead position. Vadim Abramov in the chase. Nice job. The best we've seen any lead driver on that outer zone. Maybe a little brush of the wall, but Vadim Abramov not scared to get up close and personal with the Lithuanian driver in the lead position. Great job from Darius on the outer zones. But right there is Vadim Abramov. We said he had to bring it and push and force Darius into a mistake. And he's trying to do everything he can right now to put do that. Maybe a little bit shallow on that last outer zone, Davin. But other than that, excellent chase from, uh, from Vadim and excellent lead from Darius. Yeah, absolute clinic from Darius on that lead. Oh, just so clean, so tidy through all of these outer zones. Right up on the wall. But as you said, Vadim not phased at all. I think Darius making a comment on something. He's not pulled up to the line yet, but we're looking at this repo. Oh, just waiting for Vadim. Uh, <laughs> but I think the only mistake we saw here, Davin, from Vadim was going into this last outer zone. Just yeah, tried to go a little bit shallow on the, the line. Transition, and it, maybe. And not yeah, quite out there. Yeah, I missed the first part of that outer zone. And I mean, with how close some of these battles have been coming today, like normally, we, because this is the top 16 best drivers we've had all season, Normally, you wait to the 16 and the 8, and you start seeing these very um, nitpicky, close battles. But we saw it right out of the gate today. Medim Avramov now in the lead position. Darius Ostreka in the chase, saying, anything you can do, I could do better. Right onto the door of that red Luke Oil Esports machine. Not afraid to get close. Vadim may be going over, but big flick from Vadim Avramov in the lead position. He is going all out right now in the lead position but Darius oh getting choked out just a little bit in the chase nowhere for him to go Vadim I think maybe a little bit shallow there giving Darius nowhere to go kind of straightening out just a little bit and bumping doors I correct me if I'm wrong people in the chat I don't think these two guys like each other very much yeah wow an aggressive chase from 
from Darius, but we're going to have to take a look at that first inner clip again from Vadim because, you know, he, he was able to flick it into that second outer zone really well, but he might have missed this one here. Good angle here. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that right front. Yep. Could and be. Then, and then again, and coming right off the bank here. here. Just like you said, chokes out Darius a little bit. But the judge is kind of looking for you to kind of come off a little bit, you, like not completely go from one side of the track to the other. But it looked like Vadim just kind of stayed to the left. So we'll see if that plays a role here. Not technically offline, technically a mistake, but um, might might be something that they point out like, hey, man, if you're, if you're staying to the left there, it's staying tight. The chase kind of has nowhere to go. Um, so but I think it's going to come down to whether they view that uh, that tire drop as a tire drop. It looked yeah, like one to me, Davin. Like you said in the the, the pre-show here, it's you got to make your run chaseable. And I, it's hard to see from from the angle that we have with the right front of uh, Vadim. It's close. It really is. Again, judges deliberating. You can kind of see the comparison of the outer zone two to three runs. As Darius comes, oh, we do have a winner. <laughs> the way they explained it. Ladies and gentlemen, slide him left for Darius Estrella, slide him right for Vadim Abramov. The winner will be moving on to the semifinals. Wes says Darius Estrella, and oh, we go all Darius Estrella. I was clicked on the stream, not the preview, so I was way behind. Darius Estrella is going to be moving on against Vadim Abramov. And um, in typical Westies fashion, typical, uh, you know, he doesn't just say he won because this. He's got a way of saying it. Because Vadim trick or treated through Interclip One's whole neighborhood is is the way he <laughs> put it. So, <laughs> so again, I think that was the strongest run we've seen from Vadim all round. Again, he is not out. He will be facing. I think he that's twenty three. So he will be automatically put into losers round four. So you will see Vadim Abramov again, but it will not be for a while. But that will be our first of our semifinal participants here in the winner's bracket decided. Darius Ostreka will be getting the win and moving on into that final, uh, the se winner's semifinal. Second half of this bracket will be loading in right about now. Davin, where you're just about to go on break, but for concerns of the first half of the winners, it's your first time here at ESDA. How are you feeling, brother? That was cool. These guys are good. I, Darius has, has just put on incredible runs back to back to back, climbed his way up through this bracket. What an incredible show these guys are putting on. That was really cool. I like I like esports drifting. This is fun. <laughs> kind of uncharacteristic to see the number one qualifier actually move on that far. So I think I think Darius is doing his best job of being able to carry that through again. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the regular season was just to decide who has the privilege of competing here this uh, tonight here at Irwindale Esports, or Irwindale Esports, Irwindale Speedway. But the prize pool tonight, again, you take first place. The winner will be your ESD champion and moving on with $600 crisp US dollars in their pocket and an NRG seat and next level racing wheel stand and the ESDA inaugural ESDA Assetto Corsa Trophy. Second place is going to be getting 400 crisp bones and third place $200 on all of your top three finishers will be getting a NRG wheel room courtesy of NRG. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a quick step away here to gather our thoughts, catch our breath and moving to our second half of our winner's bracket. Some of the fan favorites are nestled into that second bracket. Zach O'Sullivan, Darren Baker, Brandon Patrick and more. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more ESDA action here from Irwindale Speedway. Coverage of the 2021 Esports Drift Association is brought to you by Big Duck Club. Whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsport requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire Motorsports, one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. By Next Level Racing. Build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. 
esports tested and award winning next level racing be first by vdc the virtual drift championship is the official physics and tire model supplier of esda learn more about their upcoming season at facebook.com slash virtual drift champs and by vosen your home for assetto drifting content want the track from today's competition and more visit vosen.co Got you. Next entire. Porsche Panamera. We got you. Next entire.
This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels changing life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our final round here of the Esports Drift Association presented by Big Duck Club at Irwindale Speedway. This is our second half of our winner's bracket, and we have a doozy, a couple doozy battles here for you. Some of the drivers that we have is Austin Zalewski, uh, Grigory Andreev, Warren Griner, Darren Baker, Brandon Patrick, Dylan Fink, and Zach O'Sullivan. Um, a lot of these guys have had really, really strong showings this season, but again, uh, Irwindale seems that first, that first wall, Devin, has been the great equalizer here. A couple of taps of that wall. Um, it, it is not guaranteed who's going to be moving on in to face Darius Strike in the semifinals. Yeah, all, all sorts of action with that first wall. People, you know, taking it easy, not really getting up close to it. And then, you know, some people getting too close and, and tapping it or even crashing into it. Uh, lots of OMTs in the first half of this winner's bracket really really close competition here i'm excited to see what the second half brings again again ladies and gentlemen if you're unfamiliar with how drifting works first of all thank you for joining us on podium esports your home of esports drift uh this is how it goes battle format your drivers are competing head to head one on one each battle is going to consist of two runs your higher qualified driver is going to be in the lead your lower qualified driver will be chasing three judges in the booth are going to determine who is the winner who if the battle goes one more time your judges are Michael Westies, Lindsay Spotter for Andy Hately in the Pro uh, yeah, Formula Drift Pro 2 series is going to be Dai Who Helps Run, or Harold McKinney, or Dai Who Runs, ESDA, and VDS Pet Honcho, a Wes Johnston, who is no stranger to competitive drifting. So, again, look, take a quick look at your bracket. Um, we have one driver who is making it on into winner's semifinals. The second half of your winner's bracket will determine who will be joining them. We already have a couple of battles set up for that loser's bracket. Anything, anyone you see on the loser's bracket is sitting on one loss. They lose, they go home. Anyone on the top half of that bracket, they still have that one loss to have in the pocket. And we've seen some interesting strategies on how drivers are making use of that, uh, that little safety net. Some guys are going actually driving safer, which is not what we expected. Um, and some guys are going for broke out of the gate. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. We've had all these battles so far, and no one's really been eliminated from this competition. We've just been knocking people down to that loser's bracket, so it's going to get spicy once we get down there. But we still have the second half of this winner's bracket to go through. Speaking of spicy, this is probably, when I looked at the bracket, the battle I was keeping an eye on the most and may determine who takes this whole thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Darren Baker, XE Rousey, from the Forza days, Team Xenon, Zach O'Sullivan, JSI Mystified. These guys are not strangers to each other. This is not the first time they've battled, and I'm sure it will not be the last. They know each other very well. This is this should be, or it might be in contention, not only battle of the day, but battle of the year. Yeah, Darren I mean, oof, qualifying. Oof. Sorry, I cut you off there. 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm getting the timing right here. With how, how close some of these battles have been, you know, two big shots going head to head, you know, who, who know each other really well, should be a really, really tight battle. I'm very excited for this one. Darren qualifying with 93s across the board. Zach qualifying 15th with an 86. So Zach actually not known for his super high qualifying scores, but brings it in the one-to-one -one competition. Darren can do both. He's a jack of all trades. So, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know why Darren reset there really quick, but um, again, uh, it's I, just because you qualify 15th, 16th, 14th, that doesn't really mean anything here. They're, they're already getting into each other on the way to the line. Again, this is going to be, if it wasn't the final, I think these guys would be having a lot of fun right now, but you got $600. I know Zach has been uh, fiending for those greenbacks to be able to improve his sim setup. And he, this, he really, really wants this win today. It's going to, you know, VDC is starting soon. He is a VDC competitor. I know he's going to be able to carry that momentum into Virtual Drift Championship. But Darren Baker wants to put a stop to it right now. In the lead is Darren Baker, your Wembley winner. Earlier on in the season, Zach kind of falling behind a little bit right now. Shallowing up just a little bit to be able to close in to Darren Baker in the GTR right across the bumper of a transition of Darren Baker, but very, very smooth up in the lead position is that GTR using that longer wheelbase to its advantage. Zach doing a great job of making the second half of the run a lot stronger. Look for that left rear tire just painting the white line of that last outer zone as Darren Baker against strong, strong showing in the lead position from Darren, but Zach doing the best he could in the chase. Good run for both these guys. Neither of them really getting close to that wall. Darren's out there. I mean, it's easy when you got a car that big, but especially on the initiation, both of them leaving a little bit of room up there, but a pretty tidy second half of the run for both of them. I mean, Darren kind of got a trunk, man. Like, like Darren, Darren's car shows up and his booty shows up five minutes later. Like, it's just not. It is a big boy. Yeah, he's he's uh, uh, as as the and kids ooh. as as the kids say would be saying big chungus. Maybe, maybe a bit too big there with that that last outer zone. <laughs> get, get close to dropping a wheel. I don't quite think he did. Though. No, he did. I was watching. I was I was very scared that he was going to drop a tire. This is my pick for the for the championship, Darren Baker. Going up against, oh, see, that's that's how you could tell ESDA vets versus people who might might, might be their first season. Darren's been around in ESDA and even before it was called ESDA. Um, so, you know, he knows what that restart rule is. He felt like he didn't get a good jump. Maybe even playing some mind games with Zach, but um, opting to take that restart. Yeah, good thinking. If you don't get the jump, you can save your run. Again, that chase vehicle is allowed to jump the start, but I think Darren just maybe mistimed it a little bit. It's three, two, one. Getting a much better start was this time Darren. Zach in the lead in the purple as just slide at S15. Big Country Labs NRG machine. But right on the door is the Team Xenon vehicle. Darren Baker right there. Probably the closest we've seen anybody in the first zone. A little bit of taps. Is it going to prevent Zach from transitioning? Maybe just a little bit, but gets all that inner zone. Great job from both drivers. Not make that bigger mistake than it was. But Darren right on the door of Zach O'Sullivan showing, putting on a chase run clinic right now. Watch the left rear tire of Zach not over the line at all as Darren was right there with him, Davin, that entire time. What a chase from Darren. I, that's, I think that's the best chase we've seen so far today. Incredibly close through that first outer zone. Uh, maybe slightly iffy through the transitions, but, you know, he got back up there. That was... Oh, look at how close. Oh, my gosh. So, like, right on his door to the second half of that outer zone. That's... No room to breathe there at all. With a car that big, too. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, he knows his machine. I think this is also the last ride of this S15 for Zach O'Sullivan switching to a different chassis. Real quick. He, this, he, I... he, was, he was in an S13, moved to the 15. His driving improved exponentially. You know, he was missing that just that little extra something. VDC no, Rookie of the Year. I can speak on liveries because I know liveries. Both of these cars are gorgeous. These are re like that. The the clean with the, the black and gold GTR is sweet. But that uh, I, I guess I am biased to purple. But I love the graphics <laughs> on that S15. No, I think if we did a, a year end roundup of, of one of the best looking cars on the grid, I think Zach might even have that wrapped up just um, it, the, the livery plays in such nice proportions to the car as well. 
it's it's a drift livery so it's busy but it's not too busy yeah that's awesome very very tough call here but darren just putting on a chase clinic as we do have a call ladies and gentlemen this is wes is gonna call darren baker on the left side die is gonna go with one more time and westies is gonna go with wow. zach o'sullivan <laughs> we have a split decision wow. so wes said darren better chase that's who we voted for die go went omt saying the gap and run one and contact and run two was his vote for the omt Wesley said Zach because Darren had a bad line of outer zone one in the start of his lead and contact when chasing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to drifting. They're going one more time. That's how you know it's a tough decision. Wow. Yeah, yeah I guess, we, don't, uh, we don't see split decisions very often. Yeah, we haven't. We don't see split decisions very often. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, it's. It, it's Have tough. you ever? Darren had a really tight chase but making contact it's this is a oh my car looks so good <laughs> there's, there's a lot of factors at play um and i'm okay with this I, i'd love to see these guys go again oh yeah look at that thing I, i'm i'm told the the logos are actually like engraved on it like it's uv map like cool looking that's nice darren on the line now zach in the chase i think zach knows what he needs to do the only reason I think that came down to that split decision was just Zach not getting aggressive enough in his chase. We know he can, so I think he may have been saving just a little bit. Darren did not. So we'll see if any of the strategies change here for the, either of these drivers. Darren Baker in the lead position. Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. 3-2-1, here we go. Darren leaving the team Xenon on GTR. Zach getting much closer, almost making contact going into turn number one, but just timed it perfectly right there and with Darren Baker, but he cannot fall behind like he did last time, going a little bit shallow, coming off the bank, but right about just a car like Darren actually, oh, into the oh, wall! No. Into the wall is Darren Baker, and he got sucked into the wall. That is not something that you wanted to see from Darren Baker. Zach, I think, just was falling back a little bit. You know, and, and I was, wasn't was sure if it was going to happen there to happen, but I saw him pull, like, what looked like two car lengths. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh my he, god, like, how did he do that? And then he, you know, then we figured out how he did that. Zach kind of initiated, like, a little little tight here to, to Darren's corner. Not, not right up on Darren's door, but like you're saying, he starts pulling away, and then, oh boy. And just Way pushing a little bit too hard. Wide. Oh, that, oh, that's unfortunate. But, you know, a, a double elimination bracket can let you get away with that kind of thing. Oh, cars are so nice. And I mean, I've seen I've seen Darren kind of come back from mistakes like this before. And abs like he's gotten OMTs on even mistakes. And again, this battle is not over. Zach could easily himself. We've seen him zero once a couple times before this season. He is not impenetrable. Zach now in the lead. Darren in the chase, gonna be putting all the pressure that he can. Nothing to lose for Darren Baker right now. Pushing Zach actually up more onto the outer zone. Saying, excuse me, sir, you're about half a car length off. Going very shallow here, taking a look for Zach, see if he's gonna make any major mistake. Again, sitting on a zero. Is Darren Baker in the chase, putting all that pressure on the lead vehicle, but it might be for not as Zach O'Sullivan, I have to imagine, is moving on into the winner's bracket. Yeah, Darren piling the pressure on, but Zach just doing what he needs to do. Uh, phew. <laughs> it's an incredible, incredible battle between these guys through, you know, all four runs we've seen. Uh, Darren being really, really aggressive in that chase, but he needed to do it after that first run. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing you can really do. Um in the chase position when you're sitting on a big mistake like that is try to force the lead position the lead to make a mistake um and that's really again the only way to do it is put that pressure on but zach is you know he has a ton of battle experience he's got thousands of hours uh in competitive drift i don't think that 
um, you know, when he knows he's sitting on that big of an advantage that he's going to make a mistake like that. As we do have a winner, slide him left for Darren Baker, slide him right for Zach O'Sullivan, two heavyweights of ESDA. One has to move on. That is incorrect. It's going to be Zach O'Sullivan moving on against Darren Baker. Darren, again, taking himself out in that second outer zone uh, in that controversial first battle split decision. We have not seen that all season. That will be yeah. Darren Baker moving on in the loser's bracket. But for the people I see in the loser's bracket, this is not over for Darren Baker. Not in a long shot. And we've absolutely, uh, I believe, in the Forza 7 um, uh, finals, we've seen Darren kind of make a strong loser's run. So it's not over for him at all. And it's it's tough to go out like that. You know, he had, I, I really felt that he had a really good chase, you know, before they went OMT and then little mistake puts in the wall hopefully he'll be uh charged up and ready to go and make a climb up that loser's bracket austin zaluski now going to going up against brandon patrick the otm driver again um otm doing a strong getting a strong showing in the initial season austin the only I believe the only member of team otm who made it to the 16 and just through the last round of competition brandon patrick again you want to talk about close just skating in by the skin of his teeth in the last round, I believe your 16th driver, one of your last drivers to be able to make it in the Triple F Drifting Department, Ferrari, will be leading with Austin in the chase in that S15. He's been getting better and better. All Both these drivers are getting better and better all season. Let's see what they can do. Brandon, all of that first outer zone, using that long wheelbase to his advantage. Austin going a little bit shallow to be able to maintain proximity. Maybe not the best transition there from Zaluski. But Brandon, big angle, the lead position. Austin could not handle it. Into the wall. Brandon just throwing all the angle and then more. And Austin with nowhere to go, throwing it into the wall. Brandon Patrick forcing a mistake from Austin Zalewski in the chase. I don't think I've seen a lead pull something like that where it did not necessarily a mistake. Just went so hard that the chase car was like, oh, oh my God. And then just into the wall. Well, I think they both hit it. We'll have to take a look and see in, in which order things fall apart here. But yeah, Brandon putting up a good lead so far in that huge Ferrari. <laughs> the car's massive. It might be a oh. difference of speed there as well. It's it's. Did, did they both get the wall and then touch each other? I didn't see contact in the wall from Brandon, but I may have been paying too much attention to Austin. Because Austin, like, went straight, straight. So that's definitely a zero from Zaluski. So we'll have to take another look at that again when we get to the double run replays. But to get there, we still have to complete this run. So Austin now going to be in the lead position. You're going to have to see everything he's got. He does not know whether Brandon has a similar mistake. Brandon going to have to put all the pressure on as well. Because if he feels like he has a mistake, again, both these drivers with something to prove here. Brandon closing in on Zaluski. Zaluski almost catching the wall. Just a tactical straighten. Keeping it on that second outer zone, but the Ferrari will not be denied. The Triple F Drifting Department machine of Brandon Patrick right there with Austin Zaluski in proximity. That might be the best chase run we've seen from Brandon all season. Was that enough to take Zaluski out? Great run from both of those guys. Austin, like, he was right on that wall in the second outer zone. Both of them feel like they have to be aggressive here after that first run. Uh, you know, whichever way that contact with the wall may go. It might get a little bit uh, controversial here again. Surprise, shocked emoji. If Brandon was going into the wall, Austin may have been fed into the wall. So they might view that as a um, a lead car leading the chase car into the wall. And your job as a chase car is to follow the lead car. That is a moving clipping point. Um, yeah. But from what I saw on the replay, Davin, it looked like Brandon Straighton may have been from contact in the chase. Yeah, oh, that's going to be, a, once again, tough on the judges, but... You know, having a rough they day. Made, made contact and then both got into the wall, or if they just both got into the wall on their own. So what I might we might be seeing here is um, because we are on a set of Corsa, um, we might be saying uh, again we did actually see it. So slide him left for Austin, Brandon, slide him right for Austin. Go. Wes is going to go with. Brandon Patrick and Die is going to go with 
Brandon Patrick is going to be getting the win over Austin Zalewski. So the uh, thing that we have is you guys see the replay cameras. You guys see the, the, the cameras that we have for you. But the judges are able to both go into like drone cam. They can back out of the session and go frame by frame if they need to from any camera angle they want. And it did that straighten was not due to wall contact from Patrick. It was due to ch uh, contact from Austin in the chase. So I think yeah. he just went for a big dive. Didn't get, did not get the, the flick, the angle he was looking for made contact with that barge. That is that Ferrari. Um, and uh, unfortunately that will be Austin into the losers bracket to face. I believe the loser of this battle, Brandon or Alexander element against Dylan Fink. And we saw one of his team. Oh no, he'll be facing. Uh, no, I was right. Wait, no, he'll be facing Darren oh, Baker. Okay, Darren, no, no, yeah. I was totally wrong. Numbers are hard. Um, Alexander Element going to be in the lead. Dylan Fink in the chase again, premiering that RX7. I believe we're used to seeing Dylan in the S chassis. I believe a, a 180. I'm sure one of his teammates is going to call me a doo doo head and say that I'm wrong. The hope for Team Xenon is not lost. If Dylan can move on here against Alexander Element, another driver that could absolutely take the whole championship here today. Element, a uh, VDC driver as well, I do believe. He is no stranger to competitive drift competition in that baby blue S14. So we have for him to pull to the line. Beautiful new car here from Dylan. I like the boxy look in the RX-7. Such a curvy car, but with the boxy rear, um, would you call that over fenders? It just kind of completes the look so much. It looks yeah. like a super GT car. It looks like a time attack car. All that, all that arrow on the front end. That's cool. Yeah. Again, thanks. Big quick shout out to the Virtual Drift Championship for assisting uh, us over here at ESDA with physics and tires. As here we go, Alexander Element in the lead position. Dylan Fink in the chase in the Hankook Xenon. Their team seen on vehicle. Nice job up on the, uh, the wall, but Alex actually going a little bit shallow. It's going to cause him to run away. Dylan actually trying to play the game here and go a little bit shallow himself to close that back up. Element we've seen has a ton of grip in his car throughout the whole season. Kind of showing that in the first two outer zones, but Dylan is not letting him go anywhere. Right there on the door as Alex actually, as I say that, just puts the right foot down, uh, Davin, in the last outer zone and pulled like three car lengths on him. Yeah, a really quick run from Element. It's an interesting first outer zone here from Fink, who it looks like he slides up and gets a ton of angle, almost gets into the wall and loses his speed, and, and that's where you know, the gap starts building. But yeah, that car is fast. Yeah, again, it's not the first time we've seen it this season from Element, known for the grip, known for the speed. Uh, he's won battles based just on uh, on how fast that S14 is. But Dylan Fink, brand, I think, believe, brand new vehicle for him today. Could be seeing something interesting from him in the chase, looking like that car is capable of a lot of angle. Very, very fluid. And uh, normally when you have a car pulling big angle, they're not going as fast, and there's nowhere for that chase car to go. So I'll be able to see if Element can, can keep up with Dylan. Dylan not afraid, big angle immediately dropping down on the bank just a little bit and getting right back up there, hanging that wing over that concrete wall as we expected. Alex kind of a little bit shaky in the first outer zone, see if he can keep it smooth in the second one right there. So much left foot braking right now from Alexander Element in the chase has not come off the foot brake yet. Right there back onto the door of Dylan Fink, maybe a little bit shallow in the last outer zone. I think Dylan had a much more consistent and smooth lead but alex was just there in the chase yeah great lead from dylan big angle all around but alex able to keep up with him get right inside on i think all of the outer zones here and again i think that alex kind of straightening up just a little bit on the first outer zone might play into the judging call as we've seen before this season if a dry lead driver kind of straightens up they will dock them not necessarily points, but that will be somewhat of a deduction. As a lead driver, you have to pretend like it's qualifying. You have to run as much angle, run a strong qualifying run. You can't really adjust your driving style to try to pull away from the follow driver other than just right foot and hope for the best. I think Dylan definitely had a way, other than that first outer zone, but you can't really fault him for that, Dad. And it seems everyone's kind of being a little bit timid on the first outer zone today. 
it's tight. You know, we've seen people make mistakes there, and you don't want to fall out too early. I, <laughs> I can't believe how much break Alex is putting into it throughout that second run. <laughs> he didn't let off the foot brake once. I was watching. <laughs> That's incredible. And, you know, stayed right with him. Didn't touch him. So I think they're comparing again. Maybe, yeah, Alex kind of ran away a little bit, but um, at what cost? And Dylan with the stronger lead, but Alex with the stronger chase. But again, watching in the replay here, may have just needed a little bit more angle to keep make that a ghost style chase. Spooky. Yeah, once again, tough calls. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, again when you get sixteen guys who are literally at the top of the whole uh, the whole roster, um, it, you get finals quality battles almost every time. Um, and again, this is only your first round of winners bracket estimation mark bracket in the chat. We still have all of losers bracket to go, <clears throat> and we still have uh, one battle after this, which will be Warren Griner against Grigory Andreev. If this one does not go again, as we do have a call. Ladies and gentlemen, slide him left for Alex, slide him right for Dylan Fink, OMT from Wes. Die is going to go OMT, and Westies is going to go OMT. And we kind of called it there, Davin, with Dylan having a stronger lead, Element having a stronger chase. They will be going at it again. I appreciate you giving me the, uh, you know, the we called it. That was, <laughs> that was definitely it's you a calling team. It's it. a team effort. All right, I'll take it. That, that's definitely something I want to see again. I mean... Yeah, I I wouldn't know where to go on that call. Both of those guys put up an incredible second run. So see if they can do it again. See if they push and be a little bit more aggressive to try and make the difference here as we go in the time. So because this is OMT, I think Dylan's going to go, okay, I know that Alex has got a ton of speed in that car. What can I do in the chase position to make sure he doesn't get away from me? Alex now has the opportunity of going, okay, they kind of dinged me for not being able to pull big, consistent angle. I have to try to pull more angle now um, or else, you, you know, I'm, I might be pushing it into a Dylan win or another OMT. And uh, as cool as OMTs are for the spectators, uh, the drivers don't want them. You know, you, you want to you want to be able to win as quick and as easy as possible. So both these drivers now going in with a little bit more information and we could see some adjustments in their driving styles. Dylan Fink is now going to be chasing in this first run of the OMT. Yeah, it's, it's a whole new battle. You know, they've already put their cards out on the table and seen what each other have, and now, you know, it's what they're going to do about it. Yep. I mean, Dylan kind of laying back a little bit. We've seen this before. You are allowed to jump this art as the chase vehicle. It worked out for Zach O'Sullivan in terms of the proximity in his chase, so we'll be able to see if Dylan can kind of do the same thing as Alex Eleanor, Alexander Element will be in the lead. And need to see a little bit more angle from that lead vehicle, a little bit more proximity from that chase vehicle. Alexander Element in the blue S14 being chased by the RX-7. The Xenon RX-7 going to go a little bit low on the bank is Dylan Fink. Alex did the exact same thing. A little bit shallow on the angle, pulled off the wall a little bit, opened the gap up. Dylan's going to try to charge hard, though, saying, excuse me, sir. Oh, but a mistake oh, from no. Dylan. A mistake from Dylan, going to be able to keep the car sideways, but kind of just almost trying to stop from running Alex over. Again, Alex just used the same tactic, kind of, I don't know if it's on purpose, I don't know if it's just a, an issue with this car gripping up, Davin, but came off the wall, lost a little bit of angle, pulled away, and Dylan said, no, 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 you're not getting me like that, and then tried to charge in and just timed it wrong. Yeah, complete deja vu on that first outer zone here from, from the first run. You know, like you said, just not quite the same angle from Alex and then pulls away from from Dylan and this is where it comes apart Dylan tries to send in a little bit too hard and I'm pretty sure he's trying to keep it off of Alex there and not quite getting into that second outer zone Alex now going to be chasing again we've I, I we've seen an aggressive chase from Alex but if Dylan kind of just throws goes hell for leather here and throws big angle and try to force that lead vehicle into a mistake. We could see some contact. We could see some issues. So it's not over. Ton of grip, ton of speed in that chase car. As we move into the second run of our OMT battle here against Dylan Fink versus Alexander Element. 
Dylan in the lead again, as we expected, nice and fluid up on the wall already, not being afraid kind of to get all close to that wall. A little bit of a straighten from Alex, very shaky on the first outer zone. Dylan doing exactly what he needs to do right now, throwing big ale, trying to force that gripped up S14 into some sort of a mistake. Right there on the door of Dylan Fink, though, is Alexander Element. Is that enough to be able to push this into another OMT or perhaps into Dylan Fink's corner? Alex doing a great job on the second and third outer zones. It's going to come down to whether the judges view that mistake on the outer zone from Element is enough to counterbalance the mistake from Dylan and his chase. Yeah, we know Alex has been struggling for angle with all that grip, and Dylan did what he needed to do, put on pretty big angle getting right up against the wall that was a, a really good lead i think in that, that second run there yeah i really do think dylan's got alex's number when it comes to leads but uh there's so much speed in the car in the chase i mean dylan opting to try to close on alex i mean i don't want to tell someone how to drive but uh, if you know the lead driver got dinged for, for too much grip or too much straightening in the lead, just hold your line. I think just that reaction, um, trying to go for the kill there may have cost him as we do have a winner. Alexander Element on the left, Dylan Fink on the right. That is slide him left for Alexander Element will be getting the win over Dylan Fink in a nail biter in a conflict of styles. Alexander Element, again, just forcing the mistake from Dylan Fink. Um, I, not a whole lot of friends in the Twitch chat for Alexander Element, but, I mean, you can't argue with results. I yeah, mean, you can. He, it's drifting, but, you know, it's a waste <laughs> of time. You're wasting your time. He, he, yeah, just playing a different set of cards there. And, you know, we saw in, this, in the OMT, the first run was pretty much exactly the same and sort of forced Dylan into that small air, missing that second outer zone and... I think that's what made the difference. Warren Griner now going to be going against Grigori Andreev. When it comes to, again, it's going to be a very similar battle for how these guys have driven throughout the season. Grigori, ton of speed, t very, very fast S15. Um, Warren, no, if representing Flick Nation, um, that name is not uh, just a team name. Very big angle, not afraid to get uh, a little bit uh, wild in the lead position. So very, very similar battle we're going to see here and a very same sort of idea of conflict of styles as we're waiting for both these guys to get aligned. Grigori driving out of Russia and Warren going to be driving out of Ireland, or one of our two Irish drivers with Darren Baker. Yeah, it's really interesting to see these guys come in with, you know, completely different approaches to the same sort of line the same sort of problem and uh you know it raises different problems for the, the chase driver each time whether they're you know not able to keep up with speed or or not able to sort of run the same angles this is going to be interesting for sure yeah again like i said gregory's kind of been getting a little bit better in terms of finding the balance of his car and, and his driving um, earlier on in the season, we really saw him uh, able to pull away in the chase in the lead positions, but struggle uh, in the chase positions. So I think he's kind of just kind of taken a little bit of grip out of the car and uh, and find the balance with his driving. Um, in the ooh, okay, so Warren's not here anymore. That's interesting. So I don't know if he's having some sort of technical issue. And speaking on that, really quick before we get into that. Um, there is such a thing as sort of like five minute timeouts and, and, uh, mechanical failures. We did have, um, in us drift, I believe in the last round, uh, one of our drivers was not able to get their VR working or just had some sort of display issue, uh, ended up getting knocked out because of that. So I'm not sure if Warren's having some sort of tech issue right now. Um, but Gregory was on the line, ready to go as, um, as Warren just had to pick us back out and just see if something was broken. Yeah, I'm, I'm being told he just had to uh, reset his wheel. So it looks like he's he's going to get back in here and we should get this thing going again. Perfect. Gregory going to park into the grandstands for some reason. Not sure where he's at. Oh, there he goes. Okay. <laughs> he missed the wall completely. But uh... again, oh, Warren yeah. Griner, I think, will be leading here. Gregory in the chase. So if we're going to see a change up in Gregory's style, in S15, that picture is incorrect. Warren Griner, WD Drifts on Instagram. The Flick Nation vehicle. And here we go. Warren Griner in the lead. Gregory Andreev in the chase. 
Warren, oh, almost contact immediately from Grigori going for the flick entry, but right on the door of Warren Griner. Griner up on that first outer zone, not afraid to get comfortable with the concrete. Transitioning, big angle from that lead vehicle from the Irishman in the lead position, but Grigori just not having the line. I think that's what he opted for to be able to keep this proximity close. Nice job from the chase vehicle of Grigori Andrea to keep proximity, but at what cost? Warren Griner putting up a clinic right now in the lead position. Nice and fluid, fast flicks and stylish. Great job from the Irishman. Huge angles from Warren. That was really cool. Uh, I don't know if... Well, we'll have to take a look again here. I don't know if he was a bit wobbly here in the second half of this outer zone or whether it was Gagori just trying to get in there and stay in there, but a little bit inconsistent in the angle, but I think they'll be all right. And then I want to take a look if there's any contact right there. No, it's just Gagori getting on the brakes. Trying to let yeah, very close. And get in there, but yeah, it was it was tight. It's a couple of moments. These guys are almost hitting each other. Switching positions now is Warren in the chase. Again, we've said it before, I'll say it again. The Russian of Grigori Andreev able to put so much speed into that white and blue S15. Be able to see if he can put the hammer down and pull away from Warren Greidner, who has just got it figured out in the lead position right now. Grigori in the lead, Warren in the chase. Grigori kind of low on the bank, pushing up now. Warren going to kind of get a little bit faced from that, but great job of not making contact or making it a bigger issue. But right there, as commentators curse, I was going to say right on the door, but Gregory pulling away a little bit in the transition might be due to his midline that he's opting to take contact oh. being made from Gregory. But I think that was just kind of a hiccup from the lead position. We'll have to take another look at that. Gregory trying to be able to keep all four on the course as Warren putting it on the door to end the run. I'm not sure about that one, but Warren is with the 360 going over the line. It kind of looked like a hiccup from the lead position, an uncharacteristic slowdown. Yeah, that's about what it looked like to me. I mean, it's tough, you know, it's tight. They're right up on each other, but it looks like Andrea may maybe slowed down a little bit right past that apex. We'll definitely have to take another look at it. But I think Andrea just better line through the middle of the course. I thought it was maybe some sort of straight line, but no, just a nice clean line and i mean contact being made with warren but warren didn't go shallow didn't go wide he went about where he needed to go normally when you see contact being made from a, a charging chase vehicle the uh, the chase vehicle will end up going wide as well but um warren got all of that inner zone so we'll have to see how the judges see it he, he pushed it pretty pretty hard into that entry i think uh, it's gonna be a tough one to call but so there is no Oh. He's on the break when he gets into him too, yeah. so I it's yeah, it's tough. It's again, as you keep saying, this is not a fun day to be a judge. Yeah, this you know it's crazy how evenly matched these guys are and how it. I mean, run one was great, but it's all going to come down to that contact, I think, in that second run. Yeah, that's going to be the deciding factor, and I think Judge is taking a good, nice, good look at that. We may even see them drop out of the server and uh, and go take another another peek. And the, the the only telltale factor for me that I can tell here, Davin, is that the chase car wasn't wide. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure if that little bit of contact would have been enough to drop him the other miles an hour to be able to keep it where he needed it. I don't. I don't. I, it's really hard to tell. Oh, here comes the hippity hop. The what? If the car stay, some if some of the cars stay stationary for too long, there's just music that starts playing, and I can oh. hear it now. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you see the trunk rattling? It's so good. We do have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Slide them left for Warren Grinder, slide them right for Gregory Andreev. That is going to <laughs> get over the music right now. Um, that is going to be. Wes saying Gregory Andreev die is gonna go with OMT and Westies gonna be Gregory Andreev so they're going to say that that contact is good due to an aggressive chase from Griner uh, they're yeah. saying that if if Warren would not have made contact then it was a Warren win but unfortunately for Warren Griner, I think Warren's pleading his case right now. 
I, I do see where the judges are coming from, though. I mean, it, again, as to 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 play devil's advocate, if if the if the lead car gets knocked wide, that normally means the lead car was going to make the corner properly. So, uh, as as much as I said the fought the chase car didn't go wide, the lead car went was probably about a car length off. Um, it is a I don't want you don't want to see battles in like that. It's very nitpicky. Yeah. But you know, double elimination. Warren will have a chance to uh, to get back up here and hopefully uh, climb his way up that bracket. I've said that all about a lot of people though, so yeah. it's gonna get really interesting once we get down to that losers bracket because you know it's the last chance for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, they've got team. Oh my god, they were teammates on the line right now. Brandon Patrick, the Triple F Drift Department, uh, Fiorella La Vuturale, but also a member of Team JSI, which is a team that Zach O'Sullivan and Brandon have been on for a long time. It seems like Zach is the Kylo Ren right now, that he has to take out all of his friends to be able to get to the final. He knows what he has to do, but he doesn't have to know if he has the courage to do it. Brandon in the lead coming off that big win against Austin Zalewski and Zach coming off the nail biter with Darren Baker. Can he take out his teammate? Brandon nice and fluid up in the lead position up on the wall more aggressive on the wall we've seen anybody today Zach a little bit shallow in the chase position but Brandon getting all of that angle and Fiorella in the lead position right on maybe a little bit of a straighten there from Zach from Brandon but look at the angle from that Ferrari in the lead position it's taken him all season ladies and gentlemen but I think he's finally gotten that car figured out maybe a little bit of contact from Zach in the chase I think the angle may have phased him there a little bit Zach looking a little bit uncharacteristically nervous in the chase positions right now it looked like he had that chase down through the first half of the run but in that last outer zone huge angle for brandon in that ferrari i mean uh, <laughs> that is a big car to be thrown around like that and i think just a little bit of contact in that last just the very last few seconds of this much like there it's real life counterpart there is one of these cars in existence in, in competitive drift competition. So Brandon been putting in the work, dialing in the setup, dialing in uh, how that car has been driving. I think he's finally got it figured out, but the true test is going to be in the chase against one of his good friends, his teammate, Zach O'Sullivan, who will be moving on. We are about to find out. Zach in the lead position, Brandon Patrick in the chase. USA versus England. Zach going a little bit shallow, but bringing it up onto the wall. Brandon almost running him over, going into outer zone number one, coming off the bank into the transition. Brandon giving him a little bit of room to move, but charging in very deep into the second outer zone, right on the door of the S15 in the lead position of Zach O'Sullivan. Brandon doing, doing a little bit of foot break. He may be able to slide up a little bit, but oh, missing the outer zone a little bit there as well is Brandon. Zach saying, man, I could put down good lead runs too. Brandon actually put in on a strong chase, but it may have fallen apart for him a little bit there at the end. Well, another tight one. I felt like Zach, a bit of a shallow entry here at the, the very first outer zone that sort of threw Brandon off a little bit, uh, as one expects, but he got right back up there on the door, and especially after this first inner zone, Brandon gets right inside Zach on that second outer zone. <laughs> but things fall apart pretty quickly transitions a little bit shallow not quite in that zone but it's oh it was still a chase ladies and gentlemen we have a winner only one jsi member is going to be moving on is it brandon patrick or zach o'sullivan wes is going to say brandon patrick die your esda ceo is going to say ladies and gentlemen fiorella is moving on into the winner's bracket Going to be into the round number three. Zach O'Sullivan will be knocked out of the winner's bracket and moving on into the loser's bracket. He will start in loser's round two, but taken out by his teammate. I do believe this happened last season in Forza 7 as well. But Brandon finally, finally getting some results in Fiorella, getting that car figured out. And it's, I mean, as much as both these guys want to con continue, if you got to lose, lose to your teammate. And yeah, what a way to do it. I, you know, good runs from Zach, but that. I'm telling you, there's nothing that looks as cool as a Ferrari going completely perpendicular to the racing surface. That thing was swinging around. 
Uh, yeah, great win for Brandon. Brandon's um, needed this and more, man. Brandon's Brandon's been kicking himself all season. He's had decent finishes, but has not really had the strong performance we've seen from him. Yeah, that previously. was, that was a, a huge battle. Huge mm -hmm. battle was for big. that Ferrari. And, uh, you know, bumps Zach down to the loser's bracket. It's going to get interesting down there for sure. The loser's bracket is, 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 is scary right now because not only do you have a bunch of guys down there that are super, super talented, super strong, they're pissed. So, yeah. so, and I mean, you wanted to talk about battles that are going to get very interesting very quick. Both these guys have similar styles. Alexander Element, Grigory Andreev. We saw it. We've talked about it. We've seen it with our own two eyes. Uh, both these guys very, very fast, not afraid to get aggressive in the chase. Um, you know, maybe lacking a little bit of angle, but at, at, at the cost of so much speed, both these cars so gripped up. I think Grigory is kind of, tried to dial it back and get more balance out of the car and alex has just lead into it or leaned into it as he will be leading here with gogori in the s15 with the placeholder photo gonna be chasing this is anyone's game well, it's not anyone's game it's kunos's game but i mean you know what i mean yeah it'll be cool seeing similar styles going up against each other see which which one, either of them can master it alex leading Grigori chasing both these drivers only gotten better and better all season alex gonna be in the lead position big flick entry but Grigori right there on the door alex again a little bit shallow gonna see him pull away a little bit here both of them into the wall but oh no Grigori getting into the door of alexander element straightening out just a little bit more but i think that lead driver may in contact oh. again this is a battle or a fist fight that we're seeing here right now Elbows. Element trying to bring it across the line. Grigori straightening out just a little bit to try to change his lineup and get back to the door of Alexander Element that has to be one of the fastest cars on the grid. But Dav, oh man. Wow. Turn one. Turn one's going to be the topic of conversation there. I, I got to take a look at that again. I know Grigory got the wall, but that, oh man. It's tough. Both of these cars gripped up. Both these cars really fast and just a little bit too shallow. I mean, they're both pretty shallow through there. Grigori gets into the wall and then sends it into the second outer zone in a, you know, pretty solid bop on the door of Alex. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be two against Andreev, at least the contact, because it looks like Alex was not all the way on the outer zone. He was there, but just like wasn't into the wall like we expect a lot of these drivers to get. So. I mean, I'm not touching that one with a 10-foot pole. I'm leaving all that one to the judges. But it is not over yet. We've seen Gagori force drivers into mistakes before. Are we going to see it again? As he will take the laundry, will take the lead. As Element will chase. Gagori, again, going a little bit shallow. And Alan Zeller Element trying to keep that car sideways in the chase. That is the catch-22 of putting a ton of grip in your car. Not getting all the inner zone was Gagori, but very shallow. Again, is Element in the chase, but using that to his advantage and getting all the proximity. But Andreev, big oh. angle, but maybe a little bit wide. Is Element going to straighten out? Almost. Almost dropping a tire there as well. As Gagori does drop a tire in the lead position. As contact being made over the wall, or over the line, sorry. That was that was after contact with Alex, so it, it all it all got spicy after the second outer zone there, and Grigori just throwing a little bit more angle at it than I think Alex was expecting. Tamper uh, flaring. It was a great chase to the first half of this second run here, but I'll be able to take a look here after this outer zone. Alex gets right up in there. And Grigori just throws a little bit more angle to try and get that inner clip. And that's where they make contact and things start falling apart. And it looks like a wheel, a tire dropped for Grigori in that last outer zone. And there will be a winner here, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a decision. Yeah, like you said, a, a bit of a fist fight, both runs. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if, if Gregory was just pissed off after the first one, but he definitely drove like he was pissed off. A slide him left for Element, slide him right for Andreev. Wes is going to call Alexander Element, and Die will be able to call Alexander Element. will be getting the win over Grigori Andreev in a bar fight, and will have to go against Brandon Patrick in Fiorella. This is your number seven, your number five qualifier. Your winner will be going up against Ostreka in the winner's semifinals. 
This is the final, for now, battle of, I believe, of the winner's bracket before we move on into the loser's bracket and see some familiar faces, Davin. Yeah, that'll that'll be fun to watch. Uh, it's It's been so close. So many of these battles, tough calls. You know, the, the last one, it wasn't really about Alex being cleaner. It was, you know, who was the least messy throughout both of those runs. But, you know, you'll, you'll get a chance to go up here against Brandon and the, the big fat Ferrari. Should be a good I one. think for Brandon's detriment is Brandon will be chasing first. And I think, really think his advantage is going to be in the lead because that car is big angle, but not that quick in comparison to Element. I think Brandon, what Brandon's going to have to do here Brandon is also a friend of mine, so there will be bias here. So what Brandon's going to have to do here is just run his line, not let Alex, going a little bit shallow, face him. Gets a good jump off the start here. It's Alexander Element in the lead. Brandon Patrick, the triple F drifting department, in the chase. Big angle from that Ferrari, as you see, just kind of running his own line. Alex actually doing a way better job of keeping consistent angle, but still a little bit shallow in the S14, barely keeping that car on the track. Is contact being made with Brandon. And Alex, that is going to have to come down to the replays, but I think Brandon is getting a little aggressive in the chase. Not quite sure what happened there, but Alex getting all of this outer zone now. Brandon doing his best to try to recover from that. Did Alex go a little bit shallow? Because he got hit and then was all up through, like filled the outer zone. We've seen contact there before, Devin. Normally, if someone gets hit, they're into the wall. It is so hard to chase Alexander Elliman here. Just the way that car is set up with, you know, shallower angles, a bit more speed. Brandon did a really good job to this first outer zone, but just sends it in hard. It's tough because Alex has to back that thing down to get up in the corner. Brandon, uh, wow, he went really aggressive there, but it's it's tough to tell what this S14 is going to do in the entry to each of these corners. It's not over yet. Again, I think Brandon might be able to force a mistake here, but Alex sitting with, in his mind with an advantage might play into how his chase run unfolds here. And I think Brandon just maybe expected that him to pull away a little bit more in that area of the track and then just didn't. But also, again, I think just did not get the transition he was looking for either. It was Element, but they're switching positions. Brandon now in the lead, Element in the chase. Brandon getting all of the angle again, just slowly working that car up into the outer zone. Element struggling to be able to match that angle, but gets to it at the end of the outer zone as we've seen from him time and time again today. Big, nice, fluid transitions for both, but Brandon putting on an angle clinic right now in the lead position in that Ferrari. Alexander Element having to go a little bit shallow to be able to keep up with him, actually. I'm surprised at how much speed is in that Ferrari, but it is not going to matter on this last outer zone. Right there on the door is Alexander Element to Brandon Patrick. Will that be enough? That was, a, that was a great lead by Brandon there. Element like, all over the foot break. Just, uh, it's, he can't get the angle that the, that Ferrari can get. That thing's, I, I know I keep talking about it, but I love the way the thing looks absolutely sideways. He's got that thing dialed, especially in the second half of this run. Yeah, they're going to ask for the run one replay being big again. That's the the, the, the fault of contact there is going to be able uh, so there is a zero in the chase from 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 Patrick. So if elements at fault, that's a Patrick win. If Patrick's at fault, that's an element win. So um, basically, you know, it was an exciting second run, Davin, but it's all going to come down to who's at fault for contact here. Yeah. Yeah, deep he, on the foot break. And again, yeah, he was really slow. That angle not really showing the best of it, but uh, normally when you get run over, you get cleaned out like that. You'll see the lead driver get bounced into the wall. So I don't know if, if Element just did not get the angle he was looking for, which is why he stood on the foot brake. Because uh, it looked like kind of a weaker transition for Element. You could see it in his chase run, actually, where he got a lot more angle in his, in his transition. Well, if he didn't bounce off the wall, that means he didn't really yeah, have... He wasn't out wide enough. That's inside. what I'm saying. Yeah. I think he was using the foot brake to pour more angle to put the car out wider. So there is a momentum. It's not necessarily slow down zones, but if you drop uncharacteristic momentum, that is a mistake on the lead. We've seen Element kind of use speed to his advantage today. Before, so me 
judges kind of keeping an eye on him. And I think that time. Yeah, you can see the uh, the sort of pitch of the car. Oh, he did get the handbrake too. Good eye. I hate to keep talking over you. I just I keep pointing out everything I see here. There's a lot to digest. Yeah, look at the way the car pitches when he really gets on the brakes. He slows that thing way down. Ah, it's yeah, it's tough from that angle because we're just cutting from the other shot. But taking a look at this replay again, I think. Yeah, I think that red cone. We'll have to. We'll see how this goes, and we'll be able. We'll see if we can pull one of our judges here into the booth, and just kind of clarify um, if there's a decel. There should be a decel zone there. I just don't think it's on our map that was provided to us. But um, it should. I, I'm not sure if that's where it starts. If that's, but that is something to talk about. Again, judges. Do we have everybody in here? We still do. That is going to be... Yeah, so we are going to have a judge come up and explain the call, but we do have a winner. Slide him left for Element. Slide him right for Patrick. Wes is going to go with Brandon Patrick. Die will be going with Brandon Patrick is going to be moving on to face Darius Ostrika in the winner's semifinals. Alexander Element is knocked out into the loser's bracket. And I have to imagine they put fault on Element in contact there. Again, I'm, I, I'm very biased. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but we have an impartial opinion here of Harold McKinney initial die. What did we see out there? Yeah, um, from the first round, first round was looking, um, I guess you know, you know, pretty average as possible. Um, heat from element has been just, just crazy today. Um, it came under the second round with that contact. So we looked at it closely. Um, it, we looked at it. We see we gave fault to element. That was just he handbrake pulled and left foot break, and the left foot break, um, was too excessive. Now in that area, to make it clear with everybody. You're allowed. It is a decel area. Um, you're allowed to either handbrake or left foot break, and he did both. Um, it was a, he did a quick pull of the handbrake with a heavy left foot break, and which caused that contact. So just for clarification, those two um, red cones. There's the one red cone, and then the second one on the wall. That is the the momentum the, zone, the decel zone. Yeah. So yeah, coming out okay. of Oost, um, inside clip two and one. Excuse me. You got those two red cones. So yep. you, when you see the first red cone, that's the start of the D cell, and the end, and the second one is the end of the D cell. Got it. That's what I. That's what I figured. Just wanted to check with you first. Got gotcha. you. Start lying to people. <laughs> <laughs> you good, man? All right, man. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck with the rest of the run. Rest yeah, of the appreciate round. it. A nail biter there at the end, ladies and gentlemen, to end our second half of our winners bracket. Brandon Patrick is going to go up against Darius Ostreka in the winner semifinals. But to get there, Davin, we have to polish off the loser's bracket. Yeah, a lot of these guys who, you know, feel like maybe some decisions didn't go their way are going to have one more chance to go at it. And we have some some pretty heavy hitters down here, too. So it's going to be, I mean, th this is where the real fight begins because if you lose again, it is over. Yeah, again, that is not a decel zone where you have, you can decel as much as you want. As Dai pointed out, they, they're looking for one form of deceleration, either a foot break, a hand break, not both. And it's any sort, it's a momentum zone. So if you, you they deem you to lose excessive momentum, excessive slowdown, uh, that could come back to bite you. And unfortunately for, um, uh, for Al uh, Alexander Element, but he is going to have a great shot into making it into that loser's finals by being in. Uh, the losers round number four. So uh, we'll take a look at that bracket when we get back to you. But before we get there, we do have to take a brief. Oh, we're taking a look right now. That's, I have eyes. So you're going to be able to see the bottom half of that bracket with uh, uh, Lucas, Artem, Martinez, Brandon. So the farther you made it in the winners determines your seating for the losers bracket. So, you know, Zach, Nico are already into round number two. Vadim and, and Alexander are already into number four. So, some of these guys who are in run number uh, run number one or round number one, Darren, Dylan, Warren, Austin, Brandon, Martinez, Artem, and Lucas are really going to have to make a strong push to see if they can make it into the grand finals here today. But before we get there, 
we do have to take a, our one of our last little breaks here as we get down into the loser's bracket. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us again. If you're wondering, if you're watching and you want to participate next year in ESDA competition and you need your, you want your license, best way to do it, U.S. Drift. We have one more round on uh, November 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern time here at Podium Esports. That will be the conclusion of Podium's uh, Drift content for the year as well. So you guys want to be there for our finale for the season. Um, the top 10 drivers in the U.S. Drift are going to be getting their ESDA license. The Indonesian Digital Drift Series as well, handing out top three licenses, uh, the Ultimate Drift Games, dcgp and australian sim drift championships so pick a series a uh, dcgp is a little bit more european based indonesian and australian championships more for the oceana area so if you guys want to get involved get participating in competitive drift and make your way up into esda that is your best way of going about it but ladies and gentlemen again to get there we have to go through our losers bracket to figure out who our ultimate champion will be our grand finals champion will be stay tuned for the losers bracket here at the esda Presented by Big Duck Club, round number eight, the finals, our grand finale here from Irwindale Speedway. Coverage of the 2021 Esports Drift Association is brought to you by Big Duck Club. Whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsport requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire Motorsports one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. By Next Level Racing. Build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. Esports tested and award-winning, Next Level Racing, be first. By VDC, the Virtual Drift Championship is the official physics and tire model supplier of ESDA. Learn more about their upcoming season at facebook.com slash virtual drift champs. And by Vosen, your home for Assetto Drifting content. Want the track from today's competition and more? Visit vosen.co. Got you. Next entire.
Porsche Panamera. We got you. Next in tire. This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels change in life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful, from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the losers bracket of the ESDA World Finals here from Irwindale Speedway. My name is Keenan Kuzin, joined today by Davin Cornelius Drive Through. Um, we're going into the losers bracket. We have our winners final set. That winners finals being Brandon Patrick and Darius Ostreka. But to get the other half of our bracket, we need to go through losers bracket. I'll, Davin, we've seen all of these guys already battle today. Um, going into losers, how are you feeling? Uh, how are we doing? This, this, this is gonna get spicy a lot of these guys down here in the losers bracket either lost it in like a tough call or really close battles you know we've seen so many tough calls that the judges have had to make and so some of these guys are going to be coming in hot maybe maybe a little bit angry and it's it's going to get interesting because i mean if these guys lose that's championship over yeah, Davin, Davin broadcasting from the drive through design garage. Yeah, I broadcast from my basement. So there's a little bit you know. of a different backdrop <laughs> here for the both of us. But um, yeah, like you said, Davin, uh, a lot of these guys coming in are either uh, sitting on a tough loss or 
uh, what they view as a unjust or controversial cause. So uh, a lot of these dudes are, are coming in hot. They're pissed off. They're ready to fight. So we could see some very aggressive battles here as we take a look at this loser's bracket. Your first four battles will be all of those who lost in the first round of winners. So that's Lucas Tomeski, uh, Tasimeski. I'm, I'm sure I'm saying that completely 100% right against Artem Trilkov. Martinez Ostreika going to go up against Brandon Gardner. That should be a good one. Uh, Darren Baker, Austin Zalewski should be a good one as well. And Dylan Fink and Warren Griner both losing um, in, in kind of the same fashion. So um, that should also be a barn burner. And then those guys will be able to get a, go against the people who lost um, in the uh, second round of winners, which is Grigori, uh, Andreev, Al, uh, Zach O'Sullivan, Nico Stalia, and Vicaris Lucas. So still a lot to play for, a lot to talk about here. We'll be doing all of the losers bracket here before we move on into our final uh, our final server, which will be the losers finals, the winners finals, and the grand finals. So if you've never watched Drifting here before, thank you for joining us here on the home of Esports Drift, Cody Esports driver are competing head-to-head one-on-one battles each battle consists of two runs your higher qualified driver is going to be in the lead run the lower qualified driver will be in the chase run again if you're looking at the shalom's bracket they may not be the higher qualified driver is not always on top so make sure you cross-reference those numbers three judges are going to determine a winner or decide if the battle will be rerun as a sudden death one more time battle your job as a lead driver is to do your best qualifying run as possible as from the ideal line explained by the judges. If you're here at the top of the show, we showed you what the ju- oh, contact cool. Uh, the judges are uh, what the judges are looking for. The closer you are to that line, the better score, uh, the better job you're going to be given. The more props you're going to be given in your lead. You got to make sure the run is chaseable for the staging driver. We just saw Alexander Element get taken out for having a non chaseable lead. Uh, so, you know, excessive slowdown into that slowdown zone going into outer zone number two and follow the momentum map again of those slowdown zones are not necessarily decel as much as you want you have to still maintain fluid momentum through those details uh, those chosen slowdown zones chase driver you have to initiate in the run no later than the final mark point those three blue lines on the racetrack are what you're looking for you initiate after that you're out that's a zero maintain close proximity to that lead driver use them as a moving clipping point match or better their angle or match or better their line and transition so and again ladies and gentlemen we have had the safety net of if you lose again taking a quick look here at what the judges are looking for, the ideal line here into Team One, that restart market we've seen play a uh, play a role here today already. Uh, where drivers, some drivers, some um, Nico Stalia basically lost just because he took up to not to go for the restart. But uh, outer zone number one, want to see big angle, nice and high on the bank, uh, nice and fluid on the bank. Want to see you stay up, nice and smooth, and then transition into the inner clip here. Nice big angle. You should be using the angle of the car to slow the car down. Um, you'll be able to see two red cones on our version of the track, which will be a decel zone, outer zone number two. Here again, nice big angle to slow the car down. Don't really want to see a lot of uh, handbrake pulling in inside clip number two, and then back on the power for outer zone number three. Again, thank you to Scorp. Thank you to, um, uh, I forget his real name, Josh Oxley for doing all of the promo, the pr- excellent promo that he got done to the very last minute. And uh, for the uh, uh, run description, uh, I don't even know how to say it, the uh, ideal line videos as well. He's been doing them all season. So thank you very much, Josh. And uh, uh, staying up, pulling an overnighter to make sure he got that all done. Davin, our first battle on deck, Lucas against Artem. Spicy, spicy, spicy. This is going to be fun. You know, last chance for all of these drivers. You know, we've gone through almost eight rounds of competition now. We're working on the eighth, the first ESDA season here on Assetto Corsa, and their championship hopes could be over with. They don't place these next few rounds perfectly. Again, win and you move on, lose, and you are knocked out. Artem Chilkov from Ukraine. Lukas Dyszewski from Poland. Winner moves on, loser is going home. Scracker pad. Oh, big straighten for Lucas in the Drift 21 S14 as the Scracker pad family FDRX7. Big flick from Artem. A little bounce off the wall. What is going on in that lead position? That flick was nuts. Maybe one tire off there. Hard to tell for Artem, but very, very fluid. He said, man, I got knocked down in round number one, but I am not done. I am not done in the ESDA competition. Wow. That, that run had just about everything. I mean contact at the end of the first outer zone i don't know in what order it happened we'll have to take a look artem with some crazy angle in that second outer zone but maybe a little bit shallow in the third take a look at what happened here 
Oh yeah, Lucas, not enough angle, straightens out. Contact with Artem. Wow. Again, if you remember, Lucas driving his way into the final four, uh, 16 here in the last round of ESA competition from Ebizu just made it work, made it happen all on the line, put himself into contention here, but um, sitting on a big mistake now and Artem Shulkov showing what that car can really do in the lead position. So let's see what he can do in the chase. Artem Shulkov in the chase of the Scrackopad family. S or FD RX7. Lucas in the lead. Lucas Tomeski in the Drift 21. S14 going a little bit shallow is Artem, but he's kind of got that zero to play for. So I don't know if we're going to see a super aggressive chase until probably the end of the run just to get some seat time, getting nice and close. But Lucas showing why he is your ESDA top 16 finalist, getting very, very, very smooth on the lead position. But Artem just having to kind of put a run in right now, not go super conservative. And again, we see him get close there at the end. Yeah, good chase, but I feel like all night we've seen Lucas a little bit hesitant in that turn one. I mean, we know how dangerous that can be. Uh, you know, shallow in the first run, a little bit of contact. Not really up on the wall this time, and maybe a little bit shallow in the second half of that other zone. Definitely I mean, the toughest spot on this course. I mean, another thing to talk about, too, is mental game here. It's already a huge, huge, huge thing when it comes to drifting as a motorsport versus racing, um, more traditional racing, is that it's, especially now that we're in the losers, it's all or nothing. You do, you can't perform here on these three corners. Uh, you're out. And we do have a winner, Davin. Slide him left for our Tim Scholkloff. Slide him right for Lucas Tysmeski, who is going home. Our first elimination of the day will be... Lukas Tysmeski, Artem Chilkov will be moving on. And unfortunately for the Drift 21 S14, that will be Lukas Tysmeski knocked out. Cool flicks from Artem. I mean, a, a great lead, you know, contact made from Lukas. That definitely, I would think, contributed to the decision. But, you know, unfortunate to see his championship end like that. Artem with a, a great run. We'll see how far he can make it here in this loser's bracket. Speaking of cool flicks, the Erda Esports E30 machine, Martinez Ostreka will be going up against the Brandon Gardner, the Team Slide Culture S15. So both these guys get a pull to the line. Brandon has had a great season in terms of qualifying. I think he's got number one qualifier at least twice, maybe even more than that. Martinez uh, solidified basically his place in the top 16 and then just kind of went off to prepare. Um, so, I, I, we, you know, we've seen him do very, very strong runs before. And we talked about it before. One of those guys that might be a little bit uh, driving a little bit angry over getting knocked out of the winners so fast uh, against Vadim Abramov. Um, Martinez definitely one of those guys that I think is going to come to play here. Yeah, both of these guys qualified really well, fourth and fifth, but they've found themselves pretty early here in the loser's bracket. Only one of them can make it through. Yeah, and especially in the loser's bracket where you have an opportunity to go so much deeper, you do not want to be the guy to go 0-2, and, and unfortunately, uh, that will be the narrative for one of these two drivers. Again, not nothing to be ashamed of. If you've made it, into this top 16 you bested i think we had 150 people with pro licenses maybe even more this season so you were the top 16 you were the best of the best to be able to make it into this competition all of these guys have uh, the skill and the quality to win uh semi-pro events but just when you get to this level um you know it really separates those who have that little extra something versus those who uh, those who just need a little bit more time in the oven in terms of their skill and and, and practice to be able to make it there so Again, thank you to all the new viewers watching out there. This is your home of competitive drifting esports, podium esports. Not the only thing we do here. Uh, if you like automotive content, if you like motorsports, you are in the right place. Click that follow button. Support what we do here at Podium Esports. We have one more round of drifting for you for the 2021 competitive drift season, and that is the U.S. Drift Finale in November 14th, 1 p.m. Eastern time, using some street cars, the top 10 position, uh, the top 10 places of points in the u.s drift will be earning their esda pro license as well so if you are loving what you're seeing here today and want to see some more drift action before we hit the new year again november 14th u.s drift street sim series presented by esda will be taking place on 1 p.m eastern time and 
Speaking of points positions, again, the points don't mean nothing. If you're a fan of NASCAR, basically the same idea coming in with a complete reset here today. First place overall, we'll be getting 600 US dollars, an energy racing seat provided by Energy Innovations, and a next level racing wheel stand provided by obviously next level racing. And a, the e, for inaugural ESDA is set, of course, a trophy. Second place will be receiving 400 US dollars, and third place taken home still a cool 200 bucks with all of your top three finishers receiving an NRG wheel rim. Ladies and gentlemen, again, anybody who made it past round three is in the money. So, you know, Vadim, even if Vadim loses, he still cl clears 50 bucks. Um, you know, if you made it to losers finals, that's still $200 for you. So um, there's still a lot of other cash prizes to be given away for those uh, deeper on in the bracket, which is why we're seeing a lot more passion, a lot more, uh, uh, very passionate drivers today because there's so much more on the line than just a spot in the final. This is what they fought for all season. Martinez Ostreka now in the lead position in the Erda Esports A E30 BMW. Brandon Gardner in the chase in the TSC S15. A little bit shallow on the bank was Martinez, but immediately back up there. But Brandon shadowing him like a phantom. In the chase position, maybe a little bit shallow there for Brandon, not getting the transition he was looking for. Going to have to use the foot brake to push back up on the wall, but unfortunately for him, Martinez Ostreka just completely comfortable in the V8-powered BMW E30 in the lead position, showing why he is one of your ESDA pros. Great lead for Martinez. He was painting that line in that last outer zone right up on the edge. Great angle, great speed. Brandon had a really good run through the first outer zone here, but had a little bit of trouble through that double transition in that first inner clip, almost making contact before they even initiated. Yeah, that's kind of the game you have to play here. If you want to stay close, you have to enter as close as possible. That's a risk you take, but, um, you know, paid off for Brandon in terms of proximity until right there, Dad. Yeah, a little bit shallow. You know, uses the foot brake, gets that angle, sort of pulls it together. But look at the left rear of Martinez on this white line to this last outer zone. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, Urta Esports, the uh, the Driftmasters team, very, very present in Europe, has to be pleased with how their drivers have done. They have three drivers in competition today. You're going to be seeing two of them, I believe, in the loser's bracket. Their first one here, Martinez, trying to be able to go forward. Brandon Gardner trying to put a stop to it. As we have our second run here, Brandon Gardner in the lead in the TSCS 15. Not the entry Martinez was looking for. Going to have to slowly bring the angle, but getting way better on the wall than Brandon. Brandon, look at maybe like he's trying to run away from the big bad E30 of Martinez Ostreka. Using some foot brake, Brandon trying to get out to the wall. Not consistent angle, but I say that. Big angle from Brandon in the lead position right now. Martinez trying to put the pressure onto the chase. This car looks so big behind this S15 and right across the line. Did Martinez's entry, I didn't, you know, maybe Brandon didn't get as 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 close in his chase but i didn't see as much major mistakes but i think both of them sitting on kind of just kind of a one part of the run where it just didn't get the rotation they were looking for yeah really really shallow for martinez like you said that's that's tough you know i never thought i'd think of a bmw e30 as big but i know <laughs> it does look pretty sizable compared to the s15 um, also, Martinez not really getting close to that wall in that second outer zone. And I think Brandon just throwing a bit of a bigger angle through that second run. Ah, it's going to be tough to call again. You know, pretty good runs from both of these guys. But, you know, this is why I'm not a judge because I wouldn't be able to make the decision. And finals quality battles here in the first round of the loser's bracket. If you do not know how a double elimination works, very a more of a traditional uh esports style of bracket you can hit exclamation mark bracket in the chat you'll be able to look at challenge.com and uh, it'll show you uh the the results and how things are going to progress forward so we do have our winners final set of darius Ostraka and brandon patrick but we do need to figure out who's going to be making losers finals and we need a winner for this battle and i think one has just come in ladies and gentlemen slide them left for Martinez Ostreka, Son of Life for Brandon Gardner. Wes says, OMT, Die is going to go with OMT. And just for fun, West, he's going OMT. They are going at it again. Davin, I think it came down to just like the same mistake that they both made in different places. Yeah, judges saying 
Brandon with a bit of a mistake because he was following in outer zone two and Martinez with, you know, his sort of bad entry into the outer zone one when, when he was in the chase. So little things sort of evening each other out, uh, which is how I thought I would be able to make that decision. But judges here giving us one more time. I'm excited to see it. These guys have placed their cards on the table. They know what each other have. Well, they know what they've seen. They've seen. <laughs> they've seen everyone else's cards. They know Finally. What, they, what they've got on the table. They're Letting you talk more makes more me time. sound less stupid. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it just just make me go through this segment every time. <laughs> yeah, just gotta just gotta thread the needle. Soap on a ropa. How many more the Jaredisms can I get in one sentence? But uh, I just noticed Ostreka has a changeable rear plate. <laughs> like one of the flippy like james yes Bond i was like oh, he changed his cool. license plate what no it's it's man drifting so cool um <laughs> martina is going to be in the lead position here for the first omt battle of this losers round number one yeah he flipped it and left it now um and brandon going to be in the chase we are ready to go here as we are waiting on harold mckinney our start our ESD, he's wearing a lot of hats. He's a judge. He's our start cone. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. Martinez in the lead in the Urta Esports E30 BMW. In the chase, Brandon Gardner in the Nissan S15 TSC vehicle. Oh, almost making contact with Martinez. Martinez is going a little bit shallow, but going to bring it up on the wall. It's kind of what we've been seeing from drivers today. But Brandon doing a great job of not making contact. Big flicks from both of them. But Martina's is going to run away just a little bit, getting a little bit faster of transitions. But Brandon catching right back up and right back onto the door. Way better chase from Gardner right now. Martinez, again, just showing the strengths in the lead position. One of the best lead drivers we've seen all day, Davin. But Brandon having a much cleaner chase. Good lead for Martinez. Like you said, Brandon not giving him room to breathe. I mean, maybe a little bit slow through that transition in the first interclip, but caught right back up through that second outer zone. Little bit of contact there at the very beginning, getting a little bit tight and a slight tap of the door from Brandon to Martinez. But look at this, look at him close that gap. Get right up on the door of Martinez. And does not let him breathe through this final outer zone. What it's, a dogfight of a battle we have here. Yeah, it's a clean run from Martinez. Not not as tidy from Brandon, but he was there. Brandon putting his name in the conversation here as we get ready for run number two. Brandon Gardner in the lead position. Martinez Ostreka in the chase in the Urta Drift vehicle. Brandon not one to back down, also known for his very strong leads. Martinez going to try to get onto the door. Brandon kind of going down a little bit, thinking right back up on the bank. Martinez straightening out just a little bit early, but able to be able to make it into not a much of an issue. Might judges might have a look at that. Brandon into the wall, keeping it sideways. Everything being left on the track from both drivers right now. Transitioning into the final corner. Martinez taking a bit of a different line to be able to close that gap. Gets right to the door of Brandon. These both these drivers know what's at stake here, laying it all on the line here on the final, the ESDA Pro Championship. Presented by Big yeah. Duck Club. Brandon had a really good first half of the run there. Great lead. He gets, you know, maybe a little bit off the wall, but he climbs that bank and gets right up there, wing on the wall. And it's the second outer zone just ends up going a bit too deep. I feel like that would have been, oh, an easy decision if it weren't for that. Now it's going to be tough. Yeah, I mean... Both these drivers, I think their strengths were their leads. So I think Brandon throwing it away, not throwing it away, but uh, taking away from his own advantage, I think was was not what he was looking for there. As I'll just take another look at this. Davin, would you say he was in too deep? Wow. He was trying to keep? Wow. Keep it going. I looked up the lyrics for it, and uh, I got into deep by Genesis, not some forty-one. So I am stupid. Really, that shows up first. I'm a little bit disappointed. That's what I said. Up, up above in my head, instead of going under. That's oh, the one. So the one line I forgot was. <laughs> we have a decision. We do, and I think we're having a clarification come after it as well, but. Slide him left for Martinez Ostreka, right from Brandon Garter. One of these guys is moving on. One of them's going home. West is going to go with Martinez. Die is going to go with Martinez. And West, he's going Martinez. 
Brandon with a little bit more mistakes is what I'm being told. Again, yeah. I think it was just that hiccup going in and then bouncing off the wall um, was kind of the wrap there, Davin. It was an exciting chase from him as well, but just a little bit scruffy. And those those little things add up. Martinez just with, you know, both runs, just overall cleaner. Um, so sad to see Brandon go out like that, but Martinez will be moving on to the next round of the loser's bracket. So, again, our uh, Artem Chalkov going to be going against Grigori Andreev and then Brandon Gardner going, or Brent Martinez Ostreka, sorry, going up against Zach O'Sullivan is going to be your first two battles of your second round of losers. Next up, Darren Baker in the XE Xenon GTR against Austin Zalewski in the On the Mountain S15. Again, I don't think any one of these guys that have, gone, have bowed out here uh, in the first round of losers have anything to be disappointed of. Lucas, again, that run at, at Ebizu was was a, a miracle run to get himself from like, oh my, oh, I think it was like 20 something if in points to move all the way up to the 16 just by driving his heart out. And uh, and Brandon has had a very strong season here as well. So um, say goodbye to both those drivers, but I've got to imagine they'll be back stronger next year. As we move on into the three, third of fourth battle here in round number one of losers darren baker if anybody here in my opinion is able to go all the way in losers bracket it is this man so cool under pressure but austin Zalowski is no slouch oh and there's certainly a lot of pressure because this could be the end of the season the end of the championship run for both of these guys again all like you line. said be good. yep everything to play for here with some one person's moving on one person's going home or they're probably already at home. It'd be weird if they weren't at home. Yeah, but they're going to go home and stay home and <laughs> not win. Darren Baker in the lead. Austin Zalewski in the chase. Run number one here. Darren, great angle on the wall. It could be a little bit farther, but Austin shadowing him like a phantom in the night. Going into the second zone. Big gap forming. I think Austin getting a little bit too aggressive in chase. Having to give him room to maneuver. Darren Baker in the lead position. But closing right back up. Austin Zalewski finding such a balance of speed in that S15. But Darren Baker has found something in the lead. Yeah, you got to give that GTR a big berth throughout those transitions. Let that big thing turn around. Uh, pretty good lead for Darren. Uh, like you said, not really quite up on this outer zone wall. In, in turn one here and Austin able to get right inside and hold that drift pretty much matching his angle but all the transitions where it gets a little bit hard but Austin's able to close back up there if there's one guy in the field here that I think has can put down some of the strongest chases when it matters uh it is Austin Zalowski team on the mountain known for their proximity for their aggression um, one of the strongest, and, 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 and shout out to the whole team. Uh, they do so much for the Assetto Corsa community, track building, uh, you know, getting helping drivers get seat time. So Darren with the doors, <laughs> he's feeling himself right now, man. I tell you, he does this to pop me every single time, and it works. <laughs> but Darren, with I think he's feeling himself a little bit right now. Again, uh, when it comes to again it comes to somebody, I think can make a whole run through this losers bracket. Darren does not let anything phase him. Very quiet, very soft spoken gentleman, but uh, lets his driving do the talking. Maybe he's just a little bit hot in the cockpit and wants to air it out. They do Could be getting thing. the smoke out. Yeah. Shake the doors a little bit. Have not. Do not see the tree. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We were, two drivers disconnected, so we let them come back in, so there's not going to be any lag during the run, but here we go. Just small hiccup there. Austin now in the lead, but Darren has been put down some strong chases. Arguably one of the best chases of the day so far. Right onto the door of Austin Zalewski, leaving him a little bit of room, but he's going to close in right here. Austin doing a great job in the lead. But Darren is right there. No mistakes so far from either driver that I can see. Maybe a little bit shallow on line there from Darren, but he's going to use that to his advantage as Austin paints that white line with his left rear next and tire. Austin getting really close to, to dropping a tire in that last outer zone. A great lead from him. But Darren managed to stay a little bit closer through that transition and into that second outer zone and got right up on his door through the third. As we see both these runs side by side, you can see that Austin was a lot closer to the first corner. 
But this transition's really where things start to separate. Yeah, Judge is asking for run number two in big picture. So clearly they're looking for something here. Again, I think they might just want to check and see. Oh, Austin yeah. may have had a tire off in the first half of that corner. That's got to be what they're looking at. Yeah, I mean, it was close. It was definitely on the line. And I mean, as a driver, uh, it's hard to tell sometimes where the rear of your car is unless you have a ton, a ton, a ton of time in that car. And I mean, to make a correction there would be a foot break or... or it might be a little bit too much. You know, you just have to commit. But yeah, just oh. maybe a tire over there on the first half of the third outer zone. And that will make the difference, I think. Yeah, there was... Other than that, I don't really... Other than, like, some line choices and whatnot, I don't really see a mistake here, especially in the second run. Like, Darren kind of just backs off, gives him all the room to move here, and then goes, okay, uh, here I am. Like, it's very evenly matched until this last this third outer zone would hate to see Zalewski go out on a tire drop uh, especially like just a tire drop like that if it is a tire Minimal, drop yeah once again I feel bad for the judges today <laughs> it's a tough call they're having to make yeah that's just a, a byproduct of the bracket we do have a winner ladies and gentlemen Slide him left for Darren Baker. Slide him right for Austin Zalewski. Winner will be moving on. Loser will be going home. That is one for Darren. That die says Darren Baker will be taking out A to Z. Austin Zalewski. And as the judges said, the tire drop was the nail in the coffin. Spooky Halloween. Ooh. <laughs> and Darren Baker will be going up against the prodigy, Nico Stalia in the second round of loser's bracket. Ladies and gentlemen, our final round one battle. Dylan Fink, Warren Grainer, Davin, uh, coming off that last battle. I think that was the closest battle we've seen in terms of driving, but um, you know, when it gets that close, the littlest mistake can be all it takes. Yeah, I don't want to send either of those guys home after those runs, but you know, it has to happen. Someone's, someone's got to win, and unfortunately, Austin just slightest tire drop and, and yeah, like you said, the nail in the final coffin, that'll be that. So unfortunate for him, but Darren could go the distance, like you said. Yeah, I picked him early on to go all the way, and I've seen him do things like this before. So uh, I have faith in uh, in Darren Baker. Um, we'll have to see if he can keep that going against Nico Stalia, but he will be facing one of three drivers. It could be either these two gentlemen. Dylan Fink, Warren Griner. Dylan Fink got taken out by Alexander Element. Warren Griner got taken out by Gregory Andre. So both these guys, I think, lost to guys that just... There was a conflict of style, you know? And again, as a, from a driving perspective, I'm pissed off. If yeah. I know I'm throwing big angle, I'm doing everything I can, I feel like I'm driving the best I can, and that's how I lose, I'm not happy with that. So both these guys might be a little bit angry. Not necessarily at each other, but... Um, we could see some exciting battles here. And if they if they do pull off a couple wins here and, and move their way up through the loser's bracket, they will have to go up against Alexander Elliman in round four. So it's not over yet. Yeah, Dylan looking for uh, a shot at revenge here. And Warren also trying to take out the one who took him out. That's a great point. Is you can get instant gratification on revenge. Yeah, well, not instant. They got a couple guys to work through first. Yeah, Grigori being on the other side of that bracket, but uh, but Dylan going to go up against Element if he makes it to round number four, but he's got to go against either Nico or Darren if he can take out Warren Grinder here. And that's a big if. And Vicaris. And Vicaris, again, who's another guy who could probably take this whole thing. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our last round number one battle here for ESDA in the season. Warren Griner in the lead position in the Flick Nation 180SX. Dylan Fink in the chase in the XE Ooh. RX7. Big, big proximity. Big angle from the lead position. Maybe a little... Oh, just having to give him a little bit of room to maneuver is Dylan Fink, but right back onto the door of Warren Griner. Very, very close battle right now in terms of proximity. Will they be able to end it with an exclamation point? Dylan having to go a little bit shallow on line to get back to the door. Warren, Warren keeping all four on the course. 
Strong run, maybe some line choices from Dylan that I don't necessarily think were smart, but I think he just did that to avoid contact. Yeah, it was a good lead for Warren. Dylan just, he had trouble, I think, in all of the transitions. You know, letting Warren get his car spun back around and, and trying to get back inside. Does a really good job through here for first outer zone. Does okay through that first transition and then sort of has to back off, climbs back in there. Not quite as close as I think we'd like to see through that second outer zone. And here's where he really struggles to get the car turned around, not really to the outside of that outer zone. That inner, clip one, end of it. that inner clip one transition may come back to bite Dylan Fink, but we still have another run to go. Warren Grinder now in the chase, the Irishman against the Englishman. The British supremacy as only one will move on and the other will go home. Dylan Fink in the lead and that beautiful RX-7 chasing as Warren Griner, giving him a little bit of room, going a little bit shallow on the bank, and then actually Dylan going a little bit, just a hair shallow on the bank. So Warren is able just to suck right back up to a much better transition from Warren, but Dylan actually pulling away a little bit here right now. Warren having to just charge in just a little bit, not really looking set in the way. It's no big angle as well from that chase vehicle as Dylan putting on a clinic right now in the lead position. Is Oh, no, just keep it. Maybe all four tires on the course there, Davin. I looked for it. I didn't see it. But Warren, I think, maybe just waited a little bit too long to attack. Yeah, surprisingly similar to the, the first run. You know, a mirror image where Chase Driver just having trouble getting through the transitions and getting caught back up you can see that as we got both these runs side by side the gaps are pretty similar throughout the entire thing good leads from both drivers but maybe a little bit lacking in the chase i think yeah i think um <clears throat> nice voice crack you very cool yeah. um yeah i think uh, um <laughs> it's gonna come down to chase for chase because i think the leads are pretty comparable yeah. um you know, Warren was kind of like maybe more very minimal mistakes. And then Dylan, for me, uh, the killer for me for Dylan, uh, which pushes this battle into conversation, I should say, is this transition right here. This kind of eh, didn't really have a lot of angle, kept the proximity, but like kind of want to see the mirror of the flick, the mirror of the angle. And it's like he backed off and kind of straight lined it a little bit just to make sure that Warren didn't pull away from him. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a choice or a mistake, but uh, and then just a line a little bit shallow coming into OZ3 to be able, again, just to not lose proximity. Yeah, I mean, really, really, really similar runs. And it's, once again, going to be the small things that add up in the judge's eyes. Uh, I know I, I've said tough decisions so many times tonight, but my goodness... Yeah, it's you're right though every single time. Like it's not. I mean, it looks like I'm seeing the same thing twice on both of these screens here. And it's pretty close. I think it's just going to come down to whether the judges deem it as similar mistakes. Yeah. Oh, here come the tunes again. Um, or whether uh, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen so you can hear this. It's it's Warren. <laughs> This is so good. We do have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. It's so <laughs> dumb. We do have a winner. Rattling. Die is going to go with. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. West is going to go. Dylan Fink, sorry. Die is going to say one more time, and Westies with the deciding vote. That is actually incorrect. Oh no, I'm, I'm dumb. I can't read. Um, okay. I've made a mistake. Okay. I, I, I can't believe I can't believe I, I'm not. Per I, I Steve Harvey'd you. I'm sorry. That is Dylan Fink getting the win over Warren Griner with a two to one decision. Better angle in the follow. Matched lead car's angle better. Again, Warren was just kind of struggling with his angle uh, there, Davin. But uh, that is the how close that battle came. Yeah, I think you called it. I think it was that angle through the second inner clip in Warren's chase and into the outer zone three where he just, just wasn't quite matching Dylan's angle. And it's close. I mean, when we've got an OMT vote like this, you know it's close. Um, but <laughs> still Dylan's rattling, dude. What? I, I could still just hear his trunk. I have to click away. Oh. <laughs>
but but yeah, uh, good I'm, showing for both of those guys really was again i don't think any of those four drivers that got knocked out uh, o and two have anything to be disappointed about. Lucas again, that huge run at at, uh, at ABZ to even get here. Brandon's uh, been stellar in qualifying all season. Austin has put down some excellent chase runs and really brought it to Darren. Um, and then Warren Griner again there as well. Some of the most uh, I remember him at Mega Space, just so fun to watch in the lead position as well. Very very fluid, stylish drivers. So all four of those guys have nothing to be ashamed of, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a shout out to those guys. And we will see them in 2022 uh, ESDA competition. But that is your second round of losers set. Our first battle going to be Grigory Andreev against Artem Chilkov. Russia against Ukraine. Grigory will be chasing. And Artem will be leading first. As we are now complete with the season of round one competitions and this is our final event here ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us at podium esports if you haven't already click that follow button support what we do we have one more round of esports drifting coming for you to uh, this season that is us drift round number four november 14th 1 p.m eastern time would love to see you guys there that is a if you if you're not into there we go if you're not into the uh high power high grip that you've been seeing here today that is all street cars so uh location to be determined i believe um davin you've seen both these guys drive already especially in the losers uh how are you feeling here yeah we're gonna be looking at guys from now on who've we've all won a battle here at, at you know today mm -hmm. and it's it's gonna be tough we know artem he put up a really sweet flick in that losers round one battle and I don't know if he'll be able to do that here, at least not in chase, because we know Grigori is one of those guys with a little bit more grip, a little bit less angle on those faster runs. It'll be tough for Artem to keep up in the chase, but see if Grigori is able to match those angles that that pink RX-7 has been pulling through the second run. Yeah, Grigori has to uh, dust off the cobwebs here as he has not moved yet. But uh, Artem... Yeah, just unfortunately, uh, this beautiful, I it's think nice. D-Max, I like that. white and blue. For those who don't know, Davin, again, um, you are a livery designer by trade. So, I mean, a lot of these cars that you're seeing here today, I've, you made a couple of comments, but... Uh, I'm inspired. These are great. I was going to say. I, I love these these classic I, I just feel like you know that is like a 90s drift design or early 2000s that's cool you know you've got yeah, stuff very, like the, the red s15 here which is a little bit more modern but very but, early d1 yeah yeah it brings me back these are awesome so you know shout out to uh all the livery designers for these teams again some of these cars are uh replicas of their counterparts i know the luke uh, you saw art uh uh vadim's uh Luke Oil S15 there. Um, so we have, we are talking about that battle again. Driver saying there was contact that we didn't see, but never said anything until after the decision was made. If they feel like contact, there was contact, they needed to say something right after the run, uh, not after decision. So Die is talking to them. So that's why we have a little bit of a, uh, and I <laughs> hope the drivers are like, our dream, get your crap together, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the doors open. There, it's got the doors, yeah. <laughs> Wake up, brother! I gotta say, I really like this S15. I don't know, it's just... I like that style a lot. Not not just the, the decals on it. The There's skin. four of them. This is bullying. But, uh... This is kind of... You know what this reminds me of? Like, in the movies, when all the the, the, the gang on the Huffies with the, with the bikes? Sure. That starts circling somebody. Yeah. All we all Shark. we need is the the, the little bike uh, the little bike bell. The ching ching. You came to the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> the door is on Darren's car. <laughs> he knows that makes me laugh. Like it got me the first time, and he's been doing it three <laughs> times as much ever since. It's great. I love it. But uh, I think everyone pulling away now. I think Gregory is ready to go. If he's feeling up to it, you know, no rush. Take your time, hun.
the Artem <laughs> is now behind him going, sir. But I think, again, just some uh, some logistics on our side. Uh, again, this is run it's number kind of two. <laughs> About round number... <laughs> Now pushing him. Yeah. <laughs> Round number two uh, for in the losers bracket here. Now he, uh, the he next put on a, a timer here if he doesn't move, right? Yeah, they will. I think if he's AFK, they might be. Uh, they might either just move on into the next one. It's more so. Oh, oh, that is now a problem. <laughs> what happened? So what happened was uh, oh, what. Zach thought it'd be really funny to just drive into Andreeve at full speed and then got a he got kicked from the server. And now oh. we have to restart the server for when we go to Zach's battle. You can't get back in? Nope. The oh. the message said oh. kicked until server resets. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Zachary. Very cool. Uh Yeah. Excellent. Very nice. So I don't know if they're still talking about that last battle, or we're gonna have to get into uh, five minute, uh, five minute area for Gregory. It's more so used for um, for Technical tech stuff, issues yeah. and like internet issues. Not I don't know what's going on with Andreev right now. But um, as we're moving on into round number two again, like you said, Davin, all these guys have won a battle. We've seen them drive at least uh, twice today. So. Um, Cobwebs are go oh yeah we are I think we're just gonna go for the reset now. Um, thank fine. you Zach. <laughs> Everyone say thank you Zach. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> find them six robux. It's uh yeah it's gonna be interesting here. These guys have all sort of warmed up. You know they've all they've all won one round, and uh, trying to get a few more here. Losers bracket. Yeah, uh, unfortunately I'm for Zach, lost that... to, to the back of Andreev's car. <laughs> Maybe he lost to his own decisions, but you know. Eh, you know, he did it for the joke, and I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But, I, know, I appreciate a man who, uh, who, uh, who, who sends it for the joke. But uh, we do have our drivers loading in again. It, it, we went back in time. In no, terms of uh, in-game time. Yeah. Yeah, we have Z Zach has returned. As we Ooh. go back into the server here. Don't view the map. Take a quick look. Again, another quick overview. Welcome to the virtual, I hate using that word, but the virtual Irwindale Speedway. Um, taking a look at that outer zone. Two inner clips here. Again, you have a momentum zone right before the second outer zone um, and a slight decel as well before the third outer zone. So um, there is some places for these guys to back off just a little bit, but um, uh, we saw it. We saw it play a factor here earlier um, in the broadcast with uh, elements element. Just they, they dinged him for uh, backing off a little bit early. Uh, our, a little bit early and a little bit too soon as we have a reporter on the scene here apparently i think he just came in here to listen no i, I came here to lurk what do you mean that's what i said <laughs> turns out ian plash is not dead ladies and gentlemen biggest plot twist Wait, of the what? season coming to us live from charlotte north carolina <laughs> No, but, uh, I just wanted to come by and say hey real quick before you guys got going for this uh, this reset stun. It's been a killer competition so far. Uh, really been enjoying everything I'm seeing high atop the Charlotte Motor Speedway and my other job obligation. I just I, I thought I had to come in and say hi at least once before this uh, this whole season wrapped up. You guys are killing it. Just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been watching this whole entire season. And uh, Davin, thank you big time for stepping up and uh, being our second chair while I've been uh, away doing my big boy job. I appreciate you, man. Thanks. I'm doing my best. <laughs> it's fun. I'm just wondering how much milk and how many cigarettes you're going to be coming home with. <laughs> Not enough to, to, to seal the void or to close the gap that has been open thanks to me abandoning the family, I guess. It's, uh, it's unlucky. It's not the first time I've heard my void. It would be difficult to seal. Anyway, moving in. What? 
<laughs> what? Don't Wait. worry about him. Grigori Andreev is on the track. Cisco's mad at me now. <laughs> Moving on into the into the competition, we have Artem is active. Grigori is active, so I think we are going to have competition as we wait for Andreev to pull to the line. Again, just a small hiccup here. And just having to explain again, we are waiting to do our second battle of round number two, losers. If you are unfamiliar with how, oh no, this is a first battle of round number two. I can read. If you're unfamiliar with how losers bracket works, exclamation mark bracket in the chat. You'll be able to see how each of your, each of your favorite driver has per, uh, progressed here in competition. So Artem Cholkov was taken out in round number one by Vakaris Lucas, and then took out Lucas Tysmeski. Tasimski? Tasimski. I will never have to say that last name again. That's the last time. Now. Um, and then Grigori Andreev uh, got the win against Warren Griner, but was taken out by Alexander Element. And this is how he found his way into losers round number two. So this is his second battle of the day, but he has a win in his or third battle of the day. Sorry, but he has a sec, uh, win against Warren in the pocket as we have both drivers on the line. It turns out we will be battling this this year. This is very cool. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Artem in the lead in the Scracker Pad family FD RX7. He's got the pink lights. And Gagori in the chase in that D Max S15. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Not the entry Gagori was looking for, and oh, contact oh, being made with Artem. Oh, so that is going to be it right there for run number one. This is all just for practice and show now waited all that long to... Yep, oh, that'll yeah. happen. Falling apart in the first turn. That'll happen. Now I know how my my parents feel. Just so much waiting for a huge disappointment. Man. <laughs> As, uh... We might have a time to take a quick look at the replay, but again, it just looked like Grigori didn't get an entry, and then when he tried to send it again, it just straightened out. Yeah, yeah. We said it was tough with those those high grip cars. Just couldn't hold that angle, and oh boy. I mean, that's, there's that's a tough way to go out. But there's not, absolutely a way that the judges saw something we didn't see. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to call it dead before it's dead. We got another run to go here. Okay. So we'll see how Artem takes this. Is he gonna take it as, as a pressure free practice? Or is he going to just kind of back off and give Gregorio some room to move? Gregorio has to do whatever he can to force a mistake. Not the way he wants to start it. Again, entering a little bit shallow, finally getting the angle in the top half of that bank is Artem Chilkov. Again, just giving him room to breathe, giving him room to maneuver, and pulling a lot of angle in that FDRX7 in comparison to Gregorio in the lead position. As I say that, that oh. is just him pulling the angle, trying to get the car in the corner, but too little, too late, and a tire oh, over from Andreev right. at this point. Uh, no. Davin, even if there was a... Yeah, he just already reset. I think he already knows, so... Um, That's tough. Yeah, That's it's... Tough. I hate to see it. I... Yeah, he, he had to push it after that first run. Um, uh, unfortunate way to go. It's been a, a good showing from him so far today, but... Oh, coming apart in the loser's bracket. I mean, it's been a good showing for him all season. It just... Uh... Unfortunately, the way yeah. he's going to be bowing yeah. out is not representative of how he drove all season. Um, spoiler alert, I guess, but uh, we do have a decision. Our, our Tam on the left, Grigori Andreev on the right, and that is going to be one, two, three. Our Tam Chilkov for the Scracko Pad family in the FDR X7 is going to be moving on to face the winner of our next battle, which is Zach Osalva Martinez Ostreka. But uh, yeah, just that's the first battle I think I've expected to see it a lot more today, Davin, where that first corner wall just claims cars because it's like almost magnetic. Um, but again, I think just that, that that extra grip in that car came back to bite him. And now you have to think to Alexander Element, who's sitting in losers round number four right now, our losers semis. Um, is would that be something we're going to see later? But we'll have to get there to find out, I guess. Yeah, we've we've seen that turn one wall coming to play a couple times but usually it's been like a small tap or something that could go either way but yeah that one was pretty cut and dried 
big, big implications here. Both of these drivers are what I would consider to be heavyweights. Zach O'Sullivan, your regular season champion, trying to convert that into a championship today. But he's got a mountain to climb in Martinez Ostreka. Martinez getting knocked out fairly early against Vadim Abramov, uh, but taking to Brandon Gardner to be able to move on around number two. Zach O'Sullivan winning against his teammate, one of his one of his friends, I should say, Darren Baker, and losing to his teammate, Brandon Patrick. So um, both these guys with unique routes into this final four. Thank you, Yop, for the raid for the party of five. Yup, me wanna win the morning come. As Martinez Ostreka in the lead now is Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. Martinez big, big up on the wall, right onto the door. Zach O'Sullivan in the chase position, trying to get all of the proximity on Martinez. Going a little bit shallow there is Zach, as Martinez actually came off the wall just a little bit as well. But big angle from both these guys, that Urta Esports machine, um, trying to get the transition there. Maybe a little bit late, but Zach right there on the door in the, in the just slide it. NRG Innovations S15, lot to talk about in the first two runs. Yeah, Martinez really clean again. Just tidy lines. Zach pushing the aggression, getting right up on the door. Might have missed that first inner clip. We'll have to look at that again. You see, not quite matching the angle to the first half of the outer zone with Martinez. But Zach sends it in pretty hard. Ooh, that's close. Yeah, Zach might have a tire over there Con in that first inner clip. There as well. Um, but Martinez has just put up good leads. Every single time he's come out here, just clean, tidy. He probably could have gotten closer to some of the walls there, but, you know, a really, really good lead run. Switching positions now. Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. The Urta Drift Machine. Martinez Ostreka, the E30. In the chase, Zach is in the lead. Getting all of that wall. You hear that 2JZ popping off the wall. Oh, big straighten from Martinez. Almost getting into the door of Zach, but transitioning here. And Zach, kind of a weak transition door, going to be open for Martinez. They'd be able to close that gap right onto the door. Maybe a little bit of contact actually pushing into the second inner zone. Last outer zone now. Martinez Ostreka could be ending the season for your regular season champion of Zach O'Sullivan. Wow. A, you know, a few moments there for Martinez, but all in all, especially through that second outer zone, just right up on Zach from initiation to exit, the, the entire corner on his door. Ooh, maybe contact there in the first turn. If Mar Martinez did start to straighten out a little bit. But you see him close in, great entry, right up on Zach's door. And I don't think they touch before that inner clip or afterwards. Really good second half of the run from Martinez. That was great. I mean, they both still made it into the clip. We've seen battles come down to light contact before like that, but normally it's when it's very close. So I don't know if that's going to be factored in. Because it was kind of just a boop. Like, I, like both guys yeah. still made the corner. Both guys were still well within the inner zone. So I don't know if that's just going to be a little bit of door rubbing, rubbing's racing type of deal, or if they're going to say, hey, there was light contact, and that might sway our decision one way or another. Um, normally, when these battles are coming this close, especially um, with one this significant with our regular season champion, um, I think we'll get some clarification on this one if and when the battle uh, results come through. Yeah, you see it again here, a little bit shallow from Zach on his follow. That also might make the difference. He's driven so well this season, but Martinez has just come out in this round and, and just run it. Everything tidy, big angles, right up in all the zones. Man, it's, it's tough, you know, when you win the regular season, you're doing so well and everything gets reset coming down in the championship event. And something like this could be the end of it. Yeah, this could be... Zach turning on the playoff format <laughs> or Martinez turning on the playoff format. But, um, you know, something we've had uh, carried over since our fours of seven days. Um, thankfully, in a better place now. In a set of Corsa, thank you guys for having us. Um, it's been a hell of a season so far. 
Again, we still have the rest of this round to go, but it's been so fun to watch. The battles have been so much closer, and uh, uh, I can't speak for Harold McKinney. I'm sure we'll hear from him by the end of the day, but uh, I think this will be our new home going forward. It's really cool seeing the, the Forza guys transition over and, you know, still do really well out here in, on, the, on the setup. A lot of them were competing in Forza, but then, like, once they were, once they got knocked out or, like, the tournament was over, we'd just jump on a setup with their friends. So, yeah. uh, ESDA making making the transition, making the jump was just kind of the push that a lot of drivers needed to uh, to just go, you know what? Yeah, no, I'm going to learn this. Like, even myself, I was... Uh, in the, in the Forza thing, and I was like, all right, you know what? Like, I want to learn this Assetto thing. Even ESDA is moving over. Um, what kind of commentator would I be if I didn't know how to drive at least a little bit? So um, totally moving platform job. was was very, very huge as we do have a winner here. Um, or we do have a decision, I should say. So Wes is going to call one more time. Die is going to call. Martinez Ostreka and Westies with a deciding vote. Are we going to see another split decision? No. One more time, but a two to one vote. Saying Zach had proximity, but was lower on the bank and in the lead. And Die calling Martinez Ostreka straight up. So these guys are going to go one more time. Zach has been doing so well with these OMTs. Uh, nor especially through the whole season. A lot of times when he gets himself to this position where he can go OMT is when you see the best of Zach. Yeah, it's, it's clutch time for both of these guys now. Really, really close to the first time. This is going to be fun OMT. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Martinez Ostrick in the lead. Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. Again, winner move, moves on. Loser goes home. This is your OMT battle. Your regular season champion, Martinez Ostreka, now in the lead. Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. Very good job from proximity. Very good job on angle and line for both drivers transitioning into the second half of the course. Outer zone number two. This is a ghost job from Zach O'Sullivan. One of the best chases we've seen all day, followed by one of the best leads we've seen all day from Martinez Ostreka. What is happening here at Irwindale Speedway? Martinez getting all of that lead at lead run. All zones filled. Big angle. Nice and fluid to watch, but Zach did not leave him for one second wow these guys are good wow I, everything that they left on the table in the first run they've they've brought back here that oh a great lead again for martinez he's been so good at his leads but zach just tightened everything down right on him look at that transition through that second outer zone so good such a great run from either of them but Martinez has his work cut out for him if he wants to put up a chase like that in the second run. I mean, we've seen him do it, uh, especially since he got knocked out. You know, that's, uh, the chase was super, super strong for Martinez before. So, uh, Zach, I think the weakest he's been today has been in his leads. Um, so we're going to have to see if he can clean it up a little bit in this round. But Zach is, is like a fine wine. The longer he goes, the better he gets. Martinez now in the lead position. Kind of shallow is Martinez. Zach is going to get all of that outer zone. Martinez did not want to see that. Putting some purple paint on the concrete of outer zone number one is Zach O'Sullivan. Moving into the second half of the course. Maybe a bit of a weak transition from Zach just gets to that outer zone. That's going to be talked about in the, for the judges as well. Because Martinez is all over the place in the chase right now when it comes to line. Good angle, good proximity. Zach is getting the outer zone now. But Martinez is right there not letting him go anywhere. It's going to come down to outer zone number two. This, the entry looked a little bit nervous from Zach, and I don't know if that affected Martinez. And I got he's just kind of slow rolling right now, which to me normally means he's typing or talking or some sort of discussions happening. Yeah, it's it's gonna get technical. We're gonna have to look really close at that transition right here on that run two from Zach. Oh, it's Martinez really right up on his bumper, but had to slow up, I think, and wasn't able to get as close to that second outer zone. Also was a little bit hesitant in that first turn, but tough to call. Yeah, going to be another another close one for sure. That last one, it took a while for the judges to kind of just deliberate and kind of marinate these runs. But again, the first run was about as close to a 100 from both drivers as I could see. The second run is where the difference maker is going to be. We do 
I don't know why I muted. We do have a decision. Slide him left for Martinez Ostrika. Slide him right for Zach O'Sullivan. That is one vote for Zach. Two votes for Zach. Martinez Ostrika is knocked out in a nail biter against your regular season champion, Zach O'Sullivan. And it came down, uh, Davin, to the entry from Martinez Ostrika. Yeah, a, a really close one. Having to go OMT. Martinez put it all on the table. Just a little slip up entry, but. I mean, also, Zach's follow was perfect. You know, I'm I'm sure you probably know a bit more than I do, but to, to me, that looked absolutely perfect and uh, put together a good enough lead to, to make Martinez uh, just make that little mistake. And yeah, Zach, I mean, that's kind of what OMTs are. You just kind of try to force the driver into it, another, your other your opponent into a mistake. And Martinez, again, being brought to an OMT, uh, one of the strongest drivers of the season, but unfortunately will be knocked out in the top or the round number two of losers. Uh, and that will be his ESDA bid over. But an excellent season from Ostreka and an excellent season from Urta Esports as our next battle will be Nico Stalia, the wonder kid, going up against Darren Baker. Heavy hitters. This is going to be a banger, I think. Darren's trying to climb up all the way after that first round loss. Nico made it through, but now he's dropped down the loose bracket. Only one of them could move on. Yeah, I got to imagine momentum's going to be on Darren's side here with Darren coming just coming off a win. Nico's been waiting to battle since he's lost. But, you know, coming off that loss, he's, he's young, he's hungry. Darren trying to uphold his, his reputation here in ESDA. This could go either way. Darren Baker in the lead position. The team Xenon GTR. Escuco Drift Family at 180SX in the chase for Nico Stalia, the Spanish driver. The young Spanish god trying to chase down Darren Baker right now. Kind of wavery when it comes to line and angle from Darren or from Nico, but Darren very fluid up on the lead position. If what I said about Zach O'Sullivan about a fine wine, consider Darren a good blue cheese. Because see, the longer he goes in a bracket, the better he gets. And you're seeing it from his lead position right now. Nico Stalia making the best of his run, kind of white wavery and kind of not too settled. Davin in the first outer zone, which we've seen a lot of today, but definitely finished it with an exclamation point. Yeah, great lead from Darren. Big angles all around. And Nico just a little bit hesitant into this first outer zone. Slides up a little bit, but it's the exit of it. He starts pulling down a little bit earlier than I thought he would. And just not as smooth through the transitions, I think. Not as much angle here. Not quite on Darren's door. Look at that GTR. Completely sideways. That big beast of a thing. Yeah, really good lead for Darren. Nico Stilia now going to be in the lead with Darren Baker in the chase. Will, who will be bowing out of competition here in round number two of the loser's bracket? Again, the winner will be moving on. The loser will be going home. This is our elimination brackets now. Elimination battles. Nico Stilia for Escuco Drift Family, the 180SX in the lead. Darren Baker for Team Xenon in the chase, almost getting into the door of Nico Stalia, but just pulling up a little bit. Nico going a little bit shallow, but getting up on the door. Nice and fluid, big angle in that lead position that seems to be where he's comfortable. Transitioning into outer zone number two. Darren giving a little bit of room to move it back onto the door. Says, son, if you want to take me down, we need to see your best. And this has to be it. Nico Stalia, big angle in the lead position. But Darren Baker, all the proximity and chase. Will this be Nico's last dance here in ESDA 2021? Wow, Nico did what he needed to do. That was a, a great lead, but Darren wouldn't let him get away with anything. Even through those transitions, getting that big GTR <laughs> turned around, but getting right up on the door you can see the difference in the in the gap between them with both of these screens here it's close but really good lead from both drivers darren i think just had a cleaner chase darren darren from what i can see from his driving darren when he's serious is the darren that you see make mistakes when darren's having fun he's scary and, and, and as soon as he stopped, he popped the doors open on the GTR again. Darren's having fun. So if he takes the win here, or even moves on into an OMT, I would be afraid, and I would be very afraid. But again, not to take anything away from Nico. Nico, 
Uh, I've been calling him the Wonder Kid all season, the Prodigy. He's nine. The, the He's Spanish nine. God, nine years old. It's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Someone is moving on and someone is going home. <laughs> it will be trick for one driver and treat for another. Darren Baker, slide him left. Slide him right for Nico Stalia. Wes is going to go Darren Baker. Everyone's going Darren Baker. Darren Baker taking out the nine-year-old prodigy of Nico Stalia. Dropped his candy at interclip number one. He's just a boy. Leave him alone. But in a tough, tough, tough battle with Nico Stalia. Uh, I don't think mom and mom, uh, mom and dad Stalia have nothing to be ashamed of in their son there. Excellent job all season. Nico Stalia showing he belongs here in competitive drifting on Seto Corsa. And he belongs as an ESDA pro for 2022. I can't speak bad on him. He's a kid. He's nine. That's crazy. I mean, a, a great showing this season. Incredible what that kid is capable of. Um, and yeah, just missed that inner clip on his lead. And uh, Darren is right there to pick up the pieces and continues his climb up the loser's bracket. And moving on into our final round number two, loser's bracket battle. So we have Zach O'Sullivan going up against Artem Chilkov in round number three. That is your loser's uh, quarterfinals. Nika, uh, Darren Baker is going to be going up against the winner of this battle, which is Vicaris Alucas. Again, Vicaris has not battled in a while. Dylan coming off that win against Warren Griner and a nail biter. Vicaris, somebody who, who's won events this season, who could absolutely still win this one, but not was not looking himself in the first couple of battles. So we'll be able to see if he's knocked the cobwebs off here, Davin, or will Dylan Fink uh, be able to capitalize? Yeah, this is going to be spicy. Uh, <laughs> I like that boat card type of Both these cards have all the spiky arrow. Look like time attack cards. Big wings everywhere. Let's see what they got. Vicaris Lucas and the Urta E. Ooh, big Ooh. entry for Vicaris. Dylan trying his best not to put some paint on that Urta Esports machine in the team scene on FDR7. Vicaris pulling all the angle and more right now oh. in the lead position as Dylan Fink is not letting him get away. Ooh, going a little bit shallow. He's going to have to drop back just a little bit. One tire over for Dylan Fink, but getting all the proximity as a result. Maybe contact there in the transition. Very aggressive chase run from Dylan Fink right now, but it wasn't too aggressive as Vicaris Lucas. Oh, I said he might have to knock some cobwebs off. I don't. I don't think so. Wow, that was close. I mean, it, look at the transition after the first inner clip because I'm pretty sure Dylan Fink's entire splitter went underneath Vicaris's rear bumper. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know if they touched, but if they didn't, if they did, oh, either way, that was incredible through the first turn. Look at this splitter. Oh, underneath the bumper, slides underneath it, but then just. Pulls off the wall, a little bit too shallow, but he's still on his door. Might have made contact through that second inner clip. What a run from both of these guys. Wow. Yeah, I think Dylan just sitting on a minor mistake here. It all depends on what the judges are going to call that a tire drop. If there's no tire drop, minor mistake. If there is a tire drop, major mistake. Still anyone's game here as Dylan leads. Dylan Fink in the lead position. Be careful, Luke's in the chase. Dylan kind of gapping him just a little bit going into the first corner. Vicaris kind of a little bit of wavery angle, but he's going to use that to be able to catch that lead vehicle. Big angle from Dylan right now saying, anything you could do, I could do better. Getting all of that second outer zone, really flirting with that wall. But Vicaris needs to just close in just a little bit, just a little bit more. Let's see if we can end this run with an exclamation point. Slow transition from Dylan Fink, which is going to cause the gap to open. But Vicaris able to use a good line choice and get right back to the door of Dylan. I think this might go again. That's, yeah, both these rounds have been really close. Dylan, the first half of that run in the lead was fantastic. Huge angle, but huge speed. Vicaris sort of unable to close it here through the first outer zone. You see just how big the gap is, especially when you got the two screens side by side here. Closes in through this first transition, but unable to keep up through the second outer zone. Obviously a bit of a cleaner chase, but you know nowhere near as close for Vicaris. Very ch big Chelsea Denofa vibes from uh, Dylan Fink in his lead, where he's just at the lock stops as much angle I think as that car will give an outer zone number two, and the bumper would have been uh, caving in on that concrete wall. Just all of 
the proximity on that outer zone. So fun to watch. Dylan has just been wondering how this new car was going to treat him this round, and it just seems to suit him so well. Vicaris, again, comparing leads, you know, no slouch either. Very fun to watch. It's big angle, but just never looked comfortable where it like never looked like he had the car where he wanted it in the chase. It kept looked like he kept trying to close, kept trying to close, kept trying to bite at the ankles of Dylan Fink and just never quite got there. Again, we've seen OMTs dab in today before where they've compared one big mistake with a bunch of little itty bitty mistakes and seen it go OMT. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, again, it's tough because, you know, they add up. They both had really good runs. That RX-7 looks so planted at those huge angles, though. We yeah. do have a call, and it is not unanimous. Oh. Slide him left for Dylan Fink. Slide him right for Vicarisa Lucas. Wes is going to go with OMT. Die is going to go with Vicarisa Lucas and Westies. Oh, they are going. Wow. I'm so proud that I was right, first of all. <laughs> I'm one for one today. <laughs> um, but again, reading the judging notes is Vicar Vicaris's fall was too inconsistent and dealing with that one mistake going into outer zone number two. Keeping all four tires on the courts as per the judges, but uh, the small little mistakes added up to the one or big, uh, bigger, one larger mistake. And they are going at it again. If if both those guys, if, if, if uh, sorry, if Davin, if they can close a little bit, if Vicaris can close a little bit on Chase, this is very close. Yeah, and if Fink can just keep it a little bit cleaner in his chase, uh, both drivers put up a really good lead, and it, it all came down to the chases. Once close matchups over and over and over again. This is going to be spicy. Dylan Fink, your number 14 qualifier, only just making it in. Vicarisa Lucas, your number 9 qualifier. Again, qualifying points don't really matter because, you know, the, the lowest score was an 81 or an 86. Um, so here we go. Vicaris Lucas in the lead position. Dylan Fink, again, getting very aggressive early on. He knows he has to bring it now. Your loser's bracket. There is no more room for error. Giving Vicaris just enough room to change. Can he make up for the mistake on the last one? Yes, but that is going to cause Vicaris to pull away just a little bit. But on the anchors is Vicaris Lucas almost going inside. Very good job. Not making that more of a mistake than it was. But door open for Dylan Fink to be able to put on this close chase run that we've seen him do today. These guys know how to lead. Every single time, these lead runs have been great. Uh, Dylan, really, he did what he needed to do. He cleaned up his chase a lot. He wasn't quite as aggressive as previously. Not He wasn't right on Vicaris' door, but he was close, and he was tidy. And uh, <laughs> Vicaris is going to have to uh, either match it or try and get a little bit more aggressive here when he chases. I think going for those big dives for Dylan, I think that's what ended him up in this loser's bracket scenario. I think, again, just playing it smart and going, if he pulls away, that's fine. I'll find a better way to do it instead of just these big, aggressive, flashy dives. It's cool if you pull it off, but, uh, you know, it will it knock you down in the loser's bracket if you don't. So um, this is now the loser's bracket again. You lose here, you, were, you go home. This is your OMT of Dylan Fink and Vicaris and Lucas. And Lucas now in the chase. Uh, look, uh, he's got to get a little bit closer than he did in his last one. Fink just has to do the what he did over again. All on the... Oh, a little bit of... Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, and this just got Avril Lavigne really quick. Um, <laughs> Dylan Fink went up onto the wall, and I mean, we'll have to take a look at the replay there. All the rest I of this run is not going to matter. They might have made contact before getting the wall here. They definitely did, but it looked like Dylan just came down a hair and Vicaris came up a hair. And they met in the middle. It, uh, Vicaris, it looks like he, I mean, he didn't straighten out, but he shallowed his angle a little bit. Kind of at the same time that Dylan was coming down the track. That is very tough. Oh, man. Dylan did such a good job in the first run making the changes that he needed to do, but... Oh, I do not know. For for what I saw, it looked like they were both just like they again. They just met in the middle. It looked like Dylan kind of came down like very very minimally, and, um, and then Vicaris came, came up to meet him. Yeah. But you know, Dylan was on the way down. Vicaris was on the way up. If Once either one of them would have just held their line, I think they would have been okay. Yeah. 
feel sorry for the judges <laughs> yet again here. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, this might be the toughest call of the day, in my opinion. Oh. I know I know some people might disagree with me, but uh, in the timing that I saw um, watching from Vicaris's rear bumper. Oh. Yes, yes, producer Cisco, who nobody else but me can hear. I am indeed hungry. You know what I made for dinner last night, uh, uh, Davin? You know what I mean? You know what I cooked up what? last night? I chopped up some some celery, some 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 carrots, and I made a little bit of soup. As we do have a win, we have a decision. Contact has been placed at fault. Huh? So slide him left for Vicaris, slide him right for Dylan Fink. That is all Dylan Fink getting the win and moving on into losers round number three. Vicaris a Lucas is knocked out. What I would say early for him, I really wanted to see these guys go at it really close. But again, uh, I think just the meeting of the of the two drivers there, you do have to follow that chase car or that lead car. Um, the, the movement was so marginal, uh, but judges saying that that is a uh, Vicaris contact pushing Dylan into the wall. So Dylan will be moving on to face his teammate, Darren Baker, in round number three of the loser's bracket. But to get there... Um, you know, Davin, it's just a tough way to take one. But again, Vicaris, one of the strongest. I've said it about almost everybody today, but one of the strongest runs in the full season. Um, I don't think he was quite himself today, but still has nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, another tough call. But, you know, I I see what they're seeing. You know, I'm pretty new to this, so I won't speak like an expert. But, you know, Dylan came a little bit off the wall. Vicaris, I feel like, was starting to straighten out. And, you know, even if Dylan didn't come down, I... I don't know if they would have made it through there. It's it's tough. It's tough to end a season like that, but yeah, it's going to happen when these guys are so closely matched in skill every single battle. Speaking of yeah. which... Coming up next. Up next, yeah. He's going to be Zach O'Sullivan against Artem Chilkov. Zach, again, just is clawing his way. up the bracket here and just trying to make it here in losers apparently i have to translate our chat now just because you insult people in not english does not mean i don't know what it means silly billies artem chilkov in the lead position scrackoped family representing ukraine zach o'sullivan one of the lone americans left in competition today if not the only American left in competition today. The winner will be moving on against Vadim Abramov. Artem in the lead in the RX-7. Zach in the chase. He's got to be feeling himself after that big win against Martinez Ostreka. Right under the door of Artem. Slowly pushing up into the wall. Almost making contact. A little bit of a straight, but Artem's line has kind of had a little bit. Oh, Zach almost making contact there again with Artem. Just getting that S-15 slowed down. A little bit too far inside Artem with a little bit of an over rotation, but keeping that car exactly where it needed to be. Great job from Artem. Zach right on the door of the FDRX7. Great job from both. A little bit shaky up until the first inner clip, and I think they both figured it out after that. Yeah, Artem all over the brakes, especially through that second outer zone into that second inner clip. Getting a, a little bit close there. It's slowing down and throwing the angle on. Zach. I, I would say barely scraped through the last round, but he's out here. He's feeling confident, and he is chasing right on the door of Artem. But here's where it all gets a little bit interesting. Almost making contact through that transition. Zach stays on his door, and then there, Artem really slows down to try and get to that inner clip. You can see the car rotate a whole bunch more, and Zach does a great job of matching. All right, switching positions now. is these two room. drivers. Zach in the lead. In the chase is Artem Shulkov. Zach right on the door. Ooh. Artem trying to get aggressive. 
He's going to have to back off just a little bit using that left foot break and keep that car sideways. Artem's line. Good oh. job not dropping a tire there. Artem choked off. Is a mistake, but keeping all four on the course. Zach O'Sullivan putting down a solid lead run right now. Just needed a little bit more time, I think, in the oven Was that with that S15 to get comfortable in those leads. But Artem, I have no idea how he did not drop a tire on in interclub number one. That's the second time we've seen a massive flick out of Artem tonight. That was... <laughs> That, that was, was an oopsie wild. flick. I don't think that was an on-purpose flick. Yeah, no, that was to get out of a mistake, but he managed to do it and got really close to that first outer zone as we see these two runs side by side. Another tough one to call, but look at our tab. Oh, how does he do oh. that, man? Oh, he turns in so early. and still That car was going off. Wow, and a, a pretty good lead from Zach. He didn't have that whole... You know, slow down issue that we saw with Artem as they got up to that second inner clip. I don't know. We've what? got a winner, ladies and gentlemen, and it is unanimous. Slide him left for Artem Cholokov, slide him right for Zach O'Sullivan. Scrackle Pad family just slide at vehicles. Someone's going home, and it is going to be Artem Chilkov. Zach O'Sullivan is going to be getting the win. Again, I have to imagine it was that wavery part of the first half of yeah. Artem's chase. But again, I like everybody we've said today, David, I don't think he's got anything to be embarrassed about. That was one of the best corrections to a mistake I've ever seen, period. Yeah, he's come out here, and he's put on a show. done a great job at the earlier rounds. Uh, unfortunate to go out like that. I think it was probably a bit of, of that little mistake in the second run, and Maybe the, the tightening after the second outer zone in the first run. Zach just running a little bit cleaner, doing what he needs to do to get through this loser's bracket. Once again, uh, apparently uh, those those not knowing uh, uh, that I can see when your accounts are made and I have a thing called Google Translate. So super cool. So now your main account's gonna get banned. Good job. Well done. Um, all teammate battle here coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Darren Baker going up against Dylan Fink. These are two different liveried vehicles, but both representing Team Xenon. Darren Baker trying to make a bit. Both these guys may trying to make a bit at the championship, but I think, Davin, that Dylan Fink wants to make more of a bid to take down Alexander Element, and if he wins this battle, he's able to have a shot at it. This is going to be a really cool battle. We've seen both of these cars throwing huge angles, especially in the second half of the run. Also, two of the coolest looking cars, I think, arrow wise as as teammates going to be throwing it in crazy sideways. I expect them to get right up next to each other. This is going to be a really tasty battle. And you said the winner gets to go up against Alexander Hellman. Yeah, moving up on moving up onto the line here. Is Alexander or not Alexander <laughs> to Darren Baker, Dylan Fink? Again, both these guys are teammates. They practice together. This is not their first time driving with each other. Darren in the lead. Dylan in the chase. I think their styles are gonna mesh very well as well. As Darren is waiting to get the go ahead right now. And we've seen it today, both just fluid, very, very stylish lead runs. Um, both know how to get aggressive on the chase. I would say Darren may have a little bit of advantage when it comes to chase runs, but uh, we'll see what that happens here. As engines are revving, just for fun, apparently, just to tease me. <laughs> very cool. Um, I'm three, oh, no, we're good. Uh, our, our little tree's moving. Three, two, one. Nope, I got tricked again. There we go. Darren right. Baker in the lead. Dylan Fink in the chase. Winner is going to go against Alexander Element. Ooh, almost making contact with Dylan Fink. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of his teammate. Darren Baker right up on the wall this time. One of the best runs we've seen on the wall all day. Dylan Fink going a little bit uh, shallow to be able to keep, uh, keep the proximity of that lead vehicle. But Dylan or Darren Baker, all of that second Ooh. outer zone. Dylan Fink is about a shallow as a low tide right now in the second zone, but gonna use that to his advantage and getting as close as he can to the lead vehicle of Darren Baker. Dylan Fink sitting on a minor disadvantage and we know Darren can bring it in the chases. That was a fantastic lead once again from Darren. 
That car just it it settles so well. It looks so good going sideways, and Dylan just a little bit less aggressive than I thought he would be, or maybe aggressive in the wrong place. Is not really able to close the gap in those big outer zones, and you see here running a little bit shallow. Darren right up on the wall in outer zone one, right up on the wall in outer zone two, hitting all his marks, and look at this thing go. Switching Dylan. positions now, Dylan Fink in the lead position. He's put on some strong leads today. So you have to, he has to know he's sitting on a minor mistake. We'll see if that plays a factor into his lead run. Darren chasing again, one of his teammates. Gonna see what he can do in the chase position. Dylan Fink in the lead. Darren Baker in the chase. All Team Xenon battle. Dylan Fink pulling away just a little bit. Darren Baker actually more on the wall, but less angle. So kind of evening out there. Way closer in the first half, but Dylan kind of trying to run away a little bit right now. Darren on the wall following Fink through. Dylan nice and smooth up in the lead position. Not really making any mistakes, but Darren Baker. Oh, as I say that, one tire over for that lead vehicle of Dylan Fink. Is that one tire over going to be the end to Dylan Fink's season? I think I would, you know, I can't really speak, but if I have to lose, I'd rather lose to my teammate. Yeah, that might be the end of it. They're both a little bit shallow in this first outer zone here. I feel like Dylan, especially as the leader, needs a little bit more angle. And, you know, it's still close to the rest of the run, but that tire drop would be the end of it. We do have a call here, and it is going to be unanimous. One teammate will move, and one will not. Will it be Darren Baker or Dylan Fink? Slot him left for Darren, slot him right for Dylan. Will it be Ireland or England? That will be one for Darren Baker, two for Darren Baker, three for Darren Baker. Dylan Fink is knocked out by his teammate, Darren Baker, and Darren from round number one in the loser's bracket is going up against Alexander Element in in the loser's semifinals. Dylan got to be saying, hey man, I can't get the job, but you got to get this done. Take that guy down. Yeah, you called it. As soon as we saw Darren Baker take that round one exit, we knew that he was going to be one of these gladiators climbing his way up the pile that is the loser's bracket. Unfortunately for Dylan, I mean, he put on a great show today. He's put on a great show all season. But a couple little mistakes where Darren has just been perfect. There is now a world, Davin, where we see Zach O'Sullivan against Darren Baker, probably two of the most evenly matched and exciting drivers to watch go up against each other in the loser's finals. But both have to win the loser's semis here. So Zach is going up against Vadim Abramov. And again, we talk about momentum. We talk about uh, uh, rust. We talk about cobwebs. Vadim hasn't battled. He's he 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 made a strong run through the bracket, but he hasn't battled since uh, since round three of the winners. So he's been sitting for a while. Zach's only been getting better, so that might play into the factor here. But we'll have to see. As Vadim Abramov in the lead position, this Luke Oil Esports machine, Luke Oil Racing Esports machine, Zach O'Sullivan in the JSI just slide at S15. This is the last hurrah for this vehicle. Can he send it out on a high note? Vadim going a little bit low on the bank, but Zach reading him like a book. Going into this inner clip here. Good transition from both going into the second outer zone. Vadim nice and up on that wall, but Zach is not afraid of getting a little bit of purple paint on that red Luke Oil machine. Oh, maybe a little bit of contact there in transition, but it's not going to affect either uh -huh. driver too much. But maybe, actually, as Vadim one tire over, I'm not sure if that was a little bit of, of, of net code because, again, Zach is our lone American in competition going up against Vadim, the Russian dream, Abramov. Zach did such a good job of matching Vadim's line here through the first turn because Vadim wasn't really up on that wall but Zach was able to stay there and, and not hit him and still stay close and through the transitions gets right up on him but I think he just stuck his nose in a little bit right past this inside clip and Vadim wasn't able to get that thing turned back around you see Zach is still on the inside slight contact and that's what pushes Vadim to drop that wheel oh it's gonna be tough 
Yeah, again, that little, little, little bit of a late transition did bring out that tire drop. So, I mean, the only thing that we've been talking about there is who's at fault for contact. Yeah. So both these guys are going to have to come out and be really aggressive here in the second run. Yeah, that's not if I'm if I'm the Deem, that's not clear cut for me. And that's not a uh, that's not a I can chill against Zach advantage. Um, so, I mean, we're going to have to see the Deem at 100 percent here. But Zach, again, same thing. I'm not sure if that's me. I'm not sure if that's him. So I got to bring everything I've got to make it this far through losers and get knocked out would be a heartbreaker for O'Sullivan, your regular season champion. As we 3 2 1 go here at Irwindale Speedway, Zach O'Sullivan in the lead, Vadim Abramov in the chase. Vadim trying to drag race him into turn one, but he's going to use that to his advantage to go for proximity, but immediately get gapped by a car length by Zach O'Sullivan. Going into inner clip number one here, maybe a little bit of a soft transition from Zach, but right back onto the door is Vadim, but he's having to sacrifice a ton of angle to do it. Zach, nice and smooth up in the lead position, staying to the left there, nice and fluid. Vadim again, just sacrificing a look like up and right to the end of the run there, Devin. Not set in angle until the last corner, and that, that might be the small opening that Zach needed to continue here. Yeah, great lead from Zach. Big angles, and he is right up on all of the walls, especially, you know, turn one here where Vadim really wasn't. I think Zach put on a much better lead run but it's probably all going to come down to that contact near the end of the first run. There may even be a tire off for Vadim in the... <clears throat> wow, cool, thank you. Uh, there may even be a tire off for Vadim in the first inner zone. Oh, yeah, just the angle going into the last outer zone was yeah. non-existent, but, I mean, he's fighting for... They're, both these guys are fighting for their life right now. I believe this is an in-the-money battle, if I am not mistaken. Losers round number four. Yeah, who the win whoever loses this is still gonna get fifty bucks, but I mean the winner of the whole thing gets six hundred. So I mean the difference between getting your dinner paid for and I mean getting your rent paid for. Maybe even more depending on the exchange rate. I gotta imagine that's a lot of rubles. The D might have made contact going into that last outer zone of the last round there. Just uh, you know, way too shallow. I was just sacrificing angle i feel like the entire run and uh, especially through that second inner clip not quite matching zach be able to take a look at it again here on this run two i mean the only mistake i saw zach make was the light contact in chase in his run one but the deem just was allergic to angle there in run number two and i don't really blame him. You know, you let Zach get away from you. It's game over. So, um, tough call. And the lack of angle or not the lack of uh, proximity to the wall and OZ1 on the Deems run number one may play a factor here as we do have a decision. And Wes says. Vadim Abramov, Die says OMT and Westy is the deciding vote is going oh. <laughs> the fake out oh. is going one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going at it again and again. The reason I pointed out that uh, that the mistake on outer zone number one for Vadim is I think that was the only thing that was pushing this OMT. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess they're going to call Zach at fault for that contact in the first one, which makes sense because his nose was really in there and, and a late transition ended up uh, making contact with Vadim game wide. This is going to be good. I think Vadim's only going to get better the more he drives. He's got the cobwebs locked off now. He's got two battle runs under his belt after that long wait. Zach O'Sullivan, again, has had... He must, must be getting fatigued at this point. He's got so many OMTs and has to go have, have to went through the loser's bracket. Vadim Abramov, the Luke Oil Esports machine in the lead position. Zach O'Sullivan in the just slide-up machine in the chase position. Vadim, again, going a little bit shallow and coming up the wall. Zach not getting any angle right now in the chase position. A little bit of a gap for him, but we've seen him close here before, and he does it again. Vadim all of the outer zone now, but Zach right on the low, and there's contact. I think Vadim went for angle there, and Zach just saw blood in the water, and one tire off for the deem there in the last outer zone but it's not going to matter because there was a full straighten by the lead car i have no idea what happened there 
Wow. Uh, Scared. Spooky. Big speed through the first half of this run. Zach really unable to keep up at any sort of angle here. Starts to catch and then, you know, almost straightens out most of the way through that corner. But here's where it gets good. Zach gets a great entry right up on Vadim's door. And he wants to slow down to get to that inner clip. But... Ooh, I don't know if that's a slowdown zone. Uh... I don't know. I, I think they're most, more so looking for you to just go into the corner there. I don't think that... I saw the brake lights come on for Abramov. I'm sure we're going to have to look at that big screen when it gets to it, but um, yeah. still a second run here. I'm not sure. It, we're going to be able to see who's feeling like they're sitting on an advantage. Zach O'Sullivan in the lead. In that Just Slide of Energy Innovations machine, the Deem Abramov and the Luke Oil Esports machine right there. All the proximity again, just trying to look for a little bit more fluid angle. Very wavery in the chase, but oh, one tire off. Big mistake for Vadim. Big mistake for Vadim as he's still not sitting on a zero. So it depends on who formed contact there. This is still anyone's game. Going to try to push in here right now on Zach O'Sullivan. And across the line is both drivers. That is probably the worst we've seen, or the biggest mistake we've seen on inner clip number one today, other than Martinez Ostreka making contact in chase. I think Vadim might have made contact really early here in the first outer zone. See him running a little bit shallow and might have tapped Zach right there, but just does not have the transition right for that first inner clip. I think and that's probably two tires. Oh, that might be a zero, Davin. That's two tires. Wow. So. And listen, I <laughs> it's really looking like he's still on the first run, so this could be that might be two tires. You definitely saw the the right front, but if the left or the or the right rear was followed it through, that is two tires off. And that in the East A rules is a zero. So so this is a lead. Would, would that negate what happens here in the first run if they depends on who's at fault. Oh, he really slows down. I yeah, don't know. He, he checked up pretty hard, but I mean, could just be left foot braking to get some angle, but he was on the brake pretty long. It wasn't like a tap of the brakes. Well, it's tough because Zach is right on his door. I mean, even if Zach's at fault for this, there's still a conversation to be had in run number two. I think judging just trying to walk before they can run. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if that was, you know, deemed Zach's fault and then... Vadim goes two wheels off in the second run. Where do we go from there? If it's a double zero, yeah, it might be lead for lead for chase for chase. I'm sure the judges will explain it to us, but um, we do have a call. We have a decision. I don't All think right. it's going to matter. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, slide him left for Zach O'Sullivan. Slide him right for Vadim Abramov. Winner is going to be going to face. Uh, they're going to the losers' finals. That is one vote for Zach O'Sullivan. Second vote die going for Zach O'Sullivan is going to be moving on into the losers' finals, ladies and gentlemen, to face the winner of the next battle on deck. And I th we have a clarification coming in. Contact and run was deemed on Vadim. <laughs> that rhymes, LOL. <laughs> it's what I got from that. But again, I think uh, even if that contact was deemed on Zach, uh, there was still a big conversation for whether the Dean dropped two tires in chase position uh, in that second run, Davin. Yeah, but I think looking at Vadim slowing down there, it, it, uh, it was pretty much set in stone. Second run only, <laughs> only made it a little bit easier for that decision. All right, uh, here we go. Yeah, big, big implications coming out here now. The winner of this battle will go into the losers' finals against Zach O'Sullivan. Will it be his old his old nemesis, Darren Baker, or will it be Alexander Element? I think Zach has battled Element before, has lost to Element before this season. But he has to get through Darren Baker first. Element will be chasing with Darren, your number two qualifier in the lead. And like with Vadim, Alexander hasn't really driven in a while here. Darren's been slowly but surely climbing his way up this loser's bracket. He's all warmed up and ready to go. Let's see what Alexander's got for him. It's going to be a good one. And once again, sort of clashing styles. We know Alexander likes that big grip. 
We know Darren likes those big angles. Should be a fun one. Yeah, it should be interesting to watch. Darren Baker in the lead and the Team Xenon GTR. Alexander Element in the blue S14 in the chase. Darren, again, the most comfortable person we've seen up on the wall all day. Maybe a little bit shallower, but using a little bit of left foot break to get it back up there. But Alexander Element pouring on the pressure in the chase. Just needs to match that angle of Darren Baker, but that might be tricky. A little bit of a hiccup there again from Darren, but big angle coming into the inner zone. Alex just able to get that proximity, but not quite able to match the angle. But he's, again, ma making a choice here, as I say that, right to the door of Darren Baker going over the line. I wasn't sure if Alex was going to be able to match that angle, but I I think he just about did it through every single one of those outer zones. A good chase from him, but, you know, once again, just clean, clean leads from Darren. Not quite getting as close to that wall as we've seen him do previously, but still a really good run from both guys, really. It's going to come down to the second one here. Again, winner going to be moving on into your loser's final. Darren Baker on the line. And just nice and smooth over the line there, going over that third outer zone as Alexander Element pulls up to the line. Excellent job from both those guys. Again, just Element looking like he's struggling in the first half of the run until you get off the bank. Just looking like he was not comfortable in angle. As Element now leading in the chase is Darren Baker. Winner's going to be going to the Losers Finals. Alexander Element, good job on the first outer zone. Darren actually having to woe up really big there, but able to put the pressure on. Big over rotation from Alex. Able to gather it back up, but it does throw Darren off in the chase. Will that be enough? Oh, and then another big slowdown. Alex is not moving right now. And another big mistake oh. from Alexander Element. He's falling apart in the lead position right now. Darren Baker trying to put as much pressure on, finishing the run over. But an uncharacteristic set of mistakes, especially in the lead position for Alexander Element. Doors are open. It has been so hard to follow Alexander Element. Darren did a great job through the first half of the lap. And then Alex just, you know it's been tough for him to pull those big angles. And he's... Wow, Darren got really close there. I had to really back out of it to the first outer zone. But yeah, just, I don't know if he hit the wall in the second outer zone here. We'll take a look at Alex. Oh, maybe, or he had to straighten out, but either way, and a really bad entry there into the second inner clip. It looks like his bumper, like, hooked on the wall or something. Yeah, it, it seemed to have, like, maybe tapped it and sort of started to straighten him out. Uh, but either way... Big, scruffy lead. Call coming in, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a winner. Slide him left for Darren Baker. Slide him right for Alexander Element. Winner going against Zach in the Losers Finals. Wes is going to say Darren Baker. Die is going to go with Darren Baker is going against Zach O'Sullivan. Wow. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> Darren and Zach, I, no matter how many tournaments these guys go into, no matter how many rounds they go at, they find each other somehow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a loser's final. We have a winner's final. We may have a final lobby here ready to go. As Darren Baker, the first, you know what? As much as you want to uh, talk about Element being hard to chase, I think that was the first time we've seen him make a mistake in his lead position all day, and it cost him. Keenan, this has been an incredible double elimination format. You picked a good day to show up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and Darren and Zach, after their incredible battle in the first round, have managed to find each other after they've both fallen down and each climbed up their own set of drivers to, to get up to the loser's bracket round five. This is going to be a really good one. And, you know, we're down to just four drivers. Matt, we have four drivers left, ladies and gentlemen. You're on the winner's side of the bracket in your winner's finals. Darius Ostreka and Brandon Patrick. On your loser's finals, on the loser's side of the bracket, of Darren Baker and Zach O'Sullivan. We will be able to find out who are these four drivers. Will be your ESDA champion for 2021 be going
going into this final set of battles. But ladies and gentlemen, to get there, we have to step away one more time before we figure out who will be your ESDA champion here in 2021. I wanted to say something else and then it completely blanked. <laughs> Super cool. Great. But ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with our final set of battles here from Irwindale Speedway World Finals ESDA 2021. Do not go anywhere. Coverage of the 2021 Esports Drift Association is brought to you by Big Duck Club. Whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsport requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire Motorsports, one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. By Next Level Racing. Build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. Esports tested and award-winning, Next Level Racing, be first. By VDC, the Virtual Drift Championship is the official physics and tire model supplier of ESDA. Learn more about their upcoming season at facebook.com slash virtual drift champs. And by Vosen, your home for Assetto Drifting content. Want the track from today's competition and more? Visit vosen.co. Got you. Next entire. Porsche Panamera. We got you. Next entire.
This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels change in life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful, from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire. Ladies and gentlemen, our final battles are set on the loser's bracket. Zach O'Sullivan, Darren Baker. The winner's bracket, Brandon Patrick, Darius Ostraka, all here at the House of Drift, Irwindale Speedway. Welcome back to the finals of ESDA, Esports Drift Association here at Irwindale. My name is Keenan Cousin, joined in the booth as well by Davin Cornelius of Drive Through and Cisco Scarmazza. Again, get a big shout out for Cisco for working so hard and improving all of our graphics and all of our uh, production throughout the course of the season. Davin, we have potentially three, maybe four battles left, four drivers left, all of them in the money, but there's a huge difference between the, the payout between first and third place. Our first yeah. place. 16 drivers coming into this final double elimination so these guys have had to lose twice we've gone through a lot of battles and we've gone through a lot of close battles tough calls for the judges we've got some some good stuff coming up because darius and brandon undefeated so far today and then zach and darren who faced each other in the first round you know each fell their way down to the, the loser's bracket and then each climbed their way up they have their own stories so far today and they're coming up back against each other i mean it's a it's a full-on rematch except they both have a whole lot more experience with the other drivers at this track today and both uh, of them are driving completely different now i mean yeah like i said that they're kind of like evergreen like the longer they the longer they battle the better they get again here is the difference if you lose in the losers bracket uh you are not getting an nrg wheel rim you're not getting paid in the hundreds i believe if you lose in the losers bracket that is a hundred dollars so you're not going away with nothing but a huge difference in prizes and payouts in comparison if you win so if you if for the for the one who wins the losers bracket if you lose on the losers or the if you lose in the grand finals if you get third place it's 200 dollars in an energy wheel rim second place so if you make grand finals that's four guaranteed 400 dollars in that other energy wheel rim the winner six hundred dollars in nrg racing seat provided by Energy Innovations, a NLR wheel stand provided by Next Level Racing, and the first inaugural inaugural Esports Drift Association Assetto Corsa trophy as the ESDA champion. So there is a lot to play for here in this loser's battle against Zach O'Sullivan and Darren Baker. I know Zach um, is trying to upgrade his 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 setup, his system uh, to be get to, to get better and film more stuff and become better uh, as a driver as a content creator um so this is huge for him darren baker i'm assuming just wants to dunk on him like like michael jordan because it'd be funny um but like i said <laughs> like i said darren's having fun right now and the more fun darren's having the scarier he gets uh zach has been scratching and clawing and one more timing and one more timing and one more timing all the way into these final battles but on the other side of the bracket, Darius Ostreka, who has not battled. Both these guys have not battled in what feels like at least over an hour. And Brandon Patrick talking about guys who are driving out of their absolute minds today. Brandon Patrick 
has always needed that little bit of extra sauce, no pun intended, to be able to get just get himself into these final situations. And whatever he's doing today is working, but he has to take down your number one qualifier, Erda Esports driver, Darius Ostrika. So with this double elimination format, it basically means that between Zach and Darren, whoever loses is out. Darius and Brandon can each take one loss before they're really eliminated, but this is it for one of these two drivers. Everything I've been seeing up to here has been incorrect. The loser of this battle will be going into... The loser of the of the winner's finals will go to the loser's finals. So this is loser semifinals, I believe, on deck right now. I don't know why Darius and Brandon thought they were going first. But Darren and Zach, again, they met earlier in bracket today with Zach getting the win barely over Darren. But Darren has completely leveled up his driving from the beginning of today's competition, Dav, until now. Yeah, and that was our, our triple split decision, was that round one battle between these two guys, and definitely one of the hardest calls to make. So it's going to be really, really, really close. But we're going to have to pick a winner between these two drivers some way or another. Here we go. Again, winner moves on to the loser's finals. Loser, you're going home with nothing. Well, $100, but nothing in comparison. <laughs> Darren Baker in the lead. Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. A lot to play for here, ladies and gentlemen. As big entry from Darren, but Zach right there. A little bit shallow on the bank. They're going to slowly work it up and get onto the door, almost pushing him through outer zone number one, transitioning right across to the bumper of that big GTR. Darren looking so strong as he has all day in the lead position, but a strong lead breeds a strong chase, and Zach O'Sullivan right there with him. Transitioning into outer zone number three, gapping him just a little bit. Zach actually going a little bit shallow on that last outer zone to make sure he ends with the proximity he was looking for. Big lead from Darren. Big chase from Zach. Darren was fast. I mean, he was throwing huge angles on there, but especially in the first half of this run, he was quick. Zach, a little bit shallow on this first entry, but he gets right up on the door of that big GTR. This is a great run from both of these guys. And... Wow, <laughs> I don't know how to swing it either way. We're going to have to wait for the second run, but this is a great showing for both of these drivers. I think if if any of these two guys, Devin, have had a slight disadvantage today, it's been in these positions. Zach's leads have not been as strong as I think he was looking for, and Darren's chases have been inconsistent is the word I think I'm going to go with. Not necessarily bad, just some are definitely stronger than others. So we'll see what happens here as Darren will be now chasing in the GTR. Zach O'Sullivan in the S15. Team Xenon versus Team Just Slide It. Who is moving on? Good job on the lead, on the... Oh, Zach with a bit of a straighten. Just keeping the car off the wall. Darren giving him some room to move here. Some room to breathe. Bit of a straighten over that first, or first inner clip. But Darren pushing Zach in the lead position right now. Zach doing a great lead. Making me look stupid. And Zarin... Just not quite getting the proximity on that S15 that Zach was able to do in his chase. That was, a, once again, a great showing from both these guys. I We got to look at these side by side because it is hard to pick one over the other. Darren, maybe not as close as Zach through this first outer zone, but Zach, as you said, almost getting a little bit straighter as, as they got to the, uh, the exit of that first outer zone. Got it sorted for the rest of the run here, and, and Darren getting close, not as close as Zach, but I feel like Darren maybe with a bit of a cleaner lead than Zach, it's gonna be close. Like you said, the second run sort of playing to each of the driver's disadvantages. Oh, I'm glad I don't have to make these calls. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be another nail biter here again. Zach O'Sullivan against Darren Baker. Again, winner gonna be moving on into the losers finals so guaranteed a third place the loser here will finish fourth overall take home a cool hundred dollars but will not be taking home that wheel rim and not have a chance to battle for the overall win of the championship fourth place overall the year still nothing to swing at we have a decision slide him left for darren slide him right for zach 
Wes says, OMT die is going to say, OMT, the story of Zach's goddamn life. They are going at it again. Darren Baker, Zach O'Sullivan, it is not over. The battle in losers semifinals is not incomplete. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to make that decision either. Uh, yeah, just, I think they just said screw it. <laughs> I mean, it was a great first run for both guys. It was a pretty good second run from both guys. You, you can't. I, you can't send anyone home on that run, on either of those runs. So we got to do it all over again. Again, I do think both these guys have, have some little bit more left in the tank than what they're showing us. We've seen Zach get a lot more aggressive in his chase. We've seen Darren get a lot more aggressive in his chase. We've seen both these guys have put down better leads today. Will this kind of brush off the cobwebs of both get a little bit more comfortable as we go into the first OMT here of your loser semifinal? Darren Baker in the lead, Zach O'Sullivan in the chase. Way better job on that outer zone this time from Darren, but again, good leads breed good chases. Zach is trying to bump Darren Baker right now. They are trying to throw hands here at Irwindale Speedway. Right into the sunrise or the sunset is Darren. Zach a little bit wavery in terms of angle. Darren is very much cleaning up his lead. Big oh. flick from Darren. Is he able to keep it wide? Barely. That might not be if this is a positive at all. How he kept that car in the outer zone, I will never know, but he had to stand on the foot brake to do it. That opened the door for Zach to be able to close in in his chase. They might have made contact at the end of the first outer zone here. Uh, once again, it's similar to the first time they did it, but just both of the drivers pushing a little bit more, being a little bit more aggressive. I might have been contact right there with Zach. Darren trying to get those big angles, and you'll see it again as they come through this second outer zone and that second inner clip. Zach right up in Darren's business. And yeah, a lot of brake. Really slowed down getting that car turned over. Maybe a late transition from Darren. That is a D cell, but it just looked like he over angled. Like he whipped the car just a little bit too hard because he wasn't able to keep that angle throughout the whole duration of outer zone number three as we move into round number two here. Again, all four different nations being represented here in the finals. You are seeing USA against Ireland right now. Zach O'Sullivan is the American. Ironically, Darren Baker in the chase. A little bit of a wavery start to the chase, but right Whoa. up on the wall from both. Very smooth right now is Darren Baker in the chase. Is he? Oh, Zach not really getting the angle, but Darren's going to go in for the kill. A little bounce off the wall from Darren Baker. This is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. Moving back into the last outer zone now. Zach O'Sullivan nice and smooth, but Darren Baker is not leaving anything to chance. Right on the door of Zach O'Sullivan across the line. Wow, yeah, you said Darren had something left in the tank for some aggressive chases, and that was an aggressive chase. What a run by both of these guys. I'm going to have to look a little bit closer to see if there was contact with the wall there. But, wow, just wow. Darren getting right up under Zach in all of these turns. Zach up against the wall closer than I think we've seen him so far today. And we get through the second outer zone. Big angle from Darren on the way in. I still not sure if he clipped the wall but either way he kept that thing sliding and he stayed right up against Zach's door we do have a decision and it came down to one mistake slide him left for Darren Baker slide him right for Zach O'Sullivan I think these that's the only really big mistake we've seen from either of these drivers in both these battles Wes is going to go with Zach O'Sullivan and Dai is going to go with Zach O'Sullivan. It came down to that over rotation in Darren's lead in outer zone number three. Darren has basically made one major mistake since he went on his loser's run tear. And it was right there. Coming from loser's round one, making it all the way to fourth place overall. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for fourth place here at ESDA World Finals, Darren Baker. What an incredible set of battles between these two guys. Both of them going OMT. You know it was going to be something small like that. It, uh, it had to be something small like that to send one of these guys home. Uh, almost perfect for both of them. Darren's had an incredible night going, you know, first round exit, climbing up that loser's bracket. But Zach is going to take him out. Darren's only lost to Zach today, but it's been twice. And uh, he's coming home in fourth place. 
now, <laughs> now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, this is now your winner's final. Brandon Patrick, Stream Triple F Esports, going up against Darius Ostreka and the Urta Esports S15 machine. Both these guys are representing real life redrift teams, with Darius representing Urta, obviously, and Brandon Patrick representing Federico Scarifo's Triple F in the Viarella de Virtuale. Brandon not getting the season he was looking for at all. Some decent showings, but definitely none that were up to his caliber. That changes today. Can he turn that into a finals appearance? The loser of this match will go up against Zach in the, uh, the loser's finals. Oh, here we go. No time to breathe here as we go right into the winner's finals. Darius Ostraka in the lead. Your number one qualifier, Zach. Brandon in the chase. So you're seeing Zach O'Sullivan today. Darius a little bit shallow. Actually, Brandon throwing a little bit too much angle in the first out of zone. They meet in the middle when it comes to the exit. Good transitions for both these yellow vehicles. Brandon getting so close, making a little bit of contact there, but both guys staying in it, keeping the throttle in. Just a little bit of elbow rubbing. No harm, no foul there. Moving into this third outer zone. Darius nice and smooth, but Brandon has, what has gotten into Brandon today? He, he had a little bit too much distance between them in the first outer zone, and he knew he had to push it hard, and push it hard he did in that second outer zone, the whole second half of the run, right up on Darius' door. I don't know if they made contact with that second outer zone or if Brandon maybe tapped the wall, but you see just a little bit lackluster through this first turn. Neither of them really getting right up on the wall, but Brandon closes the gap, and he closes it quick. Big angle. Oh, I, I can't tell if he hit the brake or if he tapped the wall, but either way, he got that right up inside that Urda Esports S15 and stayed there to the last two corners. Second run. I think the strongest we've seen both these guys today is in their leads. Brandon putting down a strong chase. But again, as you pointed out, Davin, just the first outer zone is an issue for both those guys. And even though there wasn't an issue, there was that little bit of contact from Brandon. Let's see what Darius can do in his chase. See what Brandon can do in the lead. Big angle again. We've seen it all day from Fiorella up in the lead position. Darius going a little bit shallow, but he's going to start pouring on the angle at the end of the corner. Brandon is just using that wheelbase to his advantage right now. Nice, big, and fluid flicks, but Darius Ostreka is sitting in his shadow right now. Nice and smooth in the chase position. Going off the crippling early, hitting the bow. My goodness. Dropping down off the banking, the car just bottomed out and he transitioned so early. Is that enough? I was going to say that is done and dusted for Ostreka, but that has blown this battle wide open. I, I'm i amazed they got through that without making contact, but that could be the decider in this battle because it was really, really close through the rest of the run. See, Darius did a much better job of staying right on Brandon Patrick to that first turn, but Brandon was right up on the wall, his wing almost touching it. And once again... The second outer zone into this inner clip is where things get spicy every single time. And oh, it was a late transition from Brandon. It was an early transition from from Darius. I oh, I don't know. You've got more experience than me in, in looking at that kind of stuff. What do you think? Where's this going? So what I saw in the sim, so I'm watching for, for reference, Davin's watching what you guys are watching. I'm in the chase cams in the sim. So what I saw from Darius in his chase, as we take another look at it here, is it looks like he just, like, the car just slammed off of this slight little inner banking when they got onto the infield and just took off on him. Like, it wasn't anything he did on purpose. It wasn't an intentional thing. It just looked like he was in the middle of the weight transfer in the in the transition, and it just, the, the way that the car slammed down from the very, very, like, probably, like, what, five degrees of banking there, if that, to flat, something in the suspension did not like it and just threw the car inside that could have been so much more of a bigger issue for Ostreka, but we've seen so many guys dylan fink is a great example of getting very very penalized today by going shallow especially significantly shallow again he made the outer zone but he really had to sacrifice that line to get there it's all going to depend for me davin on how the judges view that, that light contact and run one because yeah. it seems like they both made similar mistakes. Run one, OZ one. But uh, Darius going a little bit shallow and, and Brandon over-rotating a little bit. But there's just a minor hip check right there. You see it. But other than that, unless there's a tire drop or something, keep an eye on these right rear or these left rear tires. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks clean. It is... I'm out of breath. We're not even at the finals yet. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we have a winner, and it is not unanimous. Oh. Wes is going to go again. Slide on left for Darius to strike center, right for Brandon Patrick. Wes is voting for Brandon Patrick. And Die is going to go for one more time. And Westies. Somewhere, some way, Federico Scarifo is smiling for his driver right now. Brandon Patrick took him all season to get comfortable in that car, but he's guaranteed second place as he takes the winner's finals and moves on into your ESTA Irwindale Grand Finals. What a battle, and I think you were right. It came down to that little mistake by Darius at the very end, whether it was you know, the, the banking or uh, his setup, I, I don't know, but just shallow into that last outer zone out of that second inner clip. But he's not done yet. Darius is going to get a chance to go up against Zach here to win the loser's final. And the winner of that will go up against Brandon Patrick in the grand final. Will we see these two teammates in the finals once again? Again, I believe Brandon was the one that sent... Brandon was the one that sent Zach down here. Will Zach get a chance at redemption on his teammate? Will anyone be able to stop Brandon Patrick's today? It has to be Darius Ostraco with a shot at redemption. Or will Zach O'Sullivan get his chance? This is your loser's final. Winner moving on to your grand finals. Ladies and gentlemen, what a day of drifting here today. Here at your final, your finale here for the Esports Drift Association presented by Big Duck Club. And shout out to Big Duck Club for being our title sponsor for the season. Darius Ostreka in the lead position. Zach O'Sullivan saying, I want to battle my teammate, brother. Right onto the door of Darius Ostreka, the most aggressive we've seen anybody in proximity in outer zone number one today, but it's going to cost him. He's going to get gapped just a little bit by Darius Ostreka, able to close it, but not able to keep fluid angle while he does. Darius Ostreka, again, your number one qualifier and showing us why he is your number one qualifier. Zach going a little bit shallow on that last outer zone. Minimal mistakes from your chase driver, Zach O'Sullivan, and robotic is the lead position of Darius Ostraka. That's some Zach aggressiveness all over the brake pedal in that last outer zone to try and keep it off of Darius. A good lead run, it must be mentioned from that Urta car, but wow. I mean, right up on him. Like you said, the closest anyone's gotten in that first turn, Darius right up on the wall and just gets really close to making contact and has to back out through that first inner clip and then play catch up here through that second outer zone. And I don't know if they might have made contact here with Zach sending it a little bit shallow. No, I think that's just the brakes, but does a good job of, you know, staying sliding and staying close. Unbelievable job from both guys. Who's going to represent Nissan in the battle against Ferrari? Zach O'Sullivan in the lead position. Darius Ostraka in the chase. A little bit of, oh, big lag uh -oh. from both. Yeah, we are going to get a reset on that one for sure because Zach is sent into the moon. The window net is not down. <laughs> he flipped that thing. That yeah, he, he double heel flipped it. All right, well, Did, these things happen. We'll get I didn't know we switched over to Tony Hawk. <laughs> but, uh, we. We are going to see. I'm, normally, when we see issues like this, it is down to a reset. And that's not really at fault for either of those two drivers. They both, I don't know if it came across on the stream, but on my screen, both had significant lag going into yeah, turn number both, one. Yeah. It wasn't like uh, Darius was the one lagging or Zach was the one lagging. I think the server just kind of pooped itself <laughs> there for a minute there. I love the wheels when you get to flip it in this game. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are going to get. A, uh, a reset for both drivers. They're going to grab some new tires just to keep it fair because Zach's car was kind of broken. Uh, I think Darius is going to opt to warm his new tires up. I think he's... I'm not sure what engine's in that car, but I think it's an SR20. So 2J SR20. It's a Calo 12. <laughs> so that last run was Moot. Zach O'Sullivan in the lead. Again, you're only American left in this European-dominated competition here today. 
North American tournament, North American driver. Darius trying to keep the hopes alive for Europe. And then you have the Englishman sitting in the final waiting to beat either one of these guys. Zach O'Sullivan leading. Darius strike it chasing. This is run number two. Darius a little bit shallow. Zach actually a little bit shallow on the line. Darius a little bit shallow on the angle. Moving into inner clip number one. We've seen this is where runs get wacky. Keep an eye on both drivers here. Darius going a little bit shallow. Zach is giving maybe nothing to chance. Right on the wall is Zach O'Sullivan. But Darius, again, just needs to claw a little bit more proximity. And he gets it right there. Davin, you've been talking about how runs look extremely similar today. That was basically the same run twice. Might have been some contact in that last turn, but uh, once again, a fantastic lead. But Darius right there the whole time. We'll look at these runs side by side and see if we can find a difference. <laughs> yeah, they're really, really similar. Both of them on it through that first outer zone, right up next to each other. And they stayed close through those transitions at that first inner clip, which is really hard to do. We've seen a lot of drivers struggle with that today. And Zach right up on the wall of that second outer zone. And we'll see if there's any contact through this last turn here. Maybe. Maybe. Could also be some, some internet stuff with Zach being across the, the pond. But well, I guess on this side of the pond, Darius is across the pond. Either way, great battles. Yeah, I mean, if we have any sort of uh, some lag issues, we'll be sure to let you guys know. Normally, if a driver experiences lag, especially in the chase, they're going to let staff know right away. So, um... The, what I see a difference here is maybe Zach... Oh, server went completely died now. Super cool. Um, yeah, we got the battle in before the server gave up. So hopefully that's not uh, an issue going forward. But uh, I think maybe Judge is just opting for a reset here while we have some time. Um, oh, no. it's the, the, the server is just straight up dead. Oh, no, we're back. Okay. It's like the server is just straight up dead. But um, I think Davin... I think, Davin, uh, we do have a winner. It is not unanimous. Again, Wes says Darius Ostreka. Westies going to go with one more time and die. The deciding vote will be Your regular season champion, but third place overall, Zach O'Sullivan with one of the hardest bracket runs I've seen. So many OMTs all the way through losers, but unfortunately, it is not enough. Darius Ostreka in the losers finals taking down Zach O'Sullivan. Unfortunately, we will not get the rematch with teammates, but Darius going for redemption against Brandon Patrick. Brandon, Darius, grand finals right here, right now. ESDA Irwindale presented by Big Duck Club. Wow, what, what a battle between these two guys. It was always going to be a tough decision, and it's always going to come down to the small things. Wow. So Darius gets knocked out of the winner's bracket, drops down to the losers, and immediately cleans up. So Zach's going to finish third, and it's going to be Brandon and Darius again. Man, Zach... I, I give everybody credit that's even made it this far, but Zach, I, I really wish we were keeping track of, of OMTs um, in, in terms of the battle because Zach must have had like five, maybe six today. Like he worked just about every single time. Uh, I think he had one against Martinez. I think he beat Chulkov straight up. I definitely know he had one against Abramov, had one against Darren. Wow. It was unbelievable. The amount of hard work and he has to put in. So your regular season champion going to walk away today with $200, finishing third place. Nothing to be ashamed of. But uh, Zach, hell of a season, brother. And congratulations and good luck in VDC uh, this season as well. Yeah, an incredible run. Uh, <laughs> incredible that, you know, he he beat Darren twice. He uh, Did he lose to Darius twice? Oh, no, he didn't. Never mind. That was Darius' first time in the losing bracket. Either way, we have a rematch. We do. And we know that this one was close the first time around with Brandon Patrick taking the win. And we have to remember, Brandon Patrick has not lost yet today. So if he does lose this battle, 
he will have a shot to go again. But for Darius, this is his last chance. Grand finals. As Davin said, Brandon has to lose to total battles. Darius Ostreka needs to win two in a row here against Brandon Patrick. Can he get the reset over Brandon, play spoiler, and get the finish that he so gratefully deserves? Darius in the lead. Brandon getting chased. Darius Ooh. going a little bit shallow, and Brandon almost making contact. Gap going to form here, but we've seen Brandon get really aggressive going into outer zone number two here, and he does it again right onto the door. You can't even tell where these cars are separated. All yellow battle right onto the door of Darius Ostreka. Can he end the run on a high note? Brandon Patrick. Darius showing why he was your number one qualifier. Brandon just backing that car into the outer zone. Brandon Patrick has shown up to win here today, ladies and gentlemen. Darius put together a great qualifying run, but that Ferrari, Brandon Patrick, it is so planted. And look at this entry into the first zone right up on the door of Darius. And he stayed there. The entire run may be dropping like a meter away from that s15 an incredible chase run an incredible lead run both of these guys top of their game in the grand finals oh i'm so excited to see the second run this has been an incredible battle ladies and gentlemen can darius Ostreka put brandon away to go for a bracket reset can brandon patrick end the run right now here we go ladies and gentlemen second run of your first battle or your first round of your grand finals here at esda at Irwindale, presented by Big Duck Club. Are we going to have a winner? We are about to find out. Brandon Patrick in the lead. Darius Ostreka giving chase. All European final. Brandon up on the wall, but Darius right there with him. Maybe a little bit of jittering from both drivers. Little bit shallow from Darius. Brandon Patrick is throwing all the angle and more right now. He wants this to be over. Oh, and contact with the wall. He keeps it sideways. A ton of lag right now. Not sure what's going to happen here, but Brandon, tons of angle giving everything he's got right now. And Darius Ostreka trying to mimic the best he can. Not sure if it came up on the judging side, but super jittery for both. I got to imagine it would have been hard for Darius to get any closer. Oh, we've had no lag issues all night and it comes at the height of this thing. It's hard to tell. I don't think Brandon hit the wall. I think that's just the, the line straight out, but... Oh, so man. we'll see what happens here. Die is our, uh, our track staff, and he is oh. not in the server anymore. So I don't know if he's going to uh, check the replay and see if Brandon actually got into the wall. So watch this second run uh, again when it comes back up. where you, When it's lagging like this, you kind of have to mentally fill in the blanks. Brandon did get into the wall. We all saw it. But with how quick he got back to angle, I'm not yeah. sure if he, the car actually hit the wall or if it was kind of a laggy thing as we're going to jump and take a server reset because even if this is a Darius win uh, or an OMT, we will be going again. Like, yeah. Look how quick that car gets right back to it. It's kind of hard to tell. That's why I'm inclined to believe he didn't hit because of the way it, it angles itself straight and then immediately back into the, the slide. Um, wow. I mean, either way, we know Darius was was really close especially considering the lag that's a really really impressive run from both of these guys you know looking at them side by side we can see the, the distance between them is pretty much that all right we are getting oh. a gift brandon's kind of being given a gift here but i think darius is going to get one as well as we are rerunning that second run there was I don't know how bad it looked on the stream, but it was very, very, very choppy for both. It wasn't just Brandon. It was not just Darius. It was kind of like what happened in the Zach Darius ish, um, issue, but worse. So, um, well, not not as bad, I mean, but it was just choppy, choppy, choppy for both. Uh, right as soon as we got to the first interview, you guys can see it there. It looks like, uh, looks like Roblox there a little bit, but... Uh, <laughs> Again, how does Darius follow a car when he doesn't know where it is? And again, we can't tell if, if Brandon actually made contact there or not. So um, yeah, <clears throat> we are going to go at it again. Darius opting to warm his tires up again. This is the second battle of your grand final. If Darius wins, it is a bracket reset. They go at it again. If it is an OMT, they just go at it again. No bracket reset. That is important to note. If Brandon wins, it is all over. FFF Drift Department Esports Brandon Patrick in the lead Erta Esports driver 
Both these guys representing real teams. Still quite a bit of lag. Darius Ostreka in the chase. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with this. But Darius in the chase trying to do the best he can with what he's got. Brandon nice and fluid in the lead position. Brandon right up onto the wall. Makes contact with that wall again. That time he definitely did hit the wall. He's not done that before in that Ferrari. But big angle as a result. Darius trying to chase as aggressive as he can. But looks like it's smoothed out there at the end of the run, Davin. But if they reset the last run for lag, they're going to reset the run this run for lag as well, I think. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, it definitely looks like Brandon got the wall this time around. Darius is right on him the whole time. Really, you know, similar to the first run, except for that wall tap. But I guess it depends on whether they're going to make the decision to uh, scrap that for all the... Uh, I, you can see the cars changing angles as they go through that turn one and especially through that first transition. You know, not really making a lot of sense. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Brandon might get away with this if they decide to scrap that run and rerun it. Yeah, we've restarted the server a few times. So that's every time we jump out and jump back in, that's a server reset. So, I mean, we do have a call here, though. I think the judges are just going to go ahead and give a call. It is unfortunate, but um, <clears throat> I'm not, I'll let you guys know what we're going to be doing with the server going forward. But we do have a call there. And uh, the driver saying the lag was okay on their end. So uh, okay. one of these dri two drivers sitting with a major disadvantage. Yeah, so I think the Euro drivers are okay. It is the North American connection, so the stream that is having issues. We do have a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, slot him left for Darius, slot him right for Brandon. Again, Darius has to win this battle and the next one to, con to be able to take the championship here. That is left for Darius, right for Brandon. Wes says. Darius Ostraka, die is going to say. The bracket has been reset. Darius Ostraka has even the playing field. Brandon Patrick bumping the wall again. He got a. A gimme with the lag and was able to get away with it the first time, not the second time. Same mistake P caused him to push into this mis into the loser's bracket. Now Darius, having w only lost one battle today, uh, might Davin be on the mental upfoot here as Brandon, coming fresh off a loss, has to, has to win this now. What a battle between these two guys. I mean, you have to lose two matchups to be out of the tournament. Darius has lost to Brandon, and Brandon has lost to Darius. Which means now they're going to go up, up against each other one more time. They've each won once against each other. Winner takes all. Again, this is your straight-up head-to-head battle. The winner of this battle will be your ESDA champion for 2021. $600 in the pocket. Again, ESDA presented by Big Duck Club. This is your grand finals bracket reset. Darius Ostreka in the lead. Brandon Patrick in the chase. Brandon, big angle, getting gapped just a little bit by Darius, but he's going to try to stay right onto the door of Darius Ostrega. Very close in proximity right now is Brandon. Does he charge in turn number two? Yes, right onto the door of Darius Ostrega. He's not letting him get anywhere. This is a man possessed right now in the chase position of Brandon Patrick, but your number one qualifier, Darius Ostrega, is showing you why he deserves to be in this grand final. Another amazing lead by Darius on just a... a qualifying level run brandon maybe not quite as close on each of those corner entries but he does a great job of closing that gap as they drift through the corner you see here a bit of a gap between the two cars brandon not quite getting the initiation that he wanted but he's right up on the door of that s15 by the time they're out of that corner and a similar story here through the second outer zone closes in on darius a great run from both of these guys Darius painting that line to the first half of that last outer zone. And it's all the way. Again, it is just unfortunately due to the stream and the commentators being based in North America. This is a European server. So you guys are seeing some jittering, but the drivers are saying it's totally fine. This is your second run. Winner take all here. Brandon Patrick in the lead. Darius a strike at giving chase. 
Darius is going to have to get way more aggressive in the chase. Ooh. Brandon needs a clean lead run. Falling back a little bit as Darius not consistent with angle. Brandon, big angle in the lead position right now in Fiorella. Big oh, oh. contact being made from the chase. And Darius into the wall again is Brandon. Not quite sure if he just threw too much there, Devin. Or if he got hit, it got plowed by Darius. That is going to have to go to the judges. And unfortunately, with these server issues, that is going to be so hard to call. Ladies and gentlemen, God damn it! through the theme of the day, it's coming down to contact in turn two. Yeah, it, it had to happen. Grand final and that second outer zone after that first inner clip, that transition has just been... Uh, it's hard. It's really hard for the chase driver to get through that transition. You have to transition twice. You know, you're coming from this big outer zone. you got to go into this inner clip and then back around. Oh, and it's hard because you know the leader is going to decel a little bit to try and get that car turned around, but Darius was really being aggressive trying to send that in and that's going to be a really really hard judgment call to make it's all going to come down to outer zone number two did brandon throw too much angle did he slow down too much and give darius nowhere to go did darius try to shut him down and get a little bit too aggressive in chase unfortunately run one absolutely beautiful but both it's not going to mean a damn thing yeah it looks like brandon all it's so hard because he hits him at the front end and that's what causes yeah. him to snap but, but Brandon's been running those those big angles, I think, all night. That looked like just a normal lead from him, I think. Darius not quite matching his angle as early after that inner clip, but it's hard to do positioning behind another driver. like, Especially when it's all on the line in a bracket reset grand final for the whole championship. Pins and needles here right now, ladies and gentlemen. Irwindale Speedway here in a set of course is so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Both these drivers extremely solid knights. Only losing their first battles when it came to finals. Again, Ostreka only lost in the winner's final. Brandon only lost or I'm sorry, Brandon only lost in the first grand finals battle. Ostreka only lost in the winner's final. So both these guys this is a super hard one to read. And what Davin said, I think, was, um, again, keep in mind, everybody in chat, apparently through the drivers, it's totally fine. This is a European server. These are two European drivers. For whatever reason, it's lagging for anyone with a North American connection. Yeah, because I'm seeing it. The stream's seeing it. It is not. <clears throat> it is just visual. Both drivers saying that the connections were good enough to battle. But Brandon had the only thing I think that's, as Davin said, the only thing that's make, not making me say Brandon over rotated and made a mistake is because he's been pulling more angle than everybody by far all day. So our streets, our uh, track staff, um, an ESDA staff member, uh, Harold McKinney, or so known as Initial Die, has dipped out of the server. You're going to check the replay. Look at the telemetry from both drivers. Change the camera angle around. See if he needs to see anything. Again, this is for everything. This is for the season. This isn't just for the round win. And we knew it would come down to a close decision like this. These guys are too good. <laughs> if they were just perfect every time, we'd just OMT until we get something like this. So it makes sense that they're going to pull up the telemetry and, and try and get the right decision here because, you know, there's a lot on the line. And that is a really, really tough decision to make because both of these guys are so, so good. Again, second place, $400. First place, $600. Energy seat, and a, uh, next level racing wheel stand, and a trophy. So big, big difference between the two drivers here. Again, thanks to uh, everybody who supported us this season. Uh, big Duck Club coming in a big way. Uh, title sponsor. First time we've had a t big title sponsor like that for ESDA. So shout out to, to RJ and everyone over there at Big Duck Club. Thank you for supporting us. If you guys have a BMW or need some parts for your car, go check out their website. Buy a t-shirt. I don't know. Support the people that support us. Next Level Racing. House of Drifting. VDS as well. Um, US Drift coming on board and, and joining us. Uh, NRG Innovations. Next Entire. Bunch of... Uh, bunch of big names supporting esports drifting at speeds tus speeds helping with all the tracks this season again um not easy to get someone to out here to make 
uh, tracks that we have the rights to use. I know some people were, were, were jawjacking in the chat earlier, but uh, you can't just grab tracks and use them, so you have to have, you know, permissions. Bunch of huge supporters here. I've got to say, regardless of how this goes, I think the first season of ESDA on Assetto Corsa, major success. But unfortunately, coming down to a very, very close call. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't really speak for the whole season, but tonight's been really, really cool. These guys have put on an incredible display of skill. Going through this whole double elimination format, we've, I think, really seen the best of the best tonight come to the top, face each other in three separate battles to try and decide a champion. You know, if this is the if this is the end of this double elimination format, it is rumored that we are going to a traditional championship next season. Uh, I think these guys sent it out here in a big way. Again, shout out to Vossen as well. If you want any of the tracks that you've seen all season, you can go to Vossen.co and download them. Uh, I knew I was forgetting somebody. Um, the Gaming Drift Series as well over on the Gran Turismo side. Um, and everybody behind the scenes at Podium. Cisco Scarmuzza, uh, if you guys don't know, does production for basically for, for, for the game iRacing, for the sim iRacing. So does this in his spare time. Wor has worked so hard all season to improve um, with the VDS staff as well for Virtual Zero Series over there in Car X. Um, as a team, have worked together to just improve the production quality and uh, give you guys a better show to watch at home. So um, big shout out to both those teams of people. Shout out to all 16 drivers here today. Uh, Lucas Tazmeski, Zach O'Sullivan, Dylan Fink, Vadim Abramov, Nico Stalia, Gregorio Andreev, Austin Zaluski, Vikaris Lucas, Artem Shulkov, Warren Griner, Brandon Gardner, Martinez Ostreka, Alexander Element, and Darren Baker, but it is down to the last two. Yeah, great storylines throughout the night. Great storylines throughout this season. You know, seeing some of these guys come up through here and some some old teammates coming together, some current teammates coming together, some all-time classic battles, a lot of OMTs. Uh, and of course, of course it has to come to a little decision like this. Uh, but this, this has been a huge night for all of these drivers. Again, so close. Just taking as much looks at... You know, shout out to Vossen being one of our only supporters in chat, by the way. Nice to, nice to see them actually watching. <laughs> it's, it's super cool. Um, and I'm, that's a joke. If anyone else is watching, that is a joke. For legal reasons. Um, again, if you're not... If this has not satiated your thirst for esports drift competition... competition you see those big U.S. Drift logos on the banners here at Irwindale Speedway. Uh, we have one more round of U.S. Drift competition November 14th. So in two weeks' time, we will decide a U.S. Drift champion as well. The top 10 drivers in that series earning your ESD 2022 Pro license. Well, I don't know how the chat feels right now. Let's get a, let's get a, I'm going to get a vote going. I'm going to get a poll. It's not gonna last. It's not gonna last too long. Well, we get we we'll get a gamble. You might have. You might have a call already. I think we, we have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. We have a winner. Gonna do a one-minute prediction in chat. It is so close. Look how long it took the judges to decide that, but there is no OMT. Bet with your channel points, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a winner down here. It is incredible how close this came. Let's see if we can get Zach up on the on the podium here as well. Zach is your third place overall this year at ESDA. I know he was really hunting for that championship. It's got a sting, but to get on the podium is still a huge accomplishment considering how hard he had to work tonight. Chat knows how they're feeling. Again, we have two J... Oh my... Oh my god. <laughs> you have, we have two JSI members on the podium what? tonight, but your first one is... Zach O'Sullivan, your regular season champion. 
third place overall this season. A huge, huge, huge season for Zach. And a note, regardless of, uh, of not being where he wanted to be in the top step of the podium, he still has to be proud of that result. But the winner and your ESDA champion, unanimous decision, is in a yellow car. Yes, I'm going to do this joke. Representing a real team from Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, your overall winner and ESDA champion after a long fought hard season is Brandon Patrick gets the win in a nail biter against Darius Ostraka. Brandon Patrick trying to dial Fiorella in all season. Finally, she, the queen has her crown. Fiorella is at the top step of the podium, and somewhere, some way, Federico Scarifa has a smile a mile wide right now. What a season it's been, Brandon Patrick, and talk about pulling it together when it matters. What a day he's had. Just about lost it all in the first round of that grand final, but pulls through with an incredible run in the end. Wow. I, I'm out of words. That's incredible. Once again, Darius Ostreka taking home second place on 400 US dollars. No reason for him to be ashamed either in an absolute nail biter with a split, like a very, very, very tight decision. Again, we're talking to judges. They're saying there was Darius made contact. Darius was at fault for that contact through all three judges, looked at the replays. All the judges deemed it was not any sort of lag issue. It, it's unfortunate to see the season come down to something like that, but. You know, uh, again, I have my own personal biases, but I've watched Brandon all season. He's had decent results. He's got some top eights here and there, but he just couldn't figure this car out. It wasn't meshing for him in the SDA. What a day to figure everything out, David. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I like that the Ferrari came out on top after everything. It's a, it's a really cool car. Really cool that he's uh, what he's representing and how he got this thing together. Yeah, again, he representing a Triple F drifting department, Federico Scarifo, um, a Formula Drift Pro driver, uh, fan favorite as well. Fiorella, the Virtuale, he's worked so hard on this car in terms of uh, the, its development. Um, again, I believe he's done all the work on it behind the scenes as well. So self-made, self-tuned. Um, I'm, 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 I'm so excited for him. Again, I, I do have a, a, a bias. He is a friend of mine, so... Um, I, I'm just very stoked for him. Darius drove his heart out today as well, not to take anything away from Team Urta. Urta had three drivers in this top 16 who all showed up and showed out. So, um, you know, Vicaris, I think, could have made a strong run today. It just wasn't his year, unfortunately, getting taken out by Dylan Fink. Um, and then uh, the Ostrakas, uh, Martinez, I think, probably may have had the strongest chances, unfortunately, meeting Zach O'Sullivan in losers round two. And Darius trying to convert that number one qualifier position into the win. It took a bracket reset. But Brandon, Brandon, Brandon still found the way to be able to get that overall win. As we have, I was so scared he wasn't going to be able to talk to me. We had Brandon, pa watch, your, oh, watch your language, number one. But Brandon Patrick, your ESDA champion overall for the whole season. Brandon, I think I know the answer to this question, but how are you feeling, buddy? Uh, I'm speechless, honestly. <laughs> First off, if, if I cuss, I'm sorry. Your emotions are very high. I get uh, it. That's <laughs> why I warned you. Um, but yeah, uh, I I am speechless. Honestly, I, I don't know what to say. It's uh, it's been a long road. Uh, obviously, I came into this. I came into this 16th in the standings. I was the last person to get a spot. And uh, come into this with a just a nothing to lose attitude and to get the win. Uh, to win the championship, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. This is incredible. I don't. Know, I really, honestly, don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, man, like like you said yourself, you you just be, were able to squeak in here into the top sixteen in the last round at Ebi Zoo. Um, just with the way the points unfolded, um, you had a decent season, but definitely, you know, you weren't up and getting wins and, and whatnot. What the hell changed over the last couple of weeks? Uh, honestly, uh, just coming into this. Uh, Knowing I had a spot to go for this, in I just put a lot of effort in. I, uh, I I put so much time and effort just practicing and getting the to, getting the tune down. Uh, got I actually ended up getting new suspension data from Chris at VDC as well before this, uh, which helped a lot. Um, 
a lot of uh, background data as well coming from Federico in the real world, uh, helped me develop the car in the game as well. Uh, so coming into this, just a lot of time of effort. Uh, there was a lot of people to thank as well along the way. And uh, but yeah, we made it happen. And uh, I, yeah, it's it's surreal. <laughs> I know a lot of teams, a lot of drivers have teams of people helping them out with their setup, with their car. Like I said earlier, you did this all this yourself. So not only you as a driver have the satisfaction of being the champion, you did it in something that you made. How does that make you feel? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's even better. You know, it's like a little cherry on top. Um, you know, it's, it's the most unique car out here by far, in my opinion, anyway. Um, you know, I'm, I don't, I can't go to people and bounce ideas off each other for setup and stuff. Like I have to work hard and, I have to spend hours at a time, like just making little tweaks. And, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, to do it in this way as well, uh, to go through, I won every battle until I got to Darius again at the end, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, man. And that last battle with Darius, uh, was the only la one you lost all day. Um, just, what 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 was what was the pressure like again was just knowing that you had one in the one in the bank but going into this battle with the reset um i just want to know where your head was at on the starting line there for the for the last uh for the bracket reset uh grand final uh yeah so going into the the, the final final uh i was i was feeling okay like i know all, all i had to do was just keep doing what i've been doing all day you know i've uh i've been putting down solid leads solid chases all day um i just made a silly error against darius in the first time we battled uh i knew i knew what i did wrong i knew how to correct it so i uh, just kept my head cool didn't overthink it and uh just went into it with a fresh mind and uh yeah came out with a win all right buddy 600 dollars richer you got an nrg seat an nlr stand on the way a next level racing stand on the way uh nrg racing rim as well um congratulations again esd 2021 champion who made it who made it who made it happen for you behind this i think we know but who made it happen for you behind the scenes my dude uh, yeah, so started off Triple F Drifting Department. Uh, amazing, amazing group of people uh, over in Italy and the States. Uh, they picked me up this year, and it's been nothing but love. Uh, they've supported me along this journey, and uh, I couldn't thank them enough. Federico as well, uh, to have a professional, like, world-class driver helping me behind the scenes. It helps a lot more than you think. Uh, a lot of support there, um, and it's it's great to see your support constantly week in, week out. Uh, obviously the JSI boys as well. They're still they're still the homies. Uh, Zach, especially, he's uh, he, he's always pushing me. He's been spotting me, well, spotting for me this entire event. And uh, yeah, it was uh, he's always a big help. And uh, just the the people I hang around with as well, like the XE, uh, the TSC guys as well, uh, always giving me support. And yeah, it's uh, without all those guys, I don't think I would have been able to do this today. Man, congratulations. And and I mean, I don't know if this is a little unprofessional, but I've been able to watch you for years now and to see you get to this level where you are with this team and this backing and these results. Uh, I'm super proud of you, man. So congratulations and enjoy it. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Brandon Patrick, number 81, Team FFF. Again, getting the win overall. We have second place as well. Darius Ostrika. Darius taking it all the way in the winner's bracket with the reset against Brandon um super hard fought battle long day for you today as well how are you feeling oh my god amazing amazing guys it's it's very very uh, i'm very happy for this season for you i am appreciate for you guys um again super strong day for you a number one qualifier uh going up against brandon what was your feeling like when you ended up getting that bracket reset gave you a chance for the championship I am feeling really good. It's, it's amazing. It was. Um... Uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it a little short here. I know you've got some people that uh, that help you in behind the scenes as well. Your teammates, your sponsors. Uh, if you have anybody you'd like to thank uh, for the P two here, you get four hundred dollars coming your way. Um, this is the chance to do it. Yes, of course. I. I... Uh, I'll speak for Darius if that's fine. That's okay. Uh, so he wants to thank his uh, team Urta, the one that he drives for all the time. And he wants to thank the sponsors and you guys for making this event happen and giving him a chance to shine like a bright star that he is. Right. Thank you. To let, thank you very much, Darius <laughs> um, and, 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 and company uh appreciate it and we hope to see you back again next season thank you very much always
Darius Dostreka, again, one of your European drivers driving out of Lithuania. Again, uh, somebody who we're more than familiar with from hearing it, Zach O'Sullivan, probably the hardest day of anybody out there. Uh, OMT after OMT, I, man, you got to be tired. Dude, I'm awake as can be, man. I'm about to order a buffalo chicken ranch wrap. You already know. <laughs> you already know, dude. Man, my man's trying to put another sponsor on the side of that car. <laughs> yep, East Coast Wings sponsored me. What's up? But yeah, I'm uh, I'm feeling good. I'm really, really proud of my uh, my teammate and um, and Triple F Drifting Department's uh, esports driver, Brandon Patrick. He is an absolute monster, and he's been trying his hardest to get something like this for a long time. And he's um he's finally done it, and I'm really proud of him. And he's gonna he's gonna shine from here on out. He's he's needed that little bit of boost, and he knows he can do it now. So I'm excited to see what he can do in the upcoming VDC season as well. I was gonna say, like it's it's very you to be come in here and talk about your third place. You know, you made some money today. You had probably one of the the hardest uh, runs through bracket um, that I've saw today, and immediately you start talking about your teammate. That's just very uh, very you guys, especially since you again, you guys are both teammates. But um, with all the hard work you had to do today, uh, I mean, you know, you came off the regular season championship. Third place is still uh, there's nothing to be disappointed of, but um, uh, you know, again, just a war of attrition for you today. I got, again, you say you're pumped up, but uh, probably drove the most out of anybody today in terms of miles. Oh, yeah, for sure. I feel like I've done uh, more battles than I can count, honestly. Um, it's definitely a lot more battles than your average just comp day on like your basic just non-playoff normal competitive round. So, uh, yeah, a lot of driving today. Um, and and I, I'm honestly like you know you know less it's less about me you know i got third three for dale you already know it's all good <laughs> all right I, I got my prize i'm just i'm happy with, for brandon man that's just the, that's the greatest thing you know we got a jsi podium i won the regular regular season championship he won the playoff round and it's just jsi on top dude jsi on top till jsi till we die bro that's how it is and i mean uh the transition for you one of those guys that um i mean i wanted to tell talk to brandon about it but i think we had other things to discuss but one of those guys that came over the transition from Forza to Assetto, you know, ESA is kind of a completely different beast this year. Um, at the end of the season, while you're, I know you're focusing on your season now for VDC, but uh, looking back through the season, um, how are you? How is the feeling? What's the? What's the? I mean, even across the team, like what's the feels? Um, well, when I came over, I got really lucky to even get um, into the competitive scene right off the bat. I, I managed to squeeze into 16th place out of a 16 spot licensing event, BSDC for my VDC license. Um, and then I did my VDC season and I, I you know, I immediately got thrown within a, about a year of getting on the game. I got immediately thrown into just the pit of the best drivers in the game right off the bat so i i just got thrown into literally a massive just training session for an entire season where i just i learned and learned and learned and learned you know i'm in it for the sim uh, aspect of it i like the realism of it i like you know the competitive realistic aspect of it and then, you know getting all that experience and then having the esda season come up i originally wasn't even going to do the esda season because i was so worked out after doing vdc i wanted to just chill out and like you know preserve the quality of my rig stuff and you know not put too much more work on it and then you know i said you know screw it i'm gonna come do esda season and uh yeah i'm glad i did because it definitely paid off and i i it opened up more doors for me it opened up more doors for uh, my teammates and my team and um yeah we we put another uh another jsi logo stamped on another series and uh, just before we let you go, man, first of all, uh, good luck in VDC. It's going to be nice to be able to cheer on some homies this season. Um, you know, v Zach was a VDC pro for those who were unaware. But uh, going in into that, man, I'm sure you've got some people behind the scenes you want to thank. And uh, now is your time. Mike is yours. D don't be, be nice. Uh, oh, yes. Trust me. I haven't said <laughs> a bad word yet. I'm doing good. All right. I'm very proud of you. It's been all, all season right. without a flip up from you. I'm very proud. All right. All right. So I want to thank, first off, the first one, the only one. JSI, my team just slide it. Um, you know, thank you to everyone on the team. Uh, thank you, thank you to Brandon for staying true to the team and and really continuing the push alongside everybody else in, in JSI. And you know, uh, thank you to Nando for uh, obviously bringing this opportunity to us to to do these things and carry this name. And uh, yeah, thank you to everybody on JSI. And you know, we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for our team pushing us. Um, they're kind of the foundation of what we're doing. 
on top of that, I also want to thank NRG Innovations. Um, I have been using the NRG Sim Wheel with the NRG Quick Release all season. It's lightweight. It makes my wheel perform much, much better. I also am using the NRG Sim Rig, um, which is also very, very good. Uh, it has me sitting right, sitting comfortable in the same position every day and nice and uh, keeps me nice and fluid. And um, uh, yeah, I want to thank... Uh, uh baggins for doing my uh my upcoming liveries and and helping me out and stuff and uh thank you to vakari for the liveries throughout the season um on my s15 and uh yeah the biggest thank you to uh to nrg for sure nrg definitely has my back and they've um they they care about the sim uh realm of drifting and not a lot of companies put that effort forward so yeah huge thank you to nrg shout out to them any nrg sim products i promise you are are top notch and will definitely make your setup perform better and you should definitely look into it man zach didn't sell out he bought in there's, there's a big difference man, <laughs> congratulations dude i'm super proud of you again it's 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 awesome to see you getting results uh so quick moving over from forza to a and uh good congratulations on the third place and good luck this season in vdc Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be, we'll be cheering you on. Now get out of here. Uh, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, uh, our last person to speak to, I think, is the most apropos. Uh, Harold McKinney, also known as Initial Die. Uh, Die, long season, a lot of ups and downs uh, for everybody involved. Rough day for you guys as well for judging. But um, at the end of the season, I think that I just wonder where your head's at in terms of an end cap and how everything went for our first season in Misetto. Um, yeah, um, it was definitely, it was, uh, it, it was definitely a big step up. Um, a lot of people probably thought we weren't going to be able to do it, but, uh, throughout my years of organizing, I had the, the knowledge and the power and people with the staff to help me to do it. So, um, I'm actually happy. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy that we made the jump over here. Um, the competition is far 10 times better than what it was and what it is on Forza right now. So um, you would definitely see us here next year, uh, like like we've seen earlier with the other um, partners that we've got, what I will mention here in a bit. Um, we will be here next year. Um, it was a phenomenal season. The driver talent was phenomenal. Even the drivers that didn't even make the 16, it was still top caliber drivers throughout the year. So um, I'd like to thank them for doing this year. I'd like to thank the supporters from the audience. Um, for watching and tuning in and also supporting this year um and everything um next i want to get down to the sponsors and whatnot um first off i will i want to thank big duck club and um rj rj drift um if not not too many people if they're not familiar with rj um he is going into fd prospect next year um makes bumpers for bmws he's came through this year for the regular season huge like the guy, the guy is a, is a phenomenal guy. Um, just any way that, that that he could help, he was there for me. So that was like Big Duck Club for sure is one of the sponsors that we were looking that we're going to keep for next season. Um, next, I'd like to thank NRG Innovations. Um, big time for them. Big time for Jason for helping me this year coming in mid season to put out the prizes, the wheels, the the the. The racing seat and all of that, and also the vouchers that the drivers won also throughout midseason. Next, I'd like to thank Next Level Racing. I'd like to thank them for giving out two stands this year for not only for regular season and a um, world championship winner as well. Um, next, I would like to thank Next and Tires for being a supporter as well, for coming through and help supporting us. Um, next, I would like to thank Volson. Volson, like, a lot of these tracks that you guys are driving on, like, they wouldn't be public if it wasn't for them. Like, they do a great job. They got a phenomenal website. I think everybody should go check out. Be sure to go check out Volson.co. Um, next, I would like to thank the Virtual Drift Series. Um, mainly here is Wes, as half the, that came through midseason, also to help judge. And also, if you guys are looking to get into the car X scene, this is the series to do it. Um, next, I would like to thank Nick from Gaming Drift Series. Um, they're another partner of ours. Um, came out and supported us as well this year. Um, if you guys are really big into Gran Turismo, which a new new game is coming out pretty soon, that will be the main series to go to. Nick is a phenomenal organizer. Um, also to the um, Russian guys too. If this is another series you guys can do as well, but Nick is open to all talents from all regions. 
Um, next, I would like to thank Speeds with the track edits and everything. The guy, um, the guy busted his behind throughout the whole year to get these tracks done. Um, even at last second, it, it was like even on crunch time, it was pretty. It pretty much was a headache, but he got it done. And really like to thank Speeds and everybody over there from helping him um, getting everything sorted with the ESDA tracks this year. Next, I would like to also thank Scorpidorp, um, Scorpion or Josh Oxley for doing the video edits. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal edits this year um, coming from him. Um, every every year he gets even be he gets better every year. Um, also, with that, I would like to add on to the um, Tusugiri staff, um, everybody from Ben and over there for helping put the last promo together, even though with a lot of crunch time that we had. Uh, so I'd like to give a shout out to Ben at Tusugiri for helping Josh get that video together. Um, next, I would also like to thank um, the Virtual Drift Championship. Um, knowing that it was our first season over here, knowing that we didn't have really like much necessities or materials to work with to get everything off off the bat up and going. I'd like to thank Chris for lending me his lending me, you know, lending me help and support with using the tires and also using the physics issue to help us get get going. I guess you can say booster start us over here and get us going. So I like to really thank thank them. Um and also before I get to the um other events, I also like to thank Podium. You the guys I would mainly like to thank Thank you for the phenomenal, the like, the broadcasting level is just like, it's, it's literally nowhere where anybody's seen in today's virtual drifting. So I would love, like to thank Cisco, Keenan, Ian, Strix, X, um, everybody, anybody else that I missed today Kevin. over at the podium team. I'd like to thank all of you guys for help, um, putting the broadcasting on for the ESDA season. Um, for... The champ for the other events um, that was mentioned today, we do have some license events coming for you guys. I wouldn't say license, but they're mainly, they're not feeder series. I don't want anybody to think this is a feeder series under, under us because um, I don't look at anybody as a feeder series. Never did, never will. Um, these are major championships in their respective region. Um, we got Ultimate Drift, which is a major championship in Brazil. We got DCGP, which is uh, which has been over longer than for uh, I want to say the longest running championship over here. They're a really great EU running championship. Um, also, we got the Australian Drift Sim Championship, which is a new championship coming for the Australian region. Um, look forward for them. Um, and also, you also got US Drift. We got one more round of US Drift. So. You guys are looking to get an ESDA license to get into next year. We're taking the top three non-ESDA pros to get in for next year. Um, we also got some other regions that we have yet to confirm, so be on the lookout for that. Man, I don't even have to ask anything. He just had it all ready to go. My man had a script. <laughs> did his papers all in order? Um, man, it's it's been – we've been on this ride for a long time. Um I know uh, I've been part of ESDA as a competitor for a while and then switched over to the media side a couple of years ago. Oh, uh, I don't want to interrupt. I forgot that. I forgot to add another series that we forgot. We, I yeah, why not? Just keep yeah, going. I forgot, I forgot to add the Indonesian. Your show, man. I forgot to. My apologies. I forgot to add the Indonesian <laughs> Digital Drift series. Uh, I, I, I talked to them just recently. We just got something confirmed with them. Um, I think they shouted us out. They had a stream today, too. So check their stream out um, today. They had their final round earlier this morning since they're in a different in the Asia region. Um, there will be a part on board, too, of giving out license for next year. So I'm happy with a lot of these series, uh, major series, that's, that's, that's wanting to help and also work together to push the esports scene as drifting and, and all of that. So. Yeah, that's it. I forgot I missed one. I had missed one event. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, but um, to 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 wrap it up here again, I've been kind of part of this for for five or six plus years now. Uh, first couple of years as a competitor, and then switching over uh, last year and this year into into the media booth. So to say that what you've built and your team and everyone behind you has progressed so far and so quick in the last year or two. Um, I, I can only speak for, for everybody at podium and I'm saying super proud of what you've built and can't wait to work with you guys next season. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, also, um, let one, this is my last shout out. This is my last <laughs> shout out. I promise, promise. Um, 
like to thank I forgot to add um the rest of this, if I didn't mention all of the staff from Westies or Michael Lindsay, Wes Johnston, um also the, the staff that was here earlier this season, um Charlie Weaver, um Cosmic, um Frosty, um also the main the main person that I like a lot of us should be thanking, at least for these sponsors that helped put in the majority of the work was earlier that was helping with the marketing is digital Steve Connor. Um, he made a lot of this happen from Big Duck, NRG, Next Level, and just about everything. So I didn't, I didn't want to go missing out on um, shouting out to shout out my own staff as well for this. Yeah, of course, man. I was gonna say like this is it's been a, a complete 180 in terms of how the series has been run with all the support. Um, but you know, I think a congratulations and a, and, a, and a hats off goes to you and the entire ESD staff and team. And uh, we look for, again, we look forward to 2022. For sure, for sure, we got big things coming. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that is going to be it for us today because my voice can literally take no more. Uh, uh, big Again, big shout out to, to Davin as well, Davin Cornelius for stepping up today and filling the second seat when Ian has been on his country bumpkin adventure for the past nine months um, and, and, and everyone else is either traveling or out of town today. So Davin, thanks for joining us. Yeah, this, this was really fun, you know, just to be a small part of this thing. It was really cool. And... Uh... Yeah, I feel for your voice. You did a lot of yelling tonight, but <laughs> it was a good show. I think it was definitely definitely warranted it. But uh, on behalf of everybody here at Podium Esports, I, like I said, Cisco um, works so hard behind the scenes. You guys have no idea. Again, he does so much with his day job and then comes and does this. Um, and the VD, VDS team as well, who helped out with some graphic stuff, was able to get that judging slide and left slide and right thing for you this season. I'm so glad we got to work that out. And there's only more plans coming for next season. So... On behalf of everybody at Podium Esports, ESDA, um, thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Again, November 14th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time is the final round of U.S. Drift. Hope to see you there. But until then, my name is Keenan Kuzin for Devin Cornelius and Cisco Scarmuzzo. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.